Don't look back into the sun, Libertines on XFM. I'm excited, Steve. It's that time, it's that time of the week. Go on. Well, Carl's in a little film. Oh, that's what you're excited about. Yeah. Sorry, I thought you meant the, the show's almost over. Right? Yeah, no. Come on in, Carl. Right, so, uh, yeah, I'm in, I'm in One Flew Over the Cuckoo's Nest. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Took a scene from it. Yeah. Gotta listen carefully in that. Uh, at the end, there'll be a question on, like, the clip that you've just heard mm -hmm. is sort of like what they do in the Krypton Factor and stuff. So do you want to read out the prizes? Or just uh, yeah, the there's things, the things. It's uh, a couple of rock and roll albums. Um, we've got the. Why is it called One Flew Over the Cuckoo's Nest? Um, I can't remember. I think it's explained in the book, but I don't remember. I haven't read it for many years. If someone knows, just a quick email to do. I'd like to know that. Ricky at xfm.co.uk. You can win yourself if you get the question right. The League of Gentlemen series three. We have got that rock and roll legends again. The best of Blondie, a nature program, and the Old Grey Whistle test. Volume uh, three. So if you're Brilliant, over so fifty, well you'll enjoy that. Yeah. And just uh, if you haven't seen the film, it's just about uh, uh, like a what would you call it? A well, it's a guy whose guy thinks he's going to get away with prison by going into a uh, a mental institution. Mm. It was a new experiment, but he finds out he c can't get out and he's sort of trapped. And well, people know it. Everyone knows what. Just right, play. Just it. Well, play. I saw it last week. So just play. Oh. All right. Yeah. Well, you know, I. Uh, been observing you here now for the last four weeks, and I don't see any evidence of mental illness at all. Yeah, no, no, I'm not mental. I never, I never said I was. I mean, all right, I got, I got an E in history, but that isn't why I'm in here. I'm in here because I had to get away from, from the outside world. It was doing me head in. I've been working too hard. I'm stressed out. I've been working like loads of hours Monday to Friday. I've been working on a Saturday with Ricky and Steve, right? That's that's been doing me head in. People don't people think that's a laugh when it isn't. You're right? busy right now, are you? You got something to do well, right now. See, this is why I'm here today, Doctor, because he's doing me head in. What do you mean, sir? Well, well, he's doing me head in. I came here to get away from Ricky. He is just as bad. I'm smarter than him, ain't I? You're you're an idiot, right? You just <laughs> ah, we're just good friends. No, we're not friends. And if you were a friend, you wouldn't be doing that to me, Ed. How do you mean that? Well, don't ask. Come on, I'll show you. Mm -hmm. Oh, yes, yes. Look where you've gone. Get him out. Get him off me! Get him off! Now, you just hold it right there. All right. Will you get off? Doctor, will you tell him? Take me from Don't oh. hurt you, does it? Of course it does. That's it. I'll hold on to you. Not too hard, you'll crush all the air out of it, wouldn't it? You normally do. Get off! You normally do the harder than that. But... No, it's warming up. Warm it up. Warm it up. What's going on here? Alright, be there. Get off! <laughs> See what I mean, Doctor? That's, that's what he's doing every day. The state of this. I don't know why you do it, because it's not as if you're going to crack it open. But I tried, didn't I? God damn it. At least I did that. <laughs> I love it, the effort. Yeah. It's almost, uh, I wonder if it's almost a strange premonition of the future. Yeah. You in some kind of home. Alright, well, uh. What's the question? Little question then. Uh, what result did I get in history? Mm hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Good. Alright. Yeah, well, uh, Tricky one, that. Ricky.Gervais at xfm.co.uk. Oh, text. Will we take text? Um, I can't really bother to check right. the text. All right, then. Email. <coughs> oh. Thanks for that, Rick. Sneezy. Yeah. All right, I'll play, uh... Prinish Brothers, yeah, it's a lovely tune from their album, uh, what's it called? Yours, Mine and Ours. Blinded by the Stars from the Prinish Brothers. We've, uh, a couple of, uh, texts. I do occasionally have a look at them. Go on. Um, we've had one here complaining. It doesn't say who it's from. It just says, Wow, really clever homophobic material. Genius. Switching off, idiots. Oh, I don't know what they mean. It was not clever homophobic material. <laughs> it, it was just homophobic. It well, was... well, what do they mean, though? But how is it homophobic? We weren't being anti-gay. We were saying we don't understand the gay world. And anything that's... We were querying and questioning and, it. Yeah, and Carl... See, this is what I mean. Carl gets us into trouble. I can't go through Chinatown no. anymore. No. It's not really a town, though, is it? It's not really a town. It's, it's more of a best. novelty street. A novelty street with response. Yeah. But I can't, you know, and when we sort of like talk, we get uh, tarred with the same brush as him because yeah. the man's an idiot. Yeah. But we often say that. 
we you know, we are not homophobic. I don't think Carl's homophobic. He's confused. Mm. He's interested. He's got nothing against Chinese people. He's got a little theory that they don't age well. And these are the sort of things that come across. I mean, they're not meant to be homophobic and racist. They're showing that Carl. I don't know the PC term for this. Is a bit mental. Yes. And you know, I think we're doing our bit by letting him on. On the air. On the air as well. Like that complaint he got about that woman on, um, what's it called? Who are you looking at? Yeah. Because he said about, I, I, I don't even want to repeat it, but he said some, uh, you know. Yeah. Yeah, but I never meant to upset anyone with that. That's no, I know you didn't. No, I know you didn't. No. But I mean, it's, it's on the website now. And, you know, to be fair, she does say it was Carl that said it, and, you know, we yeah. were the idiot presenters that let him on air. But it's like, uh, Carl is bad for our reputation. Yes. Do you know what I mean? It's funny to be in a room with him, but then I want to sort of shake it off. Yeah. And I don't know what to do about Guilty it. Guilty by association. I know. Have you, what have you got to say for yourself, Carl, for the, all the- some of the stuff you come out with? What have you got to say? I mean, I know the answer. It's absolutely from the heart and genuine- Ignorance. <laughs> and confusion and interest. You- you haven't got a malicious bone in your body. Well. Well. Towards me, yes, but yeah, other people. But again, he's just honest with you. He says he well, thought. Well, don't repeat what he says. No, <laughs> don't, don't repeat it. Just leave it. But it's not as bad as uh, some other things. But he's, you know, he says. Well, remember, you just say that you when you first met him, you lo he looked a bit odd, but you got used to it. Yeah. Now that's from the heart. I said that's like him, sort of like being honest and nice, but he doesn't know what that. And we can take it, of course. Well. What What have you got to say for yourself? I haven't got anything to say really. I mean, <laughs> there's, been, there's been other weird stuff going on in the week and that. Go on. Uh, no, I might as well talk about it next week because we're, we're wrapping up. All I'm saying is I talk about what's gone on. Yeah. Have Do we got monkey mean? news? Have we left monkey news behind? Monkey news! Come on! What happened? You can't offend monkeys! I'll tell you what is annoying. What? Steve's told me about a film that is about a monkey going off with a woman. Mm. The Charlotte Rampling thing where she. It's a film takes... called Max Monomura. Yeah, she has an affair with a monkey. Go on. Yeah. Oh, what happened? You wouldn't like Don't it. Go, we can't go into you it. wouldn't like it. You wouldn't like it. It's not, it's not like, it's, it's weird and it, you wouldn't, d Carl, it's not like a nature program where he wears a bowler hat and can talk. Okay. The nature programs that you <laughs> seem to see. Yes, <laughs> yes I'm trying to think I haven't seen that one. <laughs> yeah, no! Yeah. <laughs> Come on, do monkey news. Well, monkey news this week. Play the um, Oh, chimpanzee that monkey news, you f- Right, it's about this monkey that was knocking about in the 1950s. Right. Um, just, uh, <laughs> it was known in the sort of <laughs> LA area. Right. Um, and apparently, um, again, I haven't really checked all this out, I've just picked up bits that, that look interesting. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Um, uh, wore a golden mask and like a cape and a, a leopard skin belt and stuff, right? So people didn't know that he was, was a monkey. monkey. Of course they didn't know, yeah. He just thought, they thought he was this bloke who's going around and he was helping out crime situations and stuff. <laughs> right, you're an idiot. So one, this disguise, that, that you see a, a, a three foot six bloke with arms the length of his body. No, but that's the funny thing, right? They knew, they sort of thought, it's a bit odd, you know, he's stocky, yet extremely flexible. Yeah, and hairy, because he only wore a mask and a belt. And a distinctive jawline and stuff. And then, uh, right. apparently, like, he used to sort of get to his Nothing we say gets through, does it? You've 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 decided you can it's picture this monkey going around solving going crimes, and it's, it's telling you. let him finish the story. Time's running Jeez. out. So it sort of get to its crime by like swinging from the trees and of course stuff. Of it would, right? yeah. But people just thought it's a normal fella. Of course. Then what happened was he. This is the bit that's going to annoy me, isn't it? He helped some fellas out, like you know, and for a reward, for a reward. They were like, do you want some money? You know, you've, you've helped save our lives during a crime and stuff. Mm. Do you want some money in that? And he just went straight for the shopping bags, got a couple of bananas and apples, <laughs> right? And as he was bent down, looking into the bag, getting the bananas and apples, they pulled his mask off, little monkey. So he wasn't allowed to work for the police anymore? It, it ended there. Sure. Weird, isn't it? Rick, can I tell you the meaning of One Flew of the Cuckoo's Nest? Yeah. Can we never speak of monkey news again? Yeah. It comes apparently from an American children's nursery rhyme, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, all good children go to heaven, some fly east, some fly west, some fly over, over the, the cuckoo's, cuckoo's nest. nest. Brilliant. Uh, and our thanks to Ian for emailing that in. Uh, shall I give um, someone the prizes? Yeah. Phil Corbett, there you are, that's the first one I've pulled out. He correctly guessed that it was E. It was an E that Carl got in history, the only qualification he's got, and it's an E. Do you know that woman? <laughs> judge, the, judge the monkey news based on that. <laughs> Go on. That woman who went out with the monkey. What? It's a film. It's a film. It was Charlotte Rampling. 
in the film. I don't know who played the monkey. Did she have any kids? What, with the monkey? In the film? Yeah, I'm just- I'm just thinking if I'm gonna get it out and stuff. No. No. Oh. Why? Oh, cause that would have been interesting. Well, no, it's just that the problem there is the kids would always look more like the dad. <laughs> <laughs> Hello and welcome to the Ricky Gervais Show with me, Ricky Gervais, Stephen Merchant. Hello. And the little round-headed buffoon that is Carl Pilkington. Alright. Now, you, uh, probably know me from such works as The Office and Extras, uh, uh Stephen being my, um, co-writer and co-director on those things. For those people who are not so aware of Carl Pilkington, um, he was our producer sort of given to us when we first started on, uh, XFM, um, and, uh, you're thinking, well, why are we doing a podcast? It's because I like to be in a room with Carl Pilkington. Mm. You know, like some people go and help sort of chimps. <laughs> Do they? Yeah. <laughs> well, they go to the, the you know, the, yeah, the, the jungles and things. Yeah. How about little sort of endangered Dian species. Fossey or whatever. Exactly, You're yeah. very much the Diane Fossey of the, of the, the, of the Manchester of, scene. Of the, of the uh, little bald mank world. <laughs> and Carl Pilkington is, is an ongoing experiment for me, because I've seen him blossom from an idiot into an imbecile. <laughs> and yeah. I, wa I want to see it through. Look at the way he's looking at us. Look at that. He's got a perfectly round head. Um, and that's why I'm doing this, um, podcast. Carl, what do you think about all this? Um, it's just, I mean, we are living in that sort of era now, aren't we? Like, you need to be able to listen to stuff on demand when you want it and stuff. I yeah. know, you, you were, you're not a fan of the iPod in general, are you? Or any of the MP3 things you're concerned? Uh, it's, I'm warming to it. But this is what's amazing about Carl. Even though he's talking about things like MP3 players, computers, uh, iPods, he sounds like he's he was found in a glacier and, and thawed out. <laughs> yeah, Do you know what I mean? Yeah. He's sort of taught to yeah. speak. We're, we're a couple of high school guys who found him, and we're, we're trying to ingratiate him in the uh, in the gang, trying yeah. to pass him off as someone from the modern day. No, no. But, but my thing with with iPods is. Now, do we need them? Do you know what I mean? We're, we're living in that era now where we have invented most of the stuff that we need <laughs> and now we're just messing about they said that in 1900 someone actually said everything that's to be invented has already been invented they what? said that in 1900 and how wrong were they no but what what came out what, at what point what was invented in that year where they went right that's it now the 20th century think what happened in the 20th century go on well planes yeah but is that a good thing planes and that. Do you need to, do you need a plane, really? Wouldn't it have been better if we all stuck where we should be, instead of travelling about? War. Why? War, well look, war's, war's happening, isn't it? Because everyone's saying, well now we can fly, we'll go over there. And so I'm, there were no that. wars prior to the invention of the aeroplane? Not like, not like there is today. Right. But what I'm saying is, the more, the, the world's got smaller on it, everyone's saying that, right? Yeah. Uh, you know, the way I was saying to you the other day, uh, you know, we, we now go to places where we shouldn't go. People go on holiday to places where you've got to have an injection before you go there. Yeah. Forget it then. That, yeah. that, that's a warning. Don't well, go there. I'm with you on that. I, I, I don't want to enter a country where I have to have an injection to stop me from dying while I'm in that country. Right, I totally agree with you on that. So what yeah. happened is, so they invented the plane and it's like, oh, let's go on holiday. And then they go, oh, they die now. Oh, well, you've got to invent something. Let's invent an injection. And then it's like, right, well, what, what else do we need to go to that place? There's a lot of faffing. <laughs> 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 so what I'm saying is... I'm, is that I'm, a place, a lot of faffing? What, what I'm saying is, you know, Steve's travelled more than I have. You've been to, like, dangerous places. I've been to places where you need injections, yeah. Yeah, but why? Because it's fascinating, isn't it? You know, don't you not believe in that idea of uh, travel broadens the mind? You know, it makes you experience other ways of life, other ways of thinking, it just enriches you as a human being. That's the whole reason people go travelling. Well, since the invention of the telly, you don't have to go that far yeah, to see it. You're absolutely right. So, uh, there you go then. The telly was the 20th century, wasn't it? Yeah, it's pretty good. So, where, would you, where would you stop then? You'd stop making stuff now? Stop inventing stuff right now? If we're going to invent something, right, forget, like, the traditional way of people having kids, right? The way they, you know, have it away in that. You know, <laughs> well, what do you mean? What do you mean? No, you know, like, the the way that, you know, we we have kids and stuff, if it'd be good if what happened was to, to control it, is if man and woman, right, they sort of, they're born and that, they enjoy their life, they learn a lot, they live to be about 
78, I think, by that point. <laughs> so specific. Yeah, no, 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 yeah. but seven, by 78, I reckon you've sort of got to that point where you go, do you know what, I've done everything I'm going to do. If you haven't bungee jumped by the time you're 78, you're not going to do it. No. You know what I mean? So it's kind of like... Your hips you've, come off. You've, you've done it all now. Yeah. And then you die, right? So, say if everyone had that, they lived to be 78. Mm. But then, just as you die, you, you have a little baby inside you. And as you die, your life carries on. Sorry, how is this you, happening? Sorry, are you mental? No, no, but don't you think? I mean, what? I've never heard such dribble. You say you're saying that, but if Newton said it, you'd go, hmm, interesting. <laughs> that's that's what annoys me. The point is, Carl, he never would. No, he would never say it. That's the point. I, if I, you I never say it, if you never I say it, I don't understand what you're talking about there. What? <laughs> how, how, how was it? How is there a little baby in a seventy-eight? No, what I'm saying is, it's like an apple where. <laughs> The apple grows and it's got its little baby pips in it, and and the apple goes and the seeds are planted and a new one's born. But what that's I, what happens. That is what reproduction is. Yeah, but I'm saying babies aren't being born left, right, and centre. It's 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 controlled, so that as someone dies, someone's born. But Carl, stop. H whose responsibility is Look, this? If you don't want to do but it, we won't do it. But is I'm it just... supposed to be nature? Has nature got to, to develop <laughs> humans so that we act that way? We, we live that what way? I or like, is this a scientific experiment? What I like, he said, he said to you then, he said, Look, if you don't want to do it, we don't need to do it. <laughs> yeah. Like, if you were up for it, <laughs> yeah. we'll sort it out. Yeah. We can do that. We'll have a whit round so no, we can do the research. I, I just think, at the end of the day, we've got to do something. And is anyone keeping an eye on this and, and looking at what we can do next to control the population thing? It does my head in that I've got to live in London for work and what have you. And there's loads of people here. And, you know, forget going out on a Saturday night, it's too busy. And you can't move and they keep... I mean, what annoys me about London So is, your solution is that 78-year-old women have little babies inside them. And, and as they slip away into death, the yeah. little babies... And how is that baby then Who raised? Looks Who looks baby? after the baby? Because it's a pretty good system, having a baby <laughs> while you're young enough to look after that baby and make sure it lives <laughs> yeah. to, uh, you know, reproductive age itself. I mean, that, one, it's, that system's been working for years. Nature's sort of sorted it out. Natural selection and evolution sort of makes that a, a good model. But wait a minute, Nature. Pop that on hold, because Carl Pilkington's got an idea. <laughs> yeah. Uh, it's just, it was just, it was, that's what it was, just an idea. Yeah, well, it was, you know, it was nonsense. But thank it was you for it. the worst. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it was the ramblings of it was the ramblings of someone you'd find by themselves in a hospital eating flies. This is the sort of thing you find when uh, if they find uh, maybe a, a pamphlet or a, a booklet written by a psychopath. <laughs> you know, someone just yeah. before they went on a rampage and then turned the gun on themselves, they yeah. go through their possessions and they find a book I and it's got weird drawings, women with knives in their face, yeah. and this kind of guy. In fact, I saw uh, I saw a similar sort of theory written out on a wall, but it was written in shit. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Yeah. No, all I'm all I'm saying is I think it's you know, when people die normally, everyone's fed up about it, aren't they, and a bit down. But <laughs> if when you if if when you pass away, you go, oh, we're gonna miss Gladys or whatever, but then there's this new life brought in, it's almost like a Bad news, but good but news. you're talking about it like someone could pick this idea up and run with it. Like you've given them enough information <laughs> yeah. to do it. How is this possible? Where does she get the baby from? How, 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 why does it grow? Why grow it in, a, in Gladys's belly? Why not have it in a drawer? <laughs> but what I'm saying is, ready to go. Just add water. I, right. I mean, who there's, looks there's, after son of Gladys? Look, look. There is no theory here. There's no. Th it's the ramblings of a, a madman. What I'm saying is though, the body's always changing in it, from caveman to now or whatever. In some changing. cases. And they're always finding out more and more. Like I read the other day yeah. about how um, they're saying, do you know how like they say people have six senses? Yeah. There's loads more than that. <laughs> <laughs> right, and there's this one. I say, show me that you've got one. No, right, and, and there's this one that's knocking about. Go on. That, uh, what it is, say if I'm, say if I'm in, a, in a pub, right, mm. and I'm, I'm just doing a crossword or whatever. Unlikely, but go on. And uh, there's some woman who's walked in, right, and she's staring at me. Yeah. I know she's looking at me, and I look up and I look round. She's looking at me, right. and they're saying that's a new sense that they, that they found out from, like you know, doing tests and what have you. Yeah, it's rubbish. And they're um, saying okay. that's been around well, it, since but, since like man and dinosaur was knocking about. They 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 they've stopped. No, they've pursuing. explained I, I it. I think it's safe to assume that. You know that with your perfectly round head, people are always stopping and no, looking. No, but they explain. I mean, you just know that there's probably going to be someone there if they, you get right. They said it's from the time when like caveman was like wandering about, and he'd go, "Hang on a minute," 
and he'd look around and there's a dinosaur there or whatever and he'd, right, he'd leg it. Right, this is, this is nonsense. One, it's one, not... I hate it when people use the word term when caveman was wandering <laughs> around. Caveman and dinosaurs, oh, they used to live together, yeah. Oh, that's the same era. Yeah. What have you been watching? Raquel Welsh. What do you mean? Well, what do you mean caveman wandering, knocking around with a dinosaur? You know the Flintstones is only partly based on fact. <laughs> Dinosaurs and man did not coexist. The dinosaurs had long gone before man arrived. Extinct. Kaput. Hmm. You don't, well, you don't believe us? Well, you don't believe because you, because you've seen... Because you saw that film where they took pictures of lizards and magnified them and put them next to men in films so they looked like they were fighting. Yeah. No, but why, why couldn't that have happened? What is the film with Raquel Welsh? Um, a million years BC. Year, a million years BC or something. A million yeah, yeah, yeah. years BC. Brilliant. Yeah. Yeah. No, no, but... She had a sort of woolly mammoth bikini. Fact. But why, why wasn't the dinosaurs back then just like how we have dogs now, in a way? He's watching the Flintstones. He's, watching the Flintstones. he's thinking of the Flintstones, yeah. that's what he's when thinking. When he puts out the saber-toothed tiger yeah, and yeah. then and he, and he and mixes his concrete in a pelican. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I, just, I just think that they, there must have been a crossover point. Why? Why do you say that? Why do you think there must have been there a crossover must have been. point? Because if nothing was knocking about at any point, how did anything carry on? I know. Uh, exactly. Why, why, why didn't Hitler meet Nero? It's weird, isn't it? There must have been a crossover. They must have met somewhere. They must have met at a party somewhere. <laughs> they mixed in similar circles. Yeah. They must have bumped into... S I can't believe it. Yeah, forget it. Oh. Come what about you, Carl? Would you do it? It, it depends, doesn't it, what your job is and that. If you're a doctor, you've got to get to, you know, go and save someone or whatever. You can't say, oh, I'll just give it ten minutes. Depends. Depends on the situation, depends. Most of the time I've got to get him work early, I can't be hanging around to half But you don't know, do you? I've, so, I've, you know, I've called him long as a, as a film when he was up. He, uh, I've seen him do one day, mm. right? I've seen him for one whole day, he went away, he fell asleep at, um, quarter to eight yeah. in the bath because he was knackered. So, yeah. you know, he has five weeks on the year, he's taking the piss. Feeder. Pushing the senses. Quite food related. Sort of uh, show isn't it, it is. It? They're thinking of gluttony. Did you Just see in? Uh, I think it was Heat magazine. Huh? Um, it was former pop idol winner Michelle McManus. Oh yeah. She's lost considerable. She's lost a lot of weight. Oh yeah. And, she's lost um, five stone, hasn't she? Did you see that the headline was? Um, I used to eat uh, twelve packets of Doritos a night. At she's night, twelve packets of Doritos. I just like the idea that you got to eleven packets, and you're thinking. Oh, One more, just a bit packish. One more, do it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh, it's unbelievable. Yeah. But someone sent in a couple of uh, odds and ends news stories. You know, they've gleaned off the web. And apparently, uh, Britain's fattest family have shared twenty-three stone. Um, they, what, uh, many of them died. Between the five of them, oh come on, between the five of them, the Phillips family from Worcester weighed more than a hundred stone. Jesus. Well, how many are there though? They spent five of them, and they spent three hundred pounds a week on food. Um, a an evening meal consisted of an all-you-can-eat Chinese buffet and another ice cream stop at McDonald's. Uh, the mum, she was generally happy, like Carl is, but she said she used to get upset when she couldn't um, buy clothes for her kids because the shops didn't stock anything above XXXXXL. Um, but uh, <laughs> it says here, <laughs> it says Mitchell, 13, was the heaviest of the three, weighing 27 stone. By the age of four, he was Britain's fattest toddler, weighing 10 stone. Is that competition <laughs> still going? He, bro <laughs> he <sighs> broke five bikes. He broke five bikes by uh, buckling the wheels. Oh, that's I know you're always kind of fat kids, Carl. Chasing an ice cream van. <laughs> yeah. But <laughs> the bike just fell apart. Yeah. Wow. Maybe, now maybe now he's on that new dirt uh, bike ride, you know, because he's lost some weight. Oh, well, that would be painful, that'd, wouldn't that'd it? That would be extraordinary. If one of buckles. Yeah. Well, I've got uh, another food related uh, item here. Now, Carl, I got a little email via um, my agent sent from someone here, okay, so, sent from someone at, um, XFM, okay, and uh, I won't say it was, she just said, uh, I thought um, this might be uh, good for Ricky to use on Saturday, and obviously what happened is, Suzanne has sent you an email in the week, it was Wednesday, and you've returned it, but I think you've returned it to the wrong email address, you returned it to someone here, who of course immediately forwarded it to my agent for ridicule on the show. Don't panic, it's nothing that bad, okay. It's a, uh, an email from Suzanne talking about your tea that night. Was Suzanne out on Wednesday night? Was the, uh, an England game or something? Yeah. So you, you were alone, you were home alone were you Wednesday night? Yeah. Did you enjoy your meals? Was it, was it a quiche? Go on. Right. From Suzanne to Carl. Take the quiche and put it on the baking tray. 
Cook for thirty minutes on a hundred and ninety. Take lettuce and put on plate. Take three tomatoes, wash and chop into quarters. Place on lettuce. Take an avocado, <laughs> chop in half, remove the stone, <laughs> peel skin and slice. Place on salad. Put salt and pepper on and a dribble of olive and balsamic vinegar dressing. Right? In brackets, small bottle behind the cafetiere. <laughs> Right, in case he's reaching for bleach. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's it. Just put everything else away. Right? Then sprinkle a smidge of parmesan on top. Remove quiche from oven, cut into quarters and put on plate. Eat. Oh, wow. <laughs> Does she have to do that every nice. single time? She's like... <laughs> no, it's just that she, I'm not that good at cooking, right? Um, and to be honest, that, that was a lot of hard work. I didn't bother warming it up. And I did without the avocado. <laughs> Why? Why? Too much messing about. <laughs> he didn't even do that! With instructions it was too much! But, um, oh. yeah, I'm not that- I'm not that good at cooking and Did that, you genuinely- um, that's not cooking though, is it, Carl? That's- That's, that's heating up a quiche. That's good. Cooking it is making the quiche. Yeah, but I'm- I'm just- Do you- do you- on. could you have figured that out? <laughs> she might have left that note for you. Why did she have to tell you what the olive oil and, um, balsamic vinegar was? Because I've, I've, I've put sort of cooking oil on my food once and I said, oh, it's a bit... <laughs> it's ever since, yeah, right, year, years ago. I'm gonna die! Years ago. Oh, God, it, look, leaving Mr. Magoo at home! It, it, was, just... it was ever since I put sausages in the toaster. <laughs> that, uh, <laughs> what do I nearly, you mean? I set what the do you mean? Because, do you know like when you're grilling food in a pan and all that? Yeah. Sort of sausages spit and it goes everywhere, doesn't it? And it makes everywhere <laughs> greasy. <laughs> So I thought, well, <laughs> just want to warm them up. Yeah. Put them in the toaster. Yeah. What happened? And she sort of caught- well, They got she, stuck and they sort of caught on fire, I she, imagine. She, well, she came in just as I was sort of plunging it and might have came in from work. She said, what are you doing? What are you- I said, no, I'm in sausages. <laughs> well, the oven isn't on, I know, they're in here. <laughs> what, you turn it off? They're panicking and that. But I've, I've never been into it. I've never been into cooking <laughs> and that. At school and oh, stuff, I didn't bother doing it. Oh, every time Suzanne comes home, she must think, please be the house still there. Yeah. Please, uh, please not let me hear a fire engine as I come round this corner. Oh God, she comes and goes, oh God, thank God. I bet she's always happy to see you when she gets home and you haven't burned the place down or introduced some howler monkeys or something. Unbelievable. But I, what I find extraordinary is there are people who are in sort of care in the community who don't need instructions no. on how to prepare food. No, they, 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 they can do it, yeah, you show them once. Yeah, no, they, 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 whatever you do. Don't put sausages in the toaster, Johnny. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, I mean, they, and they, they don't, it. They don't put sausages in the toaster. Yeah. What they, they put their fingers in. But, <laughs> <yeah>. <laughs> it's a Ricky and Steve classic on XFM Sugar, if I can't change your mind. Brilliant. Uh, so listen, it's time, isn't it? We've only got a few minutes left, so you better play the jingle. Oh, chimpanzee that! Monkey news! <laughs> so monkey news, if you've uh, only just started listening to the show. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you poor fool. Um, Monkey News is where Carl um, reports for us all the latest monkey activity. A headline or a word or someone, someone, someone's only overheard in a pub and then totally embellishes it and makes it ridiculous and impossible. He <laughs> believes it though. He believes every word he's saying. Let me say that before you hear, when you hear this, whatever it is, I haven't heard it, twaddle, um, remember, Carl totally believes it. Go on. Right, so anyway, right, I think it's in, uh, in LA, this happened. Right. I think. Why? What does he think? Uh, so these people are in a in a restaurant having a lovely meal. <laughs> Is one of them short and hairy, but it goes <laughs> totally covered from top to bottom in a spacesuit, so he didn't know it was a monkey. It's so, not one of the customers, one of the waiters. So that so they're having a having a lovely dinner, probably one of the best sort of dinners they've, they've had, right? Mm. So the waiter comes over and it's like, you know, can we just say that I had a lovely meal and that? Right, it's the chef. Of course, is. Can we see the chef? Yeah. So, so <laughs> can, can we just, you know, see see the guy who cooked it? Of course. Yeah. 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 Short fella, hairy. So, the waiter, the, said, to be honest, the, waiter, much. the waiter said, look, he's busy, you know, he's got meals to cook and what have you. He hadn't really got time. He said, it only took a minute. He said, no, I prefer, you know. So this I'll, is a restaurant in LA that I'll, serves brilliant food. I'll pass, I'll pass your message on and what have you, right? So, um. So he yeah. sends for so, uh, Monkey Pierre White. So it's a bit odd, anyway. <laughs> So, so they go, so they go out, right? They go, uh, they go out to the car and they notice the, uh, the kitchen door's open. Yeah, right? yeah, of course they do, because they're, they're gonna discover something that I don't know. So they they're just- gonna Hold on, this, um, just, just out of interest, this, uh, the, where did this, um, chef train before, before we see him or reveal, you know, what he might look like or mm -hmm. like to eat, yeah, um, um, 
So well, anyway, so uh, so they pop their head in and think, we'll just we'll just nip in and go, yeah, you well, know, love 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 fruit salad or whatever. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So they stick their head. See the humans. We better see the humans. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You never guess what. Go on. Monkey stood on a chair, right, <laughs> cooking veg. <laughs> Right, so anyway, so they're like, what's going on there? <laughs> what, what, what do you questions? mean? What do you mean he's cooking veg? What is he doing with it? Well, he's, he's stood on a chair by the, by the cooker and he's, yeah. uh, chopping, stu chopping oh, stuff. Oh, he's, he's chopping it. as well now, he's just not that, isn't it? Yeah. It's got a little, uh, you know, he's it, it, got the, the bosses in there, they're, they're like a bit shocked. So he's a bit panicking because he's got this monkey working for him. So they say to him, what's going on, eh? We didn't know this, this is what's going on, you know, why have you got a monkey cooking stuff? So he said, well, they it's only a monkey, I should point out, who probably doesn't need instructions from its girlfriend. Ah, <laughs> uh, forget it. An honest mistake by the bravery on XFM 104.9. I'm Ricky Gervais, with me Stephen Merchant and Carl Pilkington, yep. our producer. Right. And inverted commas, heat put. Yep. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. They, they, they know. They know. How are you doing, alright, Carl? Yeah, didn't they also write something about me, uh, Bald round head? Yes, perfectly round little yeah. bald man head, they said, so. Did you need to know that when you listen to the radio on that? <coughs> really matters what my hair's doing. Your hair, have you, have you given it a little sort of polish? Because you look like a cue ball at the moment, and you've had a shave in it. I've never seen such a round head. It looks, it actually looks like a plate with ears. Yeah, well, for those that have never seen Carl, I, I actually, um, if you remember, I think he looks a little bit like, uh, Mr. Spoon from Button Moon. It <laughs> He does! He does! <laughs> if, you, if you've um, ever seen that show, that's And also he looks like, you know when they say, um, they find with a little four foot human and it's actually half a million years old and they give it a name and it's got, it's the first, you know, Australopithecus into, uh, he looks like one of them as well. Perfectly round little, he is the missing link, he looks half human, half monkey. Cause he's got a slight slouch as well. So yeah, it's know, like yeah. those pictures where you see it going from an ape to a man. And I he's know. Sort of in the middle. Yeah, and he's, and of course his monkey hands, his hairy little wrist to those little, those skinny little things that you can get oranges out of holes with. And it's unbelievable. Why are you so all shaved and polished and everything. Got a wedding. <laughs> what? Got to go to a wedding today, so, uh, thought I'd, you know, clean myself up a bit. Yeah. Shouldn't you be wearing head. a suit or something? No, I'll go home and put some that on. Oh, okay. But, uh, yeah, Suzanne, uh, said, you know, make an effort. Uh, <coughs> sort of had a shave and that, and then she, I came out of the bathroom, she said, oh, your head looks a bit sort of eggish. <laughs> <laughs> She's right. Like, <laughs> she always worries about when I have a shave, because I, I just, you know. That's I mean, your girlfriend, Carl. I know. Saying that. Yeah. Just think. So don't worry about Heat saying it. And the funny thing is, it's Boyd, Boyd Hilton, I think, of Heat that wrote it. And he's got a little bald head. Yeah, no, don't slag him off. Yeah, but on the end of his review, does it say, you know, written by <laughs> Baldy Boyd? No. Because <laughs> it doesn't matter, it's a magazine. Don't worry about it. Looking forward to the wedding? <laughs> Ah, uh, a bit boring, isn't it? But <laughs> <you've gotta> be, <laughs> um, they're probably listening. Should we do a shot? It'll be a great day for them. But I know what will happen. Suzanne will see, you know, all the fuss and that, and then she'll get ideas and have to let her down and all that. Why? Yeah. Uh, why is it you don't want to get married again? I always forget. It's just it was it for at the end of the day. I've been with Suzanne for eleven years, right? Sure. We're happy. Well, I, I am. <laughs> uh, yeah, that's what counts. You're and, never happy. I am. I'm all right. Yeah, no, you're, I know you're happy with Suzanne and everything, but apart from that, you're never happy. You're, you are the most grumpy, moany thing in the world. I mean, I get annoyed, but I'm always happy. I was annoyed here. I was happy coming here, but there was a bloke behind me walking and scuffling his feet. He had a pair of those stupid skulls on, and he, he was clicking and scuffing. Wear some shoes. You don't have to click. Pick your feet up. Flip flops annoy me. Mm. You know. But I'm happy. I'm just annoyed. You are just like, oh, the world's on me. It's rubbish. This. I know the world's great. It's just sometimes people annoy me by <laughs> being there. <laughs> you know. But, uh, <laughs> Steve said I should be locked in one of those towers that princesses used to be in locked fairy in tales. fairy towers because so, everything annoys me. Um, but you, you are, you're grumpy. I'm not, I'm alright. Oh, right, okay, listen, we better play a record, um, soon, but, um, coming up, Steve, I went away with Carl. Okay. It was a little present from Jane, it was a golfing day, and I could take someone, took Carl, it was a brilliant day, absolutely, absolutely brilliant, but it ended with us sort of drinking and chatting and me saying, right, I'm going to bed, because Carl said the most ridiculous thing he has ever said. Think of that. That's something. Oh. Sometimes, Carl, I think you're on another planet, he's the only ones. Another girl, another planet, by the only ones. What a song. Amazing. One of my favourite intros ever. Um, 
Dr. Fox would disagree with me. His favourite ever was, uh, I think, Money for Nothing, if I remember correctly. Interesting. Yeah. Wait, another great tune. Yeah, another great, another great tune. I'm not knocking, I'm not knocking him. If uh, you'd like to let us know what your favourite intro of all time. <laughs> 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 that number again is over. <laughs> uh, for, for. Uh, right. Well, we got so much to, to get through well, with sorry, this show. Let me just get this, mate. I don't quite understand. You were given a gift. And the gift was a golf thing. A golf thing. A day, day of golf. And, and, and uh, uh, yeah, for my Christmas present, part of my Christmas present from Jane, um, uh, a night away, um, two rooms, two rounds of golf, dinner for two, right? Oh. Uh, uh, but, but not with her, I noticed. Well, she doesn't play. No, she knew. No, as if right. present, they were playing golf. It was. It was a sure. golf thing. She doesn't play golf, so um, I had to choose someone to uh, sure. um, uh, take away. Um, sorry, it wasn't a romantic meal. No, no, <laughs> that, was, that, was, that, that was, was my immediate thought. Was... <laughs> yeah, 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 me and Carl uh, just uh, getting in there in the jacuzzi together. Yeah. It, it would... just sounds like an excuse for Jane to have a day off from you. <laughs> 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 but right. you don't play golf, Jane. I know. I know. Go, <laughs> go, go, go. Yeah, yeah. Enjoy yourself. <laughs> a bowling ball with yeah. my name on it. Um, so <clears throat> chose Carl. Obviously, um, uh, we went. Well, it was a great day, wasn't it? Brilliant round of golf, absolutely brilliant. Such a beautiful place in Stoke Poges, it's like a really posh place. And does, uh, do, are you a good golf, uh, a good golf player? Uh, well, we'll get to that. Oh, okay. <laughs> 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 Well, we uh, he bought he we he bought the shoes specially for it. Oh, we could have, I'd love to see him in those little shoes. I know, and they were no good because they were metal spikes. We had to change them. He was annoyed straight away. He, he spent over twenty two pounds on these <laughs> these golf shoes. <laughs> uh, we hired a buggy that was brilliant fun. Uh, I was bombing along, wasn't I? Mm. I don't drive, but I I just it was great on that buggy. Well, you've been on a buggy with me, and you were a bit scared. Yeah. What? what I need to get one of those ones. I was just taking banks and things, but you don't see sort of bunkers, and he'd scream, and go, stop! And he'd put his foot down the brake, and then went like reverse. Well, at one point, he sort of did a handbrake turn next to the lake, and then we had we had to reverse, right? And you know, you just flick a switch and put your foot down. He did that without looking. I looked behind, there's a big oak tree there. He screams, <laughs> what's the tree, right? He was, he was, he was, so, oh, cheap of hazard. <laughs> I kept jumping in and uh, leaving him behind because I had to go to my ball. Because uh, sure. anyway, um, so uh, the first shot, the first shot, I got on my driver. I honestly did one of the best shots I've ever done. It went straight down. It was great. I thought, phew, got away with that because it's always the first one because it's a clubhouse and you yeah, want to look yeah, good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So. Uh, he did up that. And I've been saying, buy some balls. He just got six balls. I was going, what if you lose me? I want these six balls, right? He gets, <laughs> he tees up, right? Whacks it. It goes miles, like, right angles, straight into these, uh, the, the woods, right? He turns around, he goes, go and buy some more balls. <laughs> so I'm laughing, because it's, like, impolite to laugh. But he, he, he broke the ice for me, and yeah. I was falling around. And then his second shot, I go, you know you're off a three now, if you take another shot. He went, oh, right. So it's his third shot. He puts the ball down. <laughs> he hits the ground before it, and this is the ball off the ground. <laughs> and I was on my back, wasn't I? <laughs> Unbelievable. Actually rolling about on his back. <laughs> <laughs> and we were the terrible. Purpose. I went round 107, he went round in like 119 or something. Sure. We, it was just rubbish. How long but did it take? Five hours. Of course. And there was no one around, luckily. Yeah, um, yeah. But it was fantastic. So then we go and have a, um, uh, our meal. What oh, annoys me, I said, right, I'll go for a run, you and I'll have a bath. I said, I'll see you at quarter to eight. At five to eight, I have to call him. He's not ready, so he's let me down there. Oh. We I, I can't stay in lateness or laziness. You hate lateness. Or, yeah, and he's let me down. Do you know his excuse? He fell asleep in the bath because there was no light bulb. There was no light bulb in the bathroom. So, so he instantly asleep. he fell asleep <laughs> and he was late. No, do you know what I mean though, Steve? If you're sort of like nice and warm and what have you. I was tired anyway, I've been stressed out <laughs> for four and a half hours, right? Uh, <laughs> right? And life flashed in front of me a few times in that buggy. <laughs> so it's all sort of wears you down a bit. I thought, right, I've got a headache. You're going for your run. I'm gonna have a bath. I walk in, put the light on. For some reason it didn't come on, but I thought, it's alright, I'll just uh you know, doesn't matter. You can have a bath in the it's dark. summer, so it's light anyway. Well, so. there's no windows in the bathroom, so <laughs> yeah. So you were in the darkness. So I'm in the darkness. <laughs> I nod off because I'm shattered. <laughs> he calls up, asking me. So I said, "Well, I won't." Uh, you know, it doesn't normally take that long for me because you know I haven't got like long hair. I've got a dryer and shit. Sure. I can sort of one wipe. <laughs> yeah. yeah. It's uh, already ten minutes late though when I called. Well, of ten minutes. Mm, ten well, minutes. lateness is lateness. Well, next. It doesn't matter. Dinner mm. wasn't until quarter past, so mm. we had like another yeah. twenty minutes anyway. So mm. it doesn't really matter. Yeah, but we said quarter two. So he's calling up. Hurry up, hurry up. So I said, "Yeah, all right." So I get out. I'm drying like me tackle and what have you. <laughs> Calls back again thirty seconds filled, later. You know. No, I don't. No? You know, you I don't, don't like that. Do that no. You better wipe. Thirty seconds later. Come on. 
So I end up going downstairs to the to the meal area, <laughs> naked, with a wet shirt on and wet socks. <laughs> I've got headache as it is. Meant to be a relaxing weekend. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, so we have our meal, which is re really nice. And then, we're, then we're sitting yeah. in the bar, I'm having a, I'm having a cigar by the fire. Yeah. Like we're having a, a rather nice uh, Pinot Grigio. Yeah. He's there going, I've got an ink. Is this 1955 <laughs> you live in? <laughs> <laughs> It's so right. And we, we are knackered because you know he's not used to work. I've seen him moaning, falling asleep. He's sure. not used to it at all. And you've been on your feet for o for over half an hour. <laughs> yeah, right. So um, yeah, we didn't even walk around the golf <laughs> course. We had a buggy. Yeah. Wasn't even exercise. So we get onto conversations. He's talking about. He's, he's asking me stuff about evolution. What about e what's the, tell me that? Why? Why the giraffe? What, what's that rubbish about the giraffe getting a long neck? So well, it didn't. It didn't try and get a long neck. It it was selected. And he said, but. Why would evolution do that? I went, well, you think that evolution didn't do anything? There's not, there's not this consciousness, there's not this will that a giraffe has to stretch its neck to reach the leaves. Why not have a long enough neck to survive and pass it? In? He was going, yeah, but why did evolution? This isn't. But by the way, this isn't the most stupid thing. This okay. is uh, this is warming up. This is about quarter to nine. Uh, right? sure. He said, why didn't evolution make a giraffe good at carpentry so it could build a ladder? Right. Yeah. Okay. okay. No. Right. Right. Okay. So he's thinking. He's thinking around it. He's trying to. He's trying to pick holes in evolution. Yeah. Eating knobs. Carol Thatcher, you know, a daughter of uh, one of our leaders. Sure. Well, you saw her in I'm a Celebrity Get Me Out of Here. She popped a couple of bollocks in the mouth, oh. chewed them up, swallowed them. Oh. Kangaroo uh, penis there dried. She couldn't even get. It was so tough. She couldn't even get through it. And then she <laughs> eventually she what, eats it. What was it like a pepperoni? Yeah. And she. What do you think of that, Carl? What, are you eating that sort of stuff? Yeah. I just, I mean, I, I, I watch it, I like those little trial bits, right? Yeah. But, what, what I don't think people realise is, right, it is hard eating a little kangaroo knob. Right? Really? How do you know? No, it's just, you know, you think about it and you go, oh, I couldn't do that, right? But what they never mention on the TV programme, which I think takes it to the next level, right? They're eating that at like half past seven in the morning. Sure. <laughs> right. Which is worse, isn't it? Yeah. Do you know what I mean? If 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 I was there, and Ant and Dex said, "Right, Carl, eat the knob," I'd go. Hang on a minute. It gives a few hours. <laughs> let me get some rice and that on my belly, and just sort of fill me up a little bit more. I'll pop back at about half six this evening. Right. Have it ready. <laughs> and I'd I'd be happier then. It's just it's just that thing of. You know, you, you just you, you, want, you don't want to eat you don't eat animal genitals on an empty stomach. So what are you saying? You could... I'm, I'm I'm saying like I, I could eat I could eat a knob at night, but. Just cut that there. We'll loop that. If any if any uh, DJs are listening, no. um, just take that quote. I could eat a knob at night uh, by Carl Pilkington. Mm -hmm. Maybe do a, a, a dance remix. Yeah, just I, maybe you're sort of a house producer and you could maybe get some kind of high energy beat going, and then we could oh, just send that out to some of the gay clubs. I'm yeah. sure it'd be pop really popular. Please, please, anyone, send us you know uh, uh, that that loop with a nice little you know uh, funky house beat. Carl Pilkington saying I could eat a knob at night. It is hard eating a knob. So what are you saying? You I'm, I'm, I'm saying like, I, I, I could eat a knob at night. 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 Do you know the other week when uh, I came up with like a different idea of how we can sort of make the world run and that? 
Can we what? just have a quick recap of that? Because I seem to remember it was a load of old arse. It was, it was ridiculous. It was, um, he was saying that the, 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 the world is overpopulated, so the system would be where people were living too long and stuff. So what happens is, people live till 78, I don't know how you can enforce that, right? Yeah. But when they die, they've got a little baby in their stomach, <laughs> right. like a pip in an apple, <laughs> yeah. that then carries on when they oh, die. Right. It, it wasn't a theory, it wasn't an idea. Uh, it was the ramblings of a mental you, you case. You're saying it's stupid, but someone's emailed in and said, oh yeah, that's, that's pretty good. Just say. If, if, if that's a no, right? I've been thinking it about... It is a no. What about if we do it the other way, right? Ah, oh, go on. Somehow, I don't know how A yet. kid has an old lady? <laughs> <laughs> hey, that's what it's gonna be, isn't it? A child no. give birth to an old man. No. Hey. What I'm saying is, right... Go on. Work the other way round. Come on, then. So, if, if somehow we can inject something... <laughs> In, in like a, a body that's just died, right? Listen to this! Imagine Shh. this, but well, look, imagine this is notes. So when they ha when he hands it into the Nobel people, yeah. and they go, if there's a way that we can inject something, and they go, well, what? Well, I don't know the chemical formula, but something. Something HO2. Right. So anyway, so you inject it mm. in the temple. Um, <laughs> He's narrowed it down to the temple. So what happens? She sort of wakes up, Amazing. right? And she works the other way. So, like, she might be 77, yep. and then she'll have a birthday, she's 76, and she's working that way, right. if you know what I mean. <laughs> okay. Are you, are you with me? <laughs> no, keep it. Because, because the thing is, you've got... <laughs> I have no I'm idea. really scared. Yeah. I'm really scared. This is the maddest thing you've ever said. <laughs> yeah. This is madder than the old lady with the pit uh, like an apple in her belly. It sort of did work. This is No, it didn't work. It worked in your head. It's like a dream that you wake up and go, oh, I've got a great theory. This it's is like... what this is it. Let me just tell you the, the ending, because the ending works out a bit better. Go on. What I'm saying is, when you die mm. at the age of seventy eight. Nine months. What? At the age of nine months, because that's when you come out. What do you mean when you die at the age of You're not you've... scared of dying because you're now a baby, so you don't know what's going on anyway. So there's no. Fear. So you've missed out a bit here. So this woman, what, literally gets younger and younger? I think yeah. when she's in her twenties, she's in her old age, Rick. Yeah, but it doesn't matter because that's the that's the fun part of your life, isn't it? When you're twenty and you've got all your energy and that. So before you die, you're actually having a good life, rather than it being the other way around. But does she do different stuff th 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 than she did on the way up? Cos she's already lived 78 years, <laughs> hasn't she? Don't forget. She was a baby once, and she grew to her ears, then someone, then once the stopped, someone stuck a needle in her head and said, right, back you go. <laughs> no, we'll forget all that bit. Oh, I'll forget all that bit. How do we forget that bit? What I'm saying so is... So she died and she doesn't remember all her, all her, this is a new life, is it? Let She's... me just leave you with this. Right, you're talking shit, explain yourself. But aren't the family getting younger as well? What's happened to the family? Forget I mean, it I then, we'll leave it as it is. No, we'll leave it as it is, shall we? <laughs> shall we, can we all agree on that, guys, no? Shall we, shall we agree to leave it as it is, is that alright? Cos I don't want to hear any more from the diaries of Charles Manson. No, it's, it's, look, I mean, you're a fucking maniac. A friend of mine got a gift, um, or rather gave it as a gift. I don't know if you've been familiar with these. It's a charity organisation, and you go on their website, or you, you know, phone them up, and you can give someone else the gift of, say, a goat. And it's a sort of goodwill thing, you know what I mean? So you buy, you buy an African family uh, a goat, that and will help uh, them for years. And it's, to it's come. like you're saying, well, I would have bought you a present. Yeah. But, but I've that, used that money wisely. Yeah, so it's almost like they've given exactly. the present. They've given the, 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 the goat. Yeah, it's a beautiful idea. But I, as soon as he told me about it, I thought to myself straight away, knowing Carl's views on charity and giving, yeah. what, I wondered what his views would be. Well, are they are they happy with the present over there, like the people who are getting it? You you're an idiot. What you think? An African family uh, wakes up and there's a little goat with a ribbon tied around it, and they go, "Oh look what Santa brought us!" Look, and that mince pie is gone, and that glass of milk. You're such an idiot. No, no, no but what I'm saying is, does does that? Fa does that family want a goat? Yes. But, well, but why? It's when not that they want a goat, it's they need a goat. Do you think- What right, do you think it. this organisation <laughs> is? <laughs> not, not, not they're arbitrarily they're giving goats to people. They're gonna say, oh, I wanted Nintendo. <laughs> what are you- what are you thinking? Well, what I'm saying is, right, <laughs> let me put myself in- in their shoes. Well, this will be a first. Got any, but- but say- say- say I'm- I'm- I'm one of them, right, over there. Right, I'm sat there, it's Christmas Day, right. I open it up, open the present, little goat there, right. <laughs> Now, if I was one of them, I'd be going, not another mouth to feed. <laughs> At the end of the day, there isn't enough food to go round for themselves, never mind a goat. 
Don't they say like having a having a dog and that is quite expensive? They, sometimes they say, you know, what with all the injections you've got to give it. <laughs> Well, I'm assuming it's all above board. The goats have its injections. That's what some of the money goes towards. It's just a way of redirecting cash. But, but the thing is, why do they want that goat? What's the main reason? <laughs> to, what, What's the main... What does a goat give you? Milk. milk. Right. Now, wouldn't it be easy to, to just send them a bottle of milk? <laughs> <laughs> without all the hassle and the headaches that come with it. That's all I'm saying. And the other thing is, think about the goat. That was happy over here. Suddenly, it's on barren land. No grass. <laughs> I'm going to burst! <laughs> what do you mean? We didn't send a goat from here. I'm saying, who's happy at the end of this, right? <gasps> You've got a fella who hasn't got a present over here because the mate bought him a goat, right? So, so, so yeah, let's do, this, let's do this properly. So there's a tick. He's not happy, right? <laughs> Then, you've got the person who's opened it, who, like you said, wanted something else, right? It's a goat. They go, who's going to look after this, right? So tick, they're not happy. And then you've got the goat going, what am I doing here? <laughs> God, we're going to play a song now, right? One of my, a uh, great track, Watch That Man, off one of my favourite albums, The Love Insane by David Bowie. But, during that, can, can you, can you think of a couple of things for me? What's the best thing? that's ever happened to you. Can you can you think about that for three minutes? Me and Steve will leave you alone. Just the best thing that's ever happened to you. Remember and think that is amazing. Yeah, can you do that? Play yeah. the yeah. play Watch that man. David Bowie. Steve's caught on a way there, just wandering around, not quite ready, were you? No, no, I'm just relaxing, you know, I'm just yeah. laid back, just hanging. Yeah, Carl. Yeah. Best thing that's ever happened to you. Best event, best day in your life. I mean there's there's loads of things that happen. Like, uh, yeah. no, but, do you know what I mean? You can go for obvious stuff like, you know, meeting Suzanne, yeah. sticking with her and having well, a take, take that, take that as red. Yeah. 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 You've got that on your design and that's already yeah. done. Well, uh, And the day you, you know, you got your qualifications through. Yeah, the history. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Um, probably, I mean, when you asked me then, the first thing that came into my mind, right, that was a real surprise. Right, because it's like, you, you get surprises on your birthday and that, don't you? Mm. But they're not really surprises, because you're hassling your mum and dad for stuff. Yeah. And then they, you know, they might bite you. Yeah, so it's not yeah. really a real surprise, is it? Do yeah, you know what I mean? Yeah. Uh, so I'd say something that was really like, oh yeah, nice one, I've got something here, is the time when <laughs> my dad said, empty the bin, will you? Right? <laughs> I said, oh, do we have to? And I, I was watching something, it was like, why don't you, or something like that on yeah. the telly. Is this right? what started your tea bag and banana skin collection? <laughs> right. So, it was like, you know in the summer holidays where you'd have dead good telly in the morning, you had like, yeah. uh, the monkeys. Yeah, yeah, yeah. banana like, splits. You, banana splits yeah, and yeah. all that, right? And I was like, loving that, I was watching that. I mean, I said, empty the bin. I said, oh, the monkeys are on in a minute. He said, just, <laughs> oh, just empty the bin. So I emptied it and I just put it near the door. He said, don't leave it there. He said, stick it near the bins in the garden. I was like, I'll, I'll put it there later. He said, no, do it now. Yeah. Right? So I was like, oh, if I miss the beginning of this, I'll be livid, be right? Good. So I picked it up quick, ran out down to the bottom of the garden, slung it in the corner, and sort of went to turn back to go back in, and had to look again, because they had like a little AA truck. They bought me, it wasn't brand new, but he'd got it from somewhere, a little AA go-kart. Do you know one of them, like, little things? That, I mean, I was, I was young. Yeah. Right? Yeah. And it was, was like- go-kart? What well, kind of- no, the plastic ones. Yeah. When you're about- I, I don't know, I must have been like five or six or something. So I don't quite follow. The, 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 had so he sent dad, you out there? My dad sent, sent me out with a bin bag so yeah. I could see so like, what he'd got me. And yeah. it wasn't my birthday or anything, he'd just got it from somewhere. You sure you hadn't just nicked it and dumped it out the bag? Possibly. Sure. But uh, that, that was a, like a genuine like, oh yeah, smart. Yeah. So I went back in. Watched the telly and yeah, that for a bit and went back out. You thought, went, did, I tell, did I tell you about my go kart? Yeah, like you. Yeah. About your dad giving it away. Yeah. What's the story? I, 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 I think I've told you something. Have you gone? What? Tell it again. Well, I, uh, I, I told it on air. I can't remember. Maybe I just told you. Um, when I was about eight or nine, I had a go kart and I loved it. It was one of those things you pressed back and forth. Yes. And I used to come in every day. Used to just get changed and run out, and it was. Um, behind the shed, and I used to just go up and down the garden. And one day I came running in, and I ran out, and I couldn't see it. And I went to the back door, my mum was uh, washing up, and I went, where's my go-kart? She went, your dad swapped it. Your dad swapped it? Yeah. With his, it was, it was his mate, Jimmy, in the pub. He went, it's just, I said, what, ah. Oh. She went, yeah, he swapped it for a wheelbarrow. 
So I went and looked back and there was this wheelbarrow, right, <laughs> that was obviously just came off a building site. Yeah. Covered in concrete. Oh, I right. couldn't- it was steel, right, ch I could hardly move it. Yeah. And I went back and I went, really? She went, yeah, it's your wheelbarrow. <laughs> See, I'm thinking so, so my dad, my dad lost a wheelbarrow that day. <laughs> yeah, and I used to, I used to push that up and down, it wasn't the same. And you used to the, push the wheelbarrow up yeah, and down? Anything I mean, in there or? No, I just like just to try, I was just trying to sort of keep myself amused. Yeah. But anyway, that summer, I went on holiday, and uh, I went to Bargainer with my mum and my nan. Um, <laughs> Another wild holiday. Yeah, yeah. And I was sort of out, out one caravan, and I, I made friends uh, with this, this kid, and he'd hired a go-kart from the the caravan, so right? And I remember him going around there, and uh, I was, it was, it was great. And I said, <laughs> and I said, I've got a go kart. <laughs> and the caravan window opened, and my mum said, Don't lie. <laughs> You've uh, got a wheelbarrow. <laughs> <laughs> Be truthful. <laughs> I went, I had a go kart. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, that's so tragic. Yeah. Well, did I'm you ever really forgive him for that? I'd never forgive him, my dad, if he'd swapped a go kart for a wheelbarrow. I just thought that's part of the course. Yeah. It? You know what I mean? He's yeah. They're in charge. Sure. Did you used to rush home and change and <laughs> <into> <laughs> back get, get, yeah. Yeah. into <laughs> that sort of gardener's gear? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Straight into your hard hat and dungarees. I go, Mum, any bricks need yeah, moving. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. Oh, no. dear. Oh, that's so tragic. Yeah. Yeah. Still, oh. that was your happiest day. Yeah. Beautiful car. So that's, that's the one that sprung to mind. Yeah. Yeah, and my, un my unhappiest. You see how, how go-karts can be good or bad? <laughs> Does that make you think, Carl, that yeah. the go-kart is, you know, is good and evil? <laughs> yeah. Play a record. Oh, I'm so upset. Ads. Huh? So, so oh, ads. brilliant. What ads have you got? I've got these. <laughs> Electric Soft Parade. Same way every day on XFM 104.9. I'm Ricky Gervais. With him, Steve Merchant. Sure. Rick, I, um, I only had one thing I had to do all week. Okay. What was that? I only had, I was all week, I was so excited about getting up Friday morning, phoning, getting Bruce Springsteen tickets. Oh, yeah. The boss is playing in, yeah. uh, in yeah. October. And basically got up too late. Well, not sold out already. You just sold didn't out. Get... It had sold out, but I've started calling about 12 30. It sold out. I trawled the net. I trawled, uh, all yeah, the phone but lines. A lot of, yeah, some of those buys are bulk buys for selling on, aren't they? They're not all this individuals. Is the this is the problem. I mean, I don't know how many people yeah, they can fit in Wembley Arena, but sold out by 12.30, and that's popular. Wembley Arena? Yeah. It's about 12,000, isn't it? I was so gutted. It was all I had to do. I was so looking forward to it. I phoned up one of those, like, do quite dodgy ticket agencies. Do you know how much he was offering to- you know, they're like, they're 45 quid to buy. Mm -hmm. He said, the starting price is 225 quid. I mean, that to me is like a ticket tout, like a legal ticket tout. Are they tout. allowed to do that? I don't know, it's crazy. I was so they angry. They could make- is it that- they- they'd have to say their booking fee was hundred and fifty pounds. Yeah, exactly. So I- but now I'm just- I'm like desperate, I don't know what to do. I'm just wondering if I can abuse our position on the radio and just try and scrounge them from anyone <laughs> who's listening. No, I mean anyone who's listening who's got the power to get them, you know, or- This is begging, or, isn't it? It's, it's- it's- it's exactly what it is, Rick, yeah. Yeah, I was gonna try and dress it up. Yeah. But it's just begging. That I'm just ticket touts after you as well. For exactly. Dissing him. Ricky dot Gervais. Don't bring me into it. Shut up. Ricky dot Gervais at xfm dot co dot uk. If there's anything you can do to get me a ticket, I'm willing to pay for it. Um, up to the oh, price of forty five quid. Uh, you know. Yeah. Wow. No the second hand. Yeah, second Thirty. Hand. Yeah. You don't. You don't want to throw yeah. your money around. I'll give you twenty five quid. Come on. <laughs> don't you know yeah. who I am? Yeah. But um. But that, I mean, do you know what I mean? Because I'm just, like, I asked Carl if he could sort it out. He's done nothing. He's achieved nothing. I know. So I'm just desperate. I'm in a desperate situation and I don't quite know what to do. I'll tell you this though, Carl. D don't bother doing favours for him because he's not grateful. He, 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 you give him something and he goes, right, does this mean I have to give you something back? And I go, well, no. He goes, good. Well, I got your cure tickets and you did nothing. Yeah, it was rubbish it. that gig. There you go. It then. was rubbish. I went along to that gig. It was a balmy summer's night. The cure, as far as I'm concerned, owed me a balmy summer's night because I wasted it. Hour and a half they played for. They played four hits. I don't want to hear their dirge from like some dodgy album and from like 1984. I'm not interested. Play the hits. Boys don't cry. Love cats. Blah 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 blah. Instead, I got nothing. I was so angry. I was. I was. Just, oh man, I you was You were probably angry at Carl, weren't you? I was angry at Carl for wasting my time getting yeah. me the tickets for free. You know if I, mean, I Carl? paid for it, Are I'd be Are you getting to see living. what sort of a bloke Steve Merchant is? Mm -hmm. No, it's not the point. Do you not agree, though? If you're gonna go and see a band like The Cure on a summer's night yeah. at Hyde Park, you do not want to hear some obscure B-sides and album tracks. But that, that's what, that was a great thing about when, when, when I saw Bowie at the BBC. He played- well, you what? He, you know about that. I don't know about this. Yeah, you do. What? When did you see Bowie? At uh, the Jonathan Ross recording. Oh, what, your showbiz friend Jonathan Ross? <laughs> yeah. What yeah. was this? Was that that TV thing he did? Yeah. You went to that? You haven't told me about this. Yes, I have. No, you haven't. 
Well, you were away, I think. No, I wasn't. Because I watched it on TV. It was amazing. Well, don't tell me that. It was incredible. Were you seriously there? Yeah. And then, then I went on to a show on the Saturday. Did you? you? Yeah. Because I was just about to join and said, oh, I need someone to come in, yeah. And I went on to the radio show. So TV you were show. hanging out with Bowie? Yeah. And yes. <laughs> go on. Who else was there? <laughs> well, the weird thing was- Shall I go through my favourite artists <laughs> and you just name <laughs> them and see if, if they were there, just let me know. <laughs> <laughs> no, but it was amazing, right? Because he started, he played, um, uh, just doing low, because it was that, because it was that, um, it was the Meltdown thing. And he did, uh, Be My Wife, which was great. Then he started doing Fame, right? And they'd been talking about Ziggy in the, um, the interview. He was going, oh, everyone goes on Ziggy, will you just stop it, right? And it was sort of like, got to a point where he was going, oh, and it was really funny. And, uh, uh but Jonathan's like a favourite phase with that, right? And then he started playing, um, Fame. And it was really good. And he just went, stop this, stop this. This isn't, uh, this, uh, Let's do Ziggy. And oh. a sp uh, my spine tingled. I was worried. And he did Ziggy Stardust, and I'll tell you what, it sounded like the album version. And it's got an amazing band, and it was, and I love it when they do that. They know, I hate it when they, just cause they've been going for 25 years, they start changing Sorry, it. Sorry, I can't believe that you went to this, that you knew you were going to this, and you never asked me, you never asked Jonathan if you could get me in. I mean, seriously, I, w I mean, you know how much that would have meant. Yeah, to but me. it was very tight. Apparently, I, I, I know, but it was very, very, it was very sort of. Apparently, Richard uh, Branson couldn't get in. There was a queue, so I was like, especially it was. There was me, me and Jane went. Um, uh, D David Badil and uh, Frank Skinner. Oh, what, some new showbiz <laughs> friends of yours? Aren't no, they? no, I mean that we. <laughs> I'm rubbing it in, Steve. I, know. I can't. I'm just. <laughs> but you might not have liked it. You might have complained. Like Carl got you the you... cure, and you 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 turned that it back. That was rubbish, it. though. That was rubbish. Well, you might not like what David did. You know, I'll tell you I'll this seriously. If if I find out that you do the, that you've gone to some secret gig or something in the future, <laughs> and I find out you've been seriously, that's it. There's no more office. There's no more. No, no I'm not joking. I'm not mucking around because that to me is like that's what friendship is. That's like a textbook <laughs> example of friendship. What do you think, Carl? No, uh, I just think that's no, you really off. No, you I just think away. that's really you off. Were, you, you no, I wasn't away. Yeah, you were, yeah. I wasn't away. Don't try and fool me. Yeah. I wouldn't have been away if I was away. I wouldn't have been away. You if were you asleep. Told me that was happening. You were asleep. I'm. I, I'm seriously. I'm. You can. We can joke about it, but I'm really angry about this. What do you think, Carl? There's a secret, right? There's a, apparently there's a secret Bruce Springsteen gig that's been planned. I'm going. It's all, are you? I, if you seriously, if you, <laughs> but seriously, if you, if, if I find out you're at that, oh, I will. I mean, oh dear. To play a record so I can shout expletives and we can do this. Oh, I, I tell you what, lovely bit of electronic. Oh, just to coop, uh, calm and, and soothe me. I'm just seriously, I'm not joking. That really winds me up. That this, really winds me up. The cure was good. P I M P by Fifty Cent. Or Fiddy Cent, as I call him. XFM 104.9. I'm Ricky Gervais, you're Steve Merchant, there's little Carl Pilkingbod over there. Alright? Alright. Yeah. yeah, not bad, not bad. Listen, um. Oh, he's perked up. Yeah. Oh, he's back in the area. Well, you got something to no, say? I just, just, I was kept quiet in the first hour, I'll let you get on with it now. What you got to say? Is it, just to have a guess, is it about monkeys, Chinese people, or little gay fellas? It's about it's about little gay fellas. Is sure. it? Of course yeah. it is. Go on. Yeah, but not because I like chicken and chicken. Sorry, just a tally. Let me just note that down. Yeah. No, no, but it fascinates me, doesn't it? All stuff like that. That's a bit that's sort of different. Yeah. Yeah. Than that. What you were like, showing me? like monkeys and Chinese people? Well, and that thing you were showing me before, the half woman. No, half... you weren't. In, you weren't impressed with that. Well, no. You're that woman be. that's got two pieces of uh, genetic makeup in her, where it was two. Um, Two separate sperms and two um, separate eggs um, fused, and she came out as sort of a, a normal person, but she had this residue of genetic material, yeah. and so she's had two children that aren't genetically the same as her. Yeah. Right. And they showed it in the paper by doing her half white and half black to show the two. You know what I mean? Just for yes. it, he went. It, does she look like that? I said, well, of course not. He went, not interested then. Of course. Yeah. If, he said, how could I tell? Not interested <laughs> in that at all. Yeah. If I'd have said she'd given birth to a monkey, mm. fascinated, <laughs> yeah. straight yeah. away. Well, anyway. Go on. But that's what I'm saying, I'm just interested in weird stuff, right? Yeah. Um, so about, am I. That's why you're on the show. Talking about little gay fellas and that. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> uh, Northern Line, beach, underground tube thing. Not, the, not the boy band. <laughs> right. right. Yeah. Um, apparently, on a, uh, on a Saturday night, late, I don't know what that is. Uh, if it, what 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 time late is in the sort of gay community, as mm. we've discussed before. Mm. Yeah. But apparently, the last carriage on the Northern Line, they all they all get in there. What do you mean they all get in there? 
they sort of take over the last carriage of the Northern Line on a Saturday night. Right. And it's like the gay, the gay carriage. Right. And what exactly do they do? They just travel about on the Northern Line? No, just have a chat and that and like, uh, just, you Stick know, on the communards. How do you, how do you know? Someone told me. See this, I, I mean, I'm glad you've informed me because it wouldn't bother me, but I feel I should be told about these things because I'm likely to stumble onto that carriage mm. by mistake. And I'm not, it's not that it'd be a problem, it's just I might feel a little uncomfortable if there's a lot of people in, you know, the black, <laughs> the black leather gear and the moustaches, the hats. I mean, to be quite honest, they'd be annoyed. Of course. Because they'd be expecting something a little bit, you know. What do you mean? Well. They're good looking, most of them. Sure. <laughs> No, they are good-looking fellas, though, aren't they? What do you mean? What do you mean? They're just a, a lot of the gay, you know, they look after themselves and that yeah. and look good, keep but themselves. Some you know. of them work out, yeah. yeah. You see, this is the, the problem I have because there's a lot of areas in London and elsewhere in the country where there's a sort of, you know, it's a gay thing, you know, it's a gay public toilet, or, or I don't mean it's gay, but it's not like a legal thing. It means a cottage. But it's a cottage, or whatever. I mean, I remember being um, in Bristol once doing something. <laughs> You're confused when I said it's a cottage. Yeah. That's a term for where gay people go in toilets to sort of meet and greet. Each other. Well, I, I, uh, Shake hands. <laughs> I was at, uh, the public library in Bristol once doing some studies from a sixth form, mm. and, um, I think the toilet was closed in the library, and I was dying for the toilet, and I popped out, and there was a public toilet behind the library. I thought, I can't believe my luck. Dashed down there, it was about six-ish in the evening, I was working yeah. late, I was studying hard. Yeah. I went in there, and I swear to God, I saw two fellas. With the- Is that, is that unusual, or? Uh, well, no, they, they were up to some hijinks. What, what, what they sort of like- Do you what? know the thing that struck me? What? One of them had bright red underpants. What do you mean? You saw, what, they were trans- actually doing, you know, they were having some kind of, you know, well, they were having relations. They weren't even in a cubicle, they were out in the- Where, where were the underpants? Well, where around the- his ankles. No! Yes! I swear to God, I'm not gonna make this up! <laughs> what old were you? I don't know, like, how old you are in the sixth form? Sixteen or whatever? 16? Yeah, and what did you do? Well, I actually what, said- Well, you just joined in, what else did you do? <laughs> you might as well, yeah. I actually swore, I said, oh, F me. And then I went, oh, no, <laughs> <laughs> No, I did, I swear to God. <laughs> I did, I did. <laughs> I went, oh, with me. No, don't. Because I was panicked and I ran out. And I, as I was, and as I was walking out, a guy was coming in. I went, oh, hang on, mate. And then I thought, I better not tell him. I, I, I'll let him find out for himself. He might be going in there to join in. He might have got a call. Come down. We're, having, we're going crazy on each other's ass. <laughs> <laughs> Come down. It's a conspiracy of Bristol. But what conspiracy. annoyed me? What annoyed right, me? My was, lover? What a bit of car. <laughs> what angered me, Rick, was, uh, was the fact that. I wasn't notified that there was not. I didn't know there was this no was a, sign. And afterwards, I spoke to other people about it, and they said, "Oh, it's a famous gay haunt." But mm. what annoys me is I feel that they should put an ad in the local press, yeah. a big paper, like once a week, like you know, when they recall cars if they're damaged or, or there's a fault, or curries might bring back stuff if they're sort of faulty goods. They say recall and we'll give you money back. They what do you suggest? In the gay community should put an advert in that just says these are the hot spots. This is where you're likely to find us doing some stuff. If you're not gay, and you might feel uncomfortable. Avoid them and just list them or little pictures or you know a map or something, anything. Because like the gay tube thing, I Cock don't know. Fun. One two three railway cuttings. <laughs> Well, not that. It's more of a kind of, it's more of a sort of social awareness thing. Yeah. So people, you know, don't feel uncomfortable and... But they don't want exactly to be like, sort of walking in under a neon sign. Why? It's, it's legal. <laughs> yeah, yeah, big arrows. <laughs> oh, as if. What do you mean? What's wrong with that? Because, well, it's actually a public place. I don't think, it, I don't think cottaging is well, strictly legal. But, but even if it's specify what they're but gonna some do. But pe- some people, they're not, some of them aren't, I don't think it's but probably seen gays, is it? Yeah, but it's not, yeah, but it's not the people that go out and they say I'm gay and I like Barbara Streisand. It's presumably the sort of people that do that are people that either aren't quite out yet or, do you know what I mean? Or they're, they're, they're doing having a quick one over the way to their wife and kids. Yeah. I don't know, I don't, I don't know completely how it works, but I'm sure there probably isn't a place like, um, uh, free bumming here tonight. <laughs> no, there is kind of. What? Because I, I was walking home one night through Soho, right? Mm. Um, just cause that's the way I have to go, not cause I choose, you know what I mean? I've, uh, I wasn't going there for, on that, right? So I'm, I'm walking <laughs> no, through, really. right? On. And, um, I was handed like a, a card, which was like a gay event, yeah. right? Now that's a bit weird, isn't it? That straight away is presuming that because I'm there that time of night. Well, and you've got a shaved head and you sort of like, you know, you sort of like quite look after yourself and you've got some nice clothes. Yeah, but it's still, you, and you, you look can't like really a little presume. bit of rough, don't you, from Manchester? It was you, a, look like, you look like a northern rent boy who comes down well, to well, stand outside of McDonald's. But and the card was rubbish, right? What do you mean? It had this fella on it, yeah. right? All sort of greased up and that. What would you look? Just having a look. What, what you'd handed me and that? Sure. Right. Just having a look. 
a picture of him sort of sailor's hat on, tan body, right, just his arse out, like that, <laughs> and uh, rubbish slogan, right, the best bum in W1. <laughs> 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 is this bum there a noun or like a verb? What do you mean? Well, to bum. Is it like, get the best bum you've ever had? Or, he had the best bum? I think it's- I don't suppose you asked. No. <laughs> I suppose you called the number to check. <laughs> what do you mean exactly by this? Does it mean you've do, got a great ass? Do you I mean I will good. be well bummed? Or do you mean oh, you've just oh, got oh, a good- Come on now, let's-, let's Well, I just- a final point about- cause I asked my friend how it all works up on the Heath, cause I live in Hampstead Heath, yeah. uh, near Hampstead, and I was where I didn't want to go walk in and get involved, mm. get myself involved in it. <laughs> how awkward. can you get involved? No, but again, I didn't want to walk <laughs> so like, by- Sort of like, oh, you yeah, believe it, I, I couldn't say no. <laughs> oh, my wrist, it's knackered. What do you mean, well, I was there for about two hours, I must have gone about 43 of them. <laughs> but you know, I didn't like to say no, cause they were just- they were so pleased to see me. <laughs> oh, well, God. Well, it's not so much the fear of that, it's not- it's not- Good skiing practice, I was doing two at a time for a little while. <laughs> it's not the fear of that so much, <laughs> as the fact that, again, you don't want to gate crash someone else's party, you don't, do you know what I mean? No. You don't, if, so, if, there, if there was a straight couple having sex, you'd want, oh, I'm sorry, and you'd want to avoid that area. You yeah, know, you, of course. But I find, so someone told me, and someone told me how, they, how it works, and apparently you just go and, you know, sit on a bench or something, and yeah. then a guy just sits on the bench and they just look at each other. There's not really anything said, it's just a kind of nice evening or whatever. You know, I guess it's like two in the morning or whatever. And then they go off in the bushes and ding dong. <laughs> but I, it's like I don't know how that culture's developed. This is, I love this program. But now. why can't that be the case with women? <laughs> that would be amazing. You just go out to the park at like one in the morning. You just sit on a bench. You just be like a scene from Gigi. Exactly. Where right. they, yeah, just walking along with a perambulator. Yeah. Uh, oh. Exactly. You, but that would just be a joy if there was none of this formality. You've got to talk to them, buy them dinner. Oh, you know, you're joking. Romance. Oh, no. It's just this kind of informal thing. It so would what, be great. So what do you, what would you, what would you do then? You'd go up to a woman and go, come on. Yeah. Let's, let's stop mucking around. We know there's why a, we're both sat on this bench. There's a, there's a nice, there's a nice bush over there. Yeah. Let's have a bit. Yeah, and then she'd go, yeah, great, thanks, I'm, you know, I'm killing some time before I, you know, pop into town. Yeah. That'd be perfect, thanks. You make my weekend. So you're jealous of gays as well In as me? In a sense. In a way. What do you think, Carl? Let's put a track on. Why? Are you getting scared now? Yeah. You pulled it up. Is, is, it, you, is it getting too close to the bone, so to speak? <laughs> Whereas some would argue five. that waste not what not is, is perhaps a little bit more pithy, a little bit we more... We should uh, go through great say sayings and phrases and, sa and say if to Carl, could, Well, firstly, yeah. does he know what they mean? And then secondly, can he improve them? That would be brilliant. Right, we'll, we'll make another one do that next time. Alright, uh, so, uh, um, oh, let's see. Okay, uh, Winston Churchill, um, never have so few done so much for so many. What do you think of that? How would you, do you know what that means? I'd just be annoyed if I was one of them who, who gave a lot for a few or whatever. Right. No, gave a lot for so many. You were, yeah, if you were one of those few yeah, that I, gave so much for so many, i.e. it means the, these, these few good men, their actions freed the world. They freed the world. They have an impact on yeah. the, every person but, in the world and they, they were few yeah. brave men, yeah, and that's yeah. what he's saying. Yeah, but what I'm saying is, if I was one of them men who, who gave up his life, right, I'd want a name check. <laughs> I don't, I don't want to be bungled in with everyone else who is saying a load of blokes gave it their lives, well done on that, see you later. That's brilliant. Did you just say bungled in? <laughs> yeah, bungled in, yeah. <laughs> you made up a word! You don't want to be bungled in. You made up a word. See, that's it, you see, we've been looking for it. That's original, that's Carl Pilkington. I don't want to be bungled in. Right, do you know we've, we've chatted about, uh, charities before, haven't we? Sure, yeah. Done a lot of stuff on that, right? It's coming back from Manchester, right? Got off the train, Houston. Yeah. Right? Got the train, walking through the, the, the busy bit and stuff. So this fella stood there, right, a charity worker, yeah. right, he, he, nice looking fellow, he's got his suit on the tie and everything, quite respectable and that, right. Look down at his bucket, all the all money's been put in the bucket and that, yeah. right. On the front of the bucket, right, he says collecting for the homeless at Christmas. Now, why can't they do that? <laughs> what, the homeless? The, the homeless people. Why is some fella <laughs> taking his time out, right, his own time where he could be at home, why, why, <laughs> Some of us have got homes to go to. Yeah. Why, why, do you know what I mean? What, what do you think, just give them the buckets? Well, what are the homeless people doing whilst he's doing that? <laughs> is what I'm saying. What, what have they got on the timetable? Cut out the middleman. <laughs> Cut out the middleman. What would prevent a homeless person, an, an entrepreneurial or homeless person, just getting a bucket and writing yeah. that on their themselves? Could I suggest something? Um, hunger 
uh, some drug addiction, uh, traumas, often mental illness, um, just possibly too, too depressed to get up, put a suit on and go to Houston Station with a nice bucket with some writing on it. And then, right, I was thinking, thinking about that, right, and I was walking down, walking down the street in London with Suzanne, saw a little homeless, well, I didn't see the homeless bloke, right, I saw a leg, right, right sticking out of a doorway, but here we go, right, walk past it, Right, you're not going to believe this. Go on. Homeless. Yeah. Chinese fella. I've never seen one of them. <laughs> no, I'm not. I'm not having to go. Right. But have you ever seen? Uh, do you know what I mean? That that was a shock. I to really me. don't think I have. I think he's got me there. I I I hate to say it, but I must say I can't remember ever seeing a homeless uh, Chinese person. It's weird, isn't it? <laughs> what, I, what, what, I actually weird. said, I was at walk past and I said to Suzanne, did you see that? She went, what? I said, just look back there. She said, what? I said, that homeless fellow, look back at him. She said, what? I said, he's Chinese. <laughs> and she said, yeah, good point. <laughs> good point! Of course she did! She, she said that just shut you up. She didn't yeah. want to get into a conversation with you! Um, I got a text from Carl yesterday, Steve. A text from Carl, yeah. Yeah. Um, I'll just read it to you. Okay, see you to Moz. For a face rub at 6.30 then. No bum tubes, though. So I was intrigued, and I called Carl and said, I think you've just sent me a text by mistake. What's the explanation of that? My mate, right, Russell, he just said, he said, you know, you, you, there's things that go on in life that you need to experience. Yeah. He said, just, just pop along, and I, I, I didn't say yes straight away. What's a face rub? You mean a facial? Where you lay down... You just clean your face with a flannel yeah. and that, so, but you're going to go lie down with another man and have your face Well, no, this is what I was saying to him. There's, there's a couple of questions. I didn't just say yes straight away. I questioned it. I said, well, I'm not that happy with this. So I said, look, there's nothing weird going on here, is there? I said, it's not a house, is it? It's a proper <laughs> clinic and that. He said, yeah, it's proper. You wear a, a dressing gown and that. I said, well, I'm not that So happy he's already got you in the dressing gown? Yeah, well, I haven't agreed to that. Today I've worn a little round polo neck sort of jumper so I don't have to take it off. It's not going to get in the way of my face. I made sure I didn't wear a shirt with a collar. I'm not taking this off. They can put the dressing gown on top of this. Right. Okay. I don't know if it's a woman who rubs me head. I don't know if it's a bloke or, or whatever. Well, the thing is, you get extra, don't you, for your face rub, because your face goes all the way back over oh. the top of your head down to the back of your but, neck. But all I was, so you've got a big face, haven't all, you? All I was saying to him is, I'll have the face rub, but I don't know if, if once you're in there, right. they try and sell you the old, uh, the old, the, the, the bum tube thing. At, what, what's what, a bum tube? These, is that a euphemism? What are you talking about? The thing where they pop a tube in and put coffee in your belly and it cleans you out and that. So An enema? Why well, would you have that? I don't, I'm not, I don't want it. I don't, I don't think Why you not? need to. Just because I think I've said to you before about, you know, you, you don't need to be that clean inside. Do you know what I mean? I don't mind washing my face. <laughs> what, what occasion do you need where you're that cleaned out? <laughs> do you know what I mean? And it, it, it's always a clear tube and that, and you see all the stuff whizzing past. I don't understand why it's clear. I don't know why you've got to see what's coming out of you. Like it's, you know, like the generation game, making notes of what's whizzing past. Forget it. I was watching uh, some different TV, saw an amazing documentary, it was called Tribes. This guy, and he goes and lives with different tribes around the world, these small little indigenous people. Mm. And uh, there was one, he went, to, he went to Papua New Guinea in Indonesia, right Carl? He lived with the Combi tribe. All right. Now, this Papua New Guinea is an extraordinary place because it is one of the only places left on Earth that hasn't been fully explored. There are parts of it that it's just blank on the map because they, they've never explored there. They don't know what's there, they don't know what's going on. So, firstly, that must already freak you out. Imagine that. 21st century, they have no idea what's going on down there. But do they, do they need to know if there's nothing going on? <laughs> <laughs> well, they... They don't know what's going on, there could be stuff going on. No, but there's, there's no chance that they'll go, we haven't been over there and someone goes and there's like an Arndale centre. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing's going to be there, is it? So there's no... Well, no I'll point. tell you what is there, okay? There's these various small tribes. Some of these tribes are still cannibals, eating people from other tribes. Do they know they could move on? Have they got a telly? Or have they, have they seen a telly and gone, I'm not up for that? Or are they just... Are they saying... It's not the Amish. They haven't chosen this. But what this. is the difference between the Amish and these people? Well, the Amish are a, a group of people that choose to live in that way. These people are just essentially untouched by civilization. I mean, they do have interaction with civilization, and people do come there, but they, they still live in this very, very almost prehistoric way. They did buy a telly, but there was nothing on, because there isn't any uh, broadcasters. They can plug it in. 
Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Having an absolute nightmare. Yeah. But there was one guy, okay, now he uh, said that his brother was dying. This was a couple of years ago, right? His brother was dying. He said to his dying brother, what happened? Why are you dying? This guy said it was a bloke in another village. Okay, he goes over to the other village. He kills this other bloke, right? He eats him or eats bits of him. Uh, the other village gets a bit annoyed. They go, what's going on? Why did you kill this bloke? They went, he went, sorry about that, right? They said, well, you need to make it up to us. He gave him a pig. <coughs> they said, a pig's not enough. They gave him five pigs, so five pigs apparently made up for the fact that they'd killed one of them. They said, well, hang on, what are you going to do with but this bloke's wife? Why were they bartering? Why didn't they just get the police in and say, what's, what's going on? The, what yeah, police? Yeah, yeah, what, why didn't they call in Kojak? Because he'd have sorted out, wouldn't he? What I mean is, right, they're miles away from anything, but it doesn't sound like the great place to live, right? Could they not move? Could one of them go, <laughs> do you know what, I'm sick of this. I, I, I'm, I'm moving or whatever and go to a proper city. How far away is this, um, these Papa people, um, <laughs> to, Papa to, people? To, to the next, to the next... They're like, like the Smurfs. They're very like the Smurfs. But how, how many miles away from, a, like, a place with a normal life going on? But think about this, Carl. Firstly, they don't speak the language. So they don't have any practical skills. They've got no experience of civilization. So even if they chose to go and live in one of these cities, what can they do? How can they function? I think there's some bacteria that has better lives than that. That's got to be offensive. Why? <laughs> okay, how about this is the one of the weirdest things. <laughs> this is one of the weirdest things, right? I'm sorry. <laughs> an entire people, yeah. an entire race just of people. Dismiss. No, just no, no, dismiss. I'm, I'm, said, I'm not. Right. I'm not having a go, but I'm just saying I, I wouldn't fancy it. Is what I mean. But they don't mean know of nice. another world. How can they imagine that they could? Oh, I'll tell you what. This is boring. I'm tired of, of hunting for food and, and eating fish from the river. I'll tell you what. I'd like a world where there's iPods and room service. I'm going to go and move to New York. They're not thinking like that, are they, Carl? Because they don't know. About <laughs> people go to these places on holiday now. They like a little bit of danger. They like to see how the others live. Mm. So all I'm saying is, we know they exist. Yeah. The Papa people, maybe people aren't going there. I, you know, it doesn't sound like the best place. You know, I can't imagine it having a, a tourist board or anything, right? But would they accept me if I popped over there and, you know, with Suzanne in Papa? Well, okay, this is, this is one of the things that they, they do, okay, which is a tradition you may have to do. These, uh, combi, right, they invert their penises. So they push their penises back up inside their bodies. Like a sock. What for? Well, keeps it out of the way. Of what? Well, if you're running through the undergrowth chasing a, a, a hog, <laughs> you don't want it clapping away, you know. But, but it's also become a kind of ceremonial thing, so if you were over there, you may well have to try it yourself. You, you would have to try it yourself. If you went there, you'd have to try it Definitely. yourself. But even caveman had little pants on. Why, why haven't they? Whoa! Whoa. Uh, but, what, but, but the thing is, I do loads of charities. I do loads of things like, uh, Go on. I pay, I pay for tools. You know, I do that thing, a monthly payment of a fiver, paying right. for, uh, you know, a toolbox and that for someone out there. I help uh, old people, which I'm gonna stop, to be honest. Why? Cos, um, do you know this, do you know this thing I do, Steve, right? No. This is, this is a fiver a month as well, right? <laughs> got, got, I got stopped in Leicester Square one day. He said, uh, oh, there's a little old woman somewhere. She's cold, are you gonna help her out? <laughs> so I was like, oh, why me, right? <laughs> so anyway. So, they said it's easier if people look after one old woman, right? So Why me? I've signed up to look after this old woman called, I don't know, call her name June or whatever, it doesn't matter. So... <laughs> it does to her, but go on. So, uh, <laughs> so anyway, so I'm paying this fiver a month, and the, and the first fiver, you know, uh, first time I paid it, I got this thing in the post, right? Mm. And it had, uh, you know, thanks a lot, Carl, uh, you're looking after June. Here she is, you know, here's a little, uh, picture of her, and she's sat there, what have you, with a cardigan on and stuff like that. Every five pound you pay, you know, it'll be cheering her up, and, you know, look after her, pay for her food and what have you. So, for a bit, you feel good, don't you, and you think, well, I've done my bit for the world. Hmm. Anyway, two months later, get another package, right? Picture of June in there again. She's got a tan. <laughs> <laughs> So he's saying, he's saying you're paying to keep her warm. <laughs> no, they meant a week in Mallorca or whatever. And this is, this is what I mean, people turn the, if they can get away with it. That I don't know where to start! That isn't having a go though. Oh, what do you think, so what do you think, you think they're going, don't, don't bother, don't bother, um, getting a job or anything, go off a bit and then, go off a bit, it's June, oh, I don't know, I don't know, it's difficult, isn't it? It's difficult. So but you I'll, think Sir Bob should just wash his hands of the whole affair? You think it's a complete waste of time, is that what you're saying? 
that oh. you should just leave them to it. Just leave them to it. Let them sink ever more into debt, ever more into hunger. You just think that should just carry, no, just think, carry on? Do you know what this? I think he's saying? I was thinking, I think, I think, now I'm not with words in your mouth, are you saying they blew the last lot we gave them, they've got to learn a lesson? Is that what you're saying? No, I'm not, I'm not gonna say that. I'm not gonna say that. Is that what you're thinking? No. What are you thinking? I'm not thinking anything like that. All, all I was thinking is about this gig, it might have been better to do it, like, rather than, I don't know, ruining a grass field in Edinburgh and that. Do it out in Africa, right? Get people out there, get the tourists up. Do you know what I mean? Get a load of people out there. Mm. They've got loads of- I don't of reckon he's gonna get people to walk to Edinburgh. I very much doubt no, no, but people are gonna fly to Addis Ababa to see Coldplay. Cheap flights and what have you. Right. Hot dog stands and that, locals will love that, right? <laughs> Job done. Brilliant. Let's put him in charge. Yeah, just for one day. Let's put him in charge of live. If Bob Galdoff is listening, I know, I know, uh, you respect him because he used to work on XFM. No, but if Bob, Bob, well. if you're listening, please, I would love, oh my god, a conversation, Bob Galdoff talking to, forget Kate Bush, forget how That would Hammer. be amazing. Can Bob please call in and speak to Carl? No one call except Bob, so we know it's Bob calling. Right, get on the phone. Oh. What's the phone number? What's the phone number? Can't we talk to him next week? He might be busy next week. No, He's he got won't. stuff to organise. He won't. Don't worry about it. Don't worry about it. You can talk to us next week. All right. I'm not gonna go- I'll go through the phones. It's mental. <laughs> right. Play a record. All right. What are we having? Bit of, uh, bit of killers? Yeah. For killers, somebody told me on XFM 104.9. Tell you what, talking of, um, starving, I went to what is meant to be the best restaurant in the world on, uh- Oh, yeah. Uh, Wednesday, yeah. Sure. Um- You must be famished. Uh, well, Jonathan, uh, Ross, uh, booked a table there. It came out. I think he's been trying to get there for a while, and uh, um, I think it's a waiting list and everything. Right? And uh, well, it's got OBE. You're walking straight in. He can. He's walked straight in with that. Yeah. yeah. Um, and uh, uh, me and Jane went along with him and Jane to the Fat Duck in Bray. Uh, so it was voted the best restaurant in the world. Okay? Right. And um, it was incredible. I mean, it's a cross between a restaurant and sort of Barnum. They, yeah. do, you know, just incredible food. But all the way there, I'm thinking, well, I, I, I can't eat stuff in normal restaurants. Mm. I can't eat, I don't eat red meat. I'm squeamish about things like seafood, uh, anything, anything that's a little, got too many legs or was, or was a crustacean once or uh, feeds on worms. I, I, it was, I, I knew that one of their, um, uh, signature dishes was snail porridge. So I'm thinking, I'm not gonna be able to eat anything here. So I was thinking, uh, I had something to eat before I went. <laughs> And uh, I was thinking that they better not have mucked around the bread, right? Got there, beautiful, um, and uh, it was it was it was really quite fantastic. And and I let them know straight away um, that I was a philistine, and they really accommodated me. You know, uh, 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 I didn't have the snail porridge. I, they they put um, mushrooms in my snail porridge, which was more of a risotto, and there's tasting menus and that, and it was it was um, uh, really fantastic. But Jonathan halfway through, on the way there, I don't like travel well, on the way there, he actually phoned me and said, why are we taking you to this restaurant? Good point. Very good point. Uh, uh, they know, even if I go around there, they cook me sausage and mash. Yeah. Or, do you know what I mean? Well, you are, you have the palate of one of those kids from the Jamie Oliver School Dinners <laughs> Programme. <laughs> <laughs> who's, he's got the lovely Jamie Oliver cooked, you know, kind of, uh, yeah. ratatouille, yeah. but they're going for the sort of chicken twizzlers. Well, there's no chicken. I love chicken. I yeah. Like, I like, I, the chicken I can eat. I'm squeamish about red meat. There's nothing I've uh, you know, it's a mixture of, it's not, um, uh, it's not morals. There's only one thing I don't eat morally, uh, that's veal. But the other thing else is just like, if it's got eyes and legs and things sticking out of it, or it's But it hasn't got eyes and legs things sticking I out of it. What are you but talking about? I, I mean, it just infuriates me. I actually got to a point now where I, I refuse to eat out with Ricky, because I can't, it just sucks the life out of me. It actually makes me depressed. I can't enjoy the experience. If you go to an awards do, they bring out lovely gr uh, lovely food, you know, three courses, always and lamb. you're whinging. You're it's always salmon, whinging. Which is hardly cooked, followed by lamb. Lo lovely about lamb. Who doesn't think lamb is the best of all the meats? Oh. And you no. just, you whinge, you complain, you look at Jane like a little boy who's like, oh no, why have you brought me here? <laughs> you are just, it was, oh. And I tell you, and I put it at the 
you know, I don't, I don't want to, you know, bad mouth people, but I suspect it's your family. I suspect it was your upbringing. I imagine, you know, I imagine that if I came to your house, <laughs> you know, late sixties, early seventies, came round to your place in Reading, it would have just been the smell of chip fat, it was just everywhere, chip pervading, fat just on. one of those chip fat fries that's just, yeah, like you say, constantly, twenty four hours but a day, I used to eat just things. bubbling I away. I used to eat beef and pork and that, and uh, it, it, I used to have to eventually, when I was getting sort of squeamish and getting older, I'd make a burn it so much that it was just like chewing on a piece of leather anyway, <laughs> where I couldn't, I couldn't stand the, the sight of blood or something. A salad so, in your house would have been I'll a, tell you what a, a salad onion and a packet of crisps. No, a salad in my house, right, was when it was summer, we were out in the garden, lovely salad, grated cheese, great <laughs> Grated egg, two bits of beetroot with your leaves, um, <laughs> uh, a pickled onion, and a packet of crisps. <laughs> Uh, and that was that was uh, that was a salad. But yeah. now is uh, that is that? Do you agree that that is probably the reason why you've got this 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 palate? And I don't even it's not no, even I've, a palate. I've, that's I've, too nice of words to use I've got for more it. squeamish as I've got older. Because I say I, I used to I used to eat beef but and what pork. What do you mean and... squeamish? I don't understand what you mean squeamish. I can suddenly think about cooked. it. I can eat I, I can eat like you know like, it has to be blasted. It has to be unrecognised to be an animal. You know what I mean? I, I mustn't see a bit of pink or a bit of fat. So if we if we were in biblical times, yeah. and you're there, <laughs> and Jesus Christ has just fed forty thousand with some fishes and some loaves, you'd be going, I'm not into the fish, JC. I say you take the head off, cook, cook really cook, take the skin off. I, there's, I can see a bit of spine. And unless, that, unless that bread is mighty white, I'm not interested. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but the thing is, what he hasn't said is, well, um, he gets frustrated because we have to go from restaurant to restaurant for something I can eat. But the reason we've only got about three restaurants to choose from are that because he doesn't want to spend more than a fiver at lunchtime. At lunchtime? Mm. If I was going out of an evening, you'd spend a decent amount of wallop. But lunchtime, Would why you? would I spend? You'd be happy to spend twenty quid on lunch. Imagine that every single day. There's no one out there who's eating lunch twenty quid a day on lunch. It's crazy. You don't need that much food at lunchtime because we. I know what happens. You go in there. You have some kind of you know tiger in curry for lunch. You're asleep by one thirty. We're trying to work. We're trying to write TV shows, and you're dozing off like one of those giant anacondas that's just eating a sheep <laughs> and it's slowly digesting it. It takes like three weeks. He doesn't eat Carl, He does not like the spare. He, he, he'll go. He'll walk a mile out of his way to get a sandwich. So I've been in an argument over that fifty p that time. <laughs> I don't want to bring no, here's the situation, Carl. Go I on. lent you 50p, and you decided you weren't going to pay me back. It should be to my discretion if I say, "Don't worry about it, Carl." You should offer me the 50p. Go, there's that 50p I owe you, and I'll go. Don't worry about it, Carl. But you didn't even do that. No, it's the way that you were like. I said, "Where's my 50p?" You went, "Oh, you don't need that." That's not your decision, I didn't, I didn't say that. I said, I, I, I don't think I've got it at the moment, or whatever. Rubbish. He's going through my pockets and that. Rubbish. 50p. Ridiculous. Mm. He's just given him a keg of beer for free, hadn't you? Well, let's let's not go over it again. I, mean. <laughs> I just I just think that value for money is important. Like now, okay. So for instance, in the morning I have to get the tube, but you can get a, a, a travel card zones one and two, right? It's about four pounds seventy, I think. But before nine thirty, it's about six pounds fifty. All right, and then at nine thirty, when the clock literally on the clock ticks over to nine thirty, it's four pounds seventy, right? Now sometimes I'll get there, it'll be about twenty past nine. Now you'd be saying to me, oh, I just spend it, just spend it, and I'm thinking I've got ten minutes, I'll perhaps read the paper, wait for it to click over to 9.30, and then I can get a cheaper ticket. Now surely that makes sense. Surely that's logic. Mm. Don't, I mean, if you were in that situation, Rick, if you were there, right, and you had, let's say you had three minutes to wait mm. before 9.30, what would you do? Would you stand there and wait? No, because waiting to me is worse than uh, It's madness. It's madness. I can't stand queuing, I can't stand, no, I'd, I'd, I'd pay, yeah. How long would it have to be before you'd wait? I, I, I If I there mean, was like a minute on the clock to go, would you wait? Uh. If they literally said, if you wait 30 seconds, it's true, I, I go, um, all right. Well, that is the case. That literally yeah, is the case. Yeah, okay. But not 10 minutes, no. What not about you, Carl? Uh, I feel fl- I, if it was 30 seconds, I'd feel flash going, I'd spend three pounds. But if it was like a couple of minutes, I'd go, oh, it doesn't matter. I, you know, I, I just, I just wouldn't. Madness. Yeah. Think about how that tots up over the years. Amazing. What an amazing track Beautiful that is. Tune, yeah. Neil Young, Dynamite. off the gold rush. So go on, Carl. Sorry, go on, Carl. So just take us back a few steps, Carl. What, what's what's the story? Right. So I did some research. Right. <laughs> now, let's just recap again. The guy, there was a guy you read about who had his head chopped off. He was guillotined. Yeah. He had said to the people around him, Count "I am blinks. going to blink once I've had my head cut off to so show the brain that life can still or the brain yeah. can continue to work after, yeah. after yeah. death." Okay, so yeah, we queried that. So y you weren't having any of it? Well, no, possibly for a few seconds till the, the oxygen stops being fed to the cells because the blood has drained away. But, you know, no nothing spectacular. So right, go on. Well, along the similar sort of lines, right? This is quite a few years ago. Um, this fella sort of upset the royal family doing something, right? Uh -huh. So they said that this isn't good. It wasn't Ben Outen at that Jubilee thing, was I it? Can't, I can't terrible. remember what it was. And they said, right, <laughs> that we're, was terrible. We're, yeah. gonna, uh, we're gonna cut your head off. Um, you know, oh. you gotta, you gotta 
show people like you can't be doing what you've been doing. What was this, <laughs> the 1970s? <laughs> well, when you say a couple of years ago, you mean maybe sort of- Was it the olden days when the phones weren't days. very good? Ages ago. Yeah. yeah. Ages ago, sure. So, um, so, so yeah, fair <laughs> enough. Yeah. So- <laughs> Very philosophical. <laughs> yeah, imagine that, yeah. when you're watching this going through. This was enough. literally ages ago. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, go Simon Sharma's History of Britain. Yeah, yeah. Oh, so and even before that, which is young, <laughs> yeah. before, when it was all mental and different. <laughs> Sorry, <laughs> Carl, go on. So he's having his head cough and he's- but no, he's resigned to it. It's a day before, he's kind of got it into his head now that I'm not gonna have my head, uh, much longer. Sure. So he said, let's, let's make use of this. Yeah. <laughs> He said, uh, <laughs> I wonder how long, like, the body can stay alive yeah. without me head on it, <laughs> right? So they were like, oh, I don't know. <laughs> so, uh. <laughs> Who were? So. The jailers? <laughs> whoever he was the asking. These jailers with one eye. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Get that, thanks. So he said, no, look, wait a minute, I've got an interesting scientific experiment, jailer. Well, yeah. fair enough. What is it? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, he said, what I want to do, right? He said, um, you know, surely it's, it's my last right. You know, I'm gonna mm. be, I'm gonna be dead tomorrow. Sure. So, um, let's he do a test. He didn't draw it out this long, did he? Yeah, he said, let, let's, let's, let's test this out. You know, okay. he said, do us a favour. He said, you know, it's my last day. Um, what I want you to do is, you're gonna cut my head off. Let's put a white line on the floor. Right. And see if, you know, cause there's no point asking how far he can sort of walk without an head if there isn't a line because you, you don't know what to count, do you know what I mean? If it's just, if he loses his head and he's running around all over the place, you can't yeah, really count that's that. That's not impressive enough, yeah. So, so they said, let's make a white line. Sure. Yeah. Who and said this? He did or they did? I think they started to join in with him and say, well, let's make yeah. this a, you Sure. Know. You get <laughs> it, go on. So, uh, <laughs> so they got Norris McWhorter down. <laughs> <laughs> the Guinness people. Oh. Yeah. yeah. So they said, Let's get this white line. <laughs> yeah. And, uh, Dedication's all he needs. We'll, we'll do this. We'll do this tomorrow. He said, "All right, then, yeah. I'll see you in the morning." Yeah. See you in the morning. I'll see you in the morning. <laughs> night, night. Sleep tight. <laughs> bye, bye. Uh, I love the fact that Carl knows exactly what was said. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's beautiful. Yeah. He doesn't know the story yeah. or what order it is yeah. in or when but it he was. He knows exactly what was said. Or <laughs> he knows the interview. All <laughs> right, then. See you in the morning. <laughs> mm, bye. Oh, kissy, kissy, kissy. <laughs> oh, I'm not, I'm not like that. Oh, you joker! Oh, don't let the bed bugs. Yeah. Anyway, so uh, he gets up. Do you want a paper yeah. tomorrow? No, I'm all right. Go on. He gets up mm. and they say, right, you know, today's the day and that. And he said, well, you know, I've got <laughs> got used to the idea. So yeah. here's here's a white line for you. <laughs> got used to the idea. <laughs> go on. So uh, so they go, right, are you ready then? And he said, I right, go on. And they cut his head off, and the body walked thirty two steps without <laughs> a head. Wow. Thirty two steps. Incredible. And that's, that's, that's the lesson, really. Did it get as far as the white, it walked along the white line, did it? Yeah, it stayed along the white line, did 32 steps, and then started to stumble a bit, and it just fell over. Yeah, yeah, but, you know, it was do. a test that your body can still keep alive for a little bit. Yeah. When, when you've lost your head. Absolute twaddle. <laughs> Absolute twaddle. <laughs> what, what do you reckon you can do, then, without an head? Uh, how, how many steps? Nothing. There'd be muscular spasm, right? Yeah. It, it would twitch uh, a bit. It would, yeah. You could not distinctly take 32 steps, hmm. the body c well, don't- Yeah. Yeah. <sighs> Is yeah. the doctor still on the line? Yeah. The fellow that bought six parrots? Yeah. And, uh, you know, you could have got 32 steps. Right, so I you don't believe that- I'm doing a bit of line dancing. Right, you don't believe that, but <laughs> something that you do believe that a cockroach can live a week without an head. It can. Hmm. Slightly different. Slightly different kettle of fish there. Why? Well, mm, insect <laughs> to- uh, human <laughs> is is the, is what I'm thinking. Yeah, that well, difference. There's not that much difference in well, of some insects. Do you know that a snake has a heart and lungs and kidneys and stuff? Go on. No, well, I'm just saying. So you're making out as if like they're a totally different like species. <laughs> I am. I am making that. I mean, call Rick, me old-fashioned. Do you know what you're talking about? Though? I don't <laughs> want you embarrassing yourself, Rick. <laughs> yeah, I am suggesting they're totally different beings. Yeah, that is. Yeah. Um, now. Carl, uh, the, the the cockroach is is a very different thing. The interesting there is that it lives it lives without its head because a lot of it's on. Uh, 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 th th some of them are phototropic, chemotropic. Some of them just literally have uh, irritation and muscle memory. I mean, they do have a central nervous system, but it, it, it's it's very different. So if you lose the head, it bypasses a lot of that anyway. All this is run around. The reason it dies is because it can't take on water. But it's very different to. A man, <laughs> right, having consciousness and then losing that, and the body's still going. Now I remember. I think I remember what I was going to do here. Yeah, so I'm going to carefully walk, walk thirty-two steps along this white line. 
I imagine he's good looking out going, oh, missed a bit. Yeah. Um, maybe the head was in the corner going, left, <laughs> yeah. left, you <laughs> left, oh, he's not, ooh. Well, let's just put it out. I mean, if, if, if anyone listening has, uh, has maybe had a relative <laughs> beheaded, maybe in a hor horrendous car accident, <laughs> but they got up, maybe they, they went for a walk, uh, they, you know, they, they, they had a little chat before oh, they passed dear, on. Oh, Carl. Get in touch. You know, oh, you, Carl, you, you, know you, you, you are my favourite being. You are my favourite species. Now, you, Carl, may not be particularly different genetically <laughs> from a cockroach. <laughs> you are, generally speaking. Why can cockroaches speaking. do that? Why are you ever made them get when- Let's play a record. Do, do you know what, when I told him this fact, I send him little facts on text messages just to inflame his, you know, interest. I just sent him a cockroach can live nine days without his head. Mm. He texted back, what's the point of that? Yeah. What's the point of They're that? They're not doing experiments, these cockroaches. <laughs> no, it's, it's a, a boring last week to have. <laughs> And he went, and I'm top of all that, you're thirsty. <laughs> so yeah. it's the worst week of your life, isn't it? That week without your head. Play a record. Play a record, Carl. Competition time next. Oh. Right. oh. oh. Look at his little face. Oh. Look at his little oh. face. Oh. You've not heard Carl's competition. <laughs> oh. oh. He could do without an head. Eminem. Bit late there, weren't you, Carl? Put your little headphones on. Cleaning out my closet. What are you doing? I've got to stuff my face with, um, toilet paper. Oh. Do the, do the competition. Yeah. Do you know, we, when we were writing the, sh the TV show, um, I was filming it just for our own amusement, just to sort of, uh, I suppose more as a document, really, so that if there was ever, a, you know, a court of, court of law that needed, uh, evidence of Ricky Gervais's, I don't know what it is, really, sickness, <laughs> annoyance. He did this for about two hours. He, you see what he's doing now? He's and stuffing his face with toilet roll. Yeah. Um. And pushing the lips out so I can just show him the teeth. Yeah. Do you know what actually makes me want to be sick? I know. <laughs> yeah, so he gag a little bit. Yeah. <laughs> it's horrible. Good. Well, while Ricky does that, Carl, it's time for your quiz. See, this is what you have for this is on telly. Right. An example. You have to be quiet or you've got to take that toilet paper out of your okay. mouth. I'm really serious because it's right. really annoying. Okay. Are you going to be quiet? Yeah. Right. An example of the game, just in case people didn't hear the launch of it last week. Um, it's, it's a song title, um, I Tell a Little Story, and that song, and that little story is a, a, a song, isn't it? Yeah. Right, so, um, say for example, um... What did we do last week? What did we do last oh, week? Oh, the, the woman who, uh... Oh yeah, a woman who really wants to, um, like, have a bath because she stinks. Yeah. But she can't because if she had a bath or a shower or a wash or whatever, she'd end up killing herself. Yes. No, right? you didn't say that. You didn't what? say she up killing herself. Well, anyway, as an example, that would be one of the stories. Yeah, and she's the electric, answer, yeah. The answer there is she's she, electric. Yeah, can't she couldn't have a shower because she would have ended up killing herself. Yeah. Yeah. Right? So this week's then, and don't say it if you know it, because the idea is that people can go right. right? Um, there's this bloke, and he, he, he buys a new house, mm -hmm. right? And he's well happy with it, his, his girlfriend moves in with him and stuff, and she says, right, uh, you know, let's, uh, let's, let's clean it up a bit. Yeah. And, uh, you know, straight away it'll be worth more money. Uh -huh. Good idea. Mm -hmm. So she, he says, right, you do the kitchen and I'll do upstairs and that. She's stripping the kitchen down and, uh, he goes upstairs and he's in the bedroom and notices, uh, little, little hole to the attic. Oh, right, brilliant. Right. So he goes, oh, I wonder how much room's up there, you know, yeah. I've never weighed it up. So he goes up there and it's all, like, dusty and a mess. And he goes, this could make a good bedroom, this. Yeah, yeah. So he's, he starts cleaning it all out, puts all the rubbish, like, bins the rubbish straight away and there's little boxes with bits in that oh. don't belong to him. I wonder what's in here, yeah. right? So he opens one of the boxes. It's like a little lamp. Oh, right. right. And he goes, this might be worth a few quid, yeah. right? And he rubs it. Magic lamp. And all, like, all the room goes all sparkly and stuff. And he goes, oh, what's going on? And then this fella appears, right, in a nice sort of, uh, <coughs> in a nice sort of, uh, pair of 501s. Right. And he says, what do you want? I know it already. So all the, all the first bit is irrelevant. Yeah, but it's about building the story, isn't it? So don't say anything. If you think you know it, Steve, yeah. do you know it? I don't. So I just right. quickly recap the end there. I, I almost missed the end. Oh so God. there he, you he go. He's in. He's in the attic. Right. Yeah. His missus is still downstairs. She's not up there. Okay. Right. He's on his own, and he cleans this lamp. Right. Yeah. And this this fella appears out of all this smoke, and he's wearing a nice pair of five hundred ones, and he's wearing a shirt, and. Uh, there you go. What's 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 the song? What song are you thinking of? The lines are going mental. Because it's going so live. easy. 
Let's let's play a record, Carl. We'll come back and we'll and we'll find out if anyone's got that right. That's a great one, Carl. Really. All right. Did Gen you just come up with that? Literally in the last ten yeah. minutes. Genius. <laughs> this is genius. Definitely. I mean, <laughs> if those calls aren't from major TV companies, <laughs> I don't know. It's. It, I mean, dynamite stuff. A lot of them are. What's his name's lawyer? Simon yeah, Mayer. Simon Mayer. That's my favourite thing I've done for years. Yeah, not bad, not bad. That's great. Back to form there. So, uh, yeah, okay, lines. The, the lines are going mental just because it's easy. Go on then. So I first think one to get it. The first one to get it, but- Well, it's not that though, Rick. I mean, uh, Carl has, has just decided to revise the actual rules of the competition. Yeah. So that, we've decided, is very easy. So that's now a qualifier. And so then they have to answer one live. Exactly. So whoever gets that one right can, can play it for a quick big money. one as well? Because some people will lose the will to live. Yeah. Just get a cut to the chase. And, uh, um, because they've got a- Qualify now. We're throwing an office DVD that I'm yeah, ready you'll sign yet. That, you? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, no, no. <laughs> that increases its value by yeah. forty-two pence. <laughs> <Exactly>. <laughs> right, right, go on. We'll, we'll just go live. Yeah. Hello, XFM. Yeah. Hi. How's it going? I'm um, not too bad. Not too bad. Listen, um, a very, very quick recap, Carl, if you will, please, for the uh, for the for the people listening. Very quick. Right. Um, a man ends up in a loft. Man's after moving into this house and yeah. that. Yeah. Uh, is in the loft. And he's tidying up. His missus is downstairs doing the kitchen because that needed doing. He's up there. He's cleaning up, emptying the boxes. <sighs> he finds a little, like a little. He rubs a lamp. A fella comes out wearing five oh ones. What's the song? What, what's the song, mate? Are you talking to me? Yeah. yeah. Sorry. Yeah. Well, look, look. I'm, like, I'm, like, I'm sitting in this bar, right? I'm not ringing up, relating to anything that's going on right now. I'm after one of these armbands to go and meet Bowie on Monday. <laughs> Can you help me out? <laughs> what? <laughs> <laughs> what? <laughs> Piss off. <laughs> you can't say that to our public. <laughs> yes, I can. <laughs> people, I, what I can't bear is, is people begging, Rick, on the radio. <laughs> you know, I can't bear it. Is that the Australian people bloke who's got the British Big Steve tickets? Hello, XFM. <laughs> Hello. Hello. Are you phoning up for an armband? No, Gene no. Okay, Genie. great. Gene Genie, of course it is. Gene, well done. Well done. Right, what, what's so your name? So, uh, everyone else can, uh, uh, ring off now. Or Slow down. Rewind. <laughs> what do you Again, mean? you've been watching the Flintstones. No, 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 it's just, you know. Is it a leopard skin pair of pants that's actually quite right. a, go on. But, but it's a well known fact that they wore, like, bear pants or whatever. Bear pants? <laughs> no, what do you mean, just, bear just, pants? Just, no, 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 listen, this, you are, you are a qualified, uh, anthropologist, so uh, what, um... I mean, I mean that, you know, you, when, whenever you see them on footage or in a museum... Footage? Yeah. Or, <laughs> whenever or you where, see that really shaking, yeah, it's black and white as well, isn't it? Caveman footage. I, I, you always see them wearing a little bit of fur, fur little pants and that. So, what I'm saying is, even <laughs> though, what, what year is it to these, um, people in the woods? What, I mean, what? I don't know what this conversation don't is know. anymore. I, he, he's just clutching at straws. His mind, his, uh, it, it, it's like um, a fly, his mind, isn't it? It's just buzzing round, it's trying to find a window. It, it, it is just it's like... hitting against pieces of information, but they're <laughs> yeah, just bouncing yeah. off. Yeah. <laughs> Dazed to perplex. <laughs> I was, uh, shopping with Carl before Christmas, and we went round sort of Piccadilly and St. James's and those really beautiful shops around there, and I went in one shop, you had to, um, ring a bell to enter. Yeah. They came down, and it's like a, a iconoclastic sort of shop, and they, they found things from churches and uh, r uh, nearly all Russian, 16th century pieces onwards, this beautiful, uh, uh, carvings and, and paintings and statues, and I went, oh, it's beautiful, and as I was looking round, I heard Carl sidle up to the bloke and go, What's the newest thing you've got here? <laughs> yeah. Sure, that's his first thought. I mean, that is the wrong question to ask, of a man who's clearly in antiques, yeah. um, proud of the fact he's got 16th century, uh, kind of classic Russian stuff, to ask, what's the newest thing you've got here? Is that, I mean, what sort of question is that? Oh, I don't know, probably the doorbell. I don't know, what, what's he, what's that, oh, my shirt? What, what, <laughs> what were you, you thinking? What were you looking for? Uh, I think it's an all right question, because he, he was saying there's loads of old stuff in there, and he kept going, oh, about the old stuff. Do you want me to say? Or what's, your, what's the newest thing you've got? <laughs> and what was Do you know the what he said? To, the other question he asked him, he said, how often do you get new stuff in? And I said to him, why did you ask that? He said, well, I was thinking, if you've got antiques and you sell it all, what's left? Like someone's going to sell all the antiques in the world because they're not making, he said, because they're not making any new stuff. What does that mean? They're not making any new stuff. But I know for a fact, no one's ever going to go in there and buy the lot anyway. I mean, <laughs> I've never seen anything like it. <laughs> I'm not at any point in my life, and I don't think it'll ever happen, will I go, I need some old Russian wood. 
Because it was that's... brilliant. No, it was, I, Steve. I, I, no. It was beautiful. It's amazing stuff. There's stuff. Uh, there, uh, it's there's mm. um um uh these things uh from the 16th century of sort yeah. of like saints and monks and they're carved but and there's they're... loads of it. It's just all piled up. No one's interested. Oh. If I was them, I'd go. Do you know what? I'm into this, but no one else is. Close shot. <laughs> because seriously, <laughs> it's just piled up, up uh, piles up on piles of like old. Bits of wood with pictures on it and that. But think of, a man, just think of a man 400 years ago that carved this, that carved this, uh, you know... No, but nobody wants it, do they? I've never heard anyone say, you know, oh, look, it's my birthday coming up. I'll tell you what I'd love. What? A bit of old Russian wood. <laughs> it doesn't, doesn't happen. That's what I'm saying. I've never heard anyone saying like. I've never overheard someone saying, you don't know where the Russian shop is, do you? <laughs> <laughs> and this is in London where the rates are high. There was this thing, right, Steve? Uh, them old drawings on like it was like a panel from a church that someone had uh, that okay, painted right, yeah. and i think it was like you know from sort of like 1590 or something yeah. and it was this uh, a, a picture of this uh this mm. saint wasn't it it's so. 1590 it could be from any time really so there's this one there right leaning up against the wall and uh <laughs> most of them in there was that stalin bloke right mm. but there was this little right can i just stop with there lenin Right, okay. all right then. Yeah. Yeah. So, so he was on all these bits of wood and stuff, but I saw this other little face, right, little fellow with a beard, right? <laughs> so uh, I said, who's this bloke here? He said, oh, uh, the story there, right? He said, uh, it's this little fella, and he got mugged back in Russia. <laughs> This is right, isn't it? This is what he was yeah. saying. He said he got mugged. This is that, that term. That, I love that, that term in, in a 16th century Russian wood. Oh, no, I'm being mugged. So, so he, he got mugged. He got happy slapped. And, uh, <laughs> and, and he said, I've had enough of this. Right? Yeah. And he went to live in the woods, right? Made like a little shed. Stayed there. People went to visit him. And, and like, if you've got a problem, you knock on his door and you go, oh, I'm sick of it. And he'll sort of say, yeah, I know what you mean. I, I've moved out of the city and what have you. And he'd make him feel better. And then they go again. Now, why has that man <laughs> got a plaque? <laughs> if he was around now, there's no way he'd have a bit of wood with his face on it, is what I'm saying. If someone had got fed up with living in London or New York or whatever, and they go, I'm going to go and live in the woods, people wouldn't visit him, and he wouldn't get a piece of wood with his face on, is what I'm saying. <laughs> but this man is selling it for about, I think it was about 750 quid for, for this bloke's head. But the chances are that this is either a well-known Russian folktale, or it may even be a piece of classic Russian He's literature. a saint. He was a saint. Or, oh, okay. He was well, canonised. Yeah. Yeah. Every, everybody was a saint years ago. That seems to be, like, thrown about, doesn't it? He was a saint now. Name him one now. Yeah, this fella lived in a woods in a hut. Oh, yeah, that's Saint John or whatever. <sighs> he's not a saint. He's done nothing. If anything, he sort of said, I can't be bothered with living in a city with everyone else. Everyone else has got to put up with it, but I can't put up with it. I'm going to live in the woods. Well, if you can't put up with it, you're not good enough, are you? You've got no stamina. <laughs> And yet he gets a plaque, is what I'm saying. It's annoying. <laughs> who, would you like to see, who would you like to see get a plaque in the modern world? Who deserves a plaque, in your opinion? Probably, like, nurses and that, who, who do a lot of bad things that I think I couldn't do that. Carrying lungs about and all that. <laughs> but... <laughs> no, but I, I couldn't do, do you know what I mean? That's, that's one job that... Oh. I, my mum wanted me to be a doctor. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> wow! What was she wow. thinking? Oh, what's oh, her expectations this like apple now? didn't fall far from the tree. Oh, when did she start giving up that dream? At what age did she start going, Carl, you don't need to study your books anymore. Go, go and play with the worms in the garden. When did she sort of, like, let you off that dream? Was it the day that she caught you with a spoon up your nose? <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, talking of emails and that, right? Uh, Nick, who's emailed from Australia, right? Melbourne. He's, uh... He's, he's been going on about dolphins and that, problems with dolphins. What problems? Um, he's just saying when, when that, that wind happened, <laughs> um, it was like a bad wind thing going on. Hold on, wait a minute, what, what bad wind? Um, in, in America, they had that... Hurricane Katrina? Yeah. Right. And there was like a little bay with dolphins in it, and right. that, with all guns on them and stuff. What, oh, whoa, 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 whoa. They use dolphins, don't they? They say they're intelligent animal and stuff. Yeah. Um, and they've got them all like, you know, they've all had the training, they're all like ready for, for battle and stuff. Right. Got like rifles on them. What do you mean rifles? They've got, how can they hold weapons? the rifle? They've got, how can they got, hold the rifle? No, it's sort of on a strap and that. It's, what do you mean, mean it's on a strap? I don't know what they cut them out with, but they're just ready for war. <laughs> what are you off. talking about? Listen though, that isn't the point, don't worry about it. Oh, we leave well, that one, do we? Is, That's not the point, so let's leave it. So they're swimming about. Right, yeah, with, with rifles and berets. Whatever they've got on. Yeah. Like, ready for, for battle and stuff. Yeah, ready for uh, battle, yeah. The wind comes in. 
the wind comes in. It makes makes a wave, and that they get out of the little bay. Yeah, still all kitted out with all the you know weapons. You're talking and bollocks. Steve, do you want to look at the? Well, there, there's right? no way. There's loads of dolphins now swimming round, kitted that out with problems. guns and that, with a strap. How, how can a dolphin hold a? Whoa. Again, you've been watching Planet of the Apes. Oh, he's trying to talk to us. What's he saying? He's saying, go ahead, punks, make my day. Look, You're just, talking shit. It's just news to say if, if there's dolphins, you know, if you see a dolphin in that, don't go, oh, it's friendly. Because there's some with weapons now. <laughs> so, <laughs> I'm just I'm just reading it out on email. That's, that, that'll cover it and that. So Bollocks. We've got a, a little email straight away, Carl, from Nikki in Beverly Hills, California. She says, Carl... You rock. I hate it when Ricky and Steve ridicule you. I checked out your picture. Although your head is not normal, mm. that's no reason to ridicule you. You look gimp, but I never judge a book by the cover. Cheers. <laughs> is that all you've got to say? Well, it's only because I've, I've got no hair, though, isn't it? That's why it gives that effect. No, it's perfectly round your head. <laughs> Perfectly spherical head. Your face is slightly too big for it. it. Always goes over the, almost goes over the sides. Perfectly round head. Um, pug little nose. Funny gimp eyes with no expression. Hang dog look. Um, like a little mouth, like a little lamprey, not formed, not human formed. The the way your expression it, it, is like you've had a lobotomy. Yeah, head it goes weird at the back. It's got a little nod in it, like a. a, a, a it's it's really strange. Your face and you're stupid. We've had a lot of emails saying that. <laughs> I mean, I think he's just paraphrasing, but... I'm um, talking of emails, you know, uh, a couple of... I, don't, I can't remember which show it was, but you mentioned, Carl, that you'd, uh, you'd only recently seen a uh, Chinese homeless person. Oh, yeah. And it really surprised you, because you'd never seen I've a never Chinese seen homeless before, person. No. And I actually went along with that. I, uh, I've never... I've still never seen a Chinese homeless person. Well, now, I can just tell you now that there's a f few responses from Los Angeles, people saying there are quite a lot of Chinese homeless people over there, because apparently there's a huge homeless community in... Uh, in Los Angeles, so definitely if you want to see them, Carl, that's the place to go. But um, we've had one from Vancouver, Canada, from a girl called Amy, and Amy herself is Chinese, and she says that she realised herself that she, she'd never really seen a Chinese homeless person, and although she says that um, apparently Vancouver has the first or second largest Chinese population in Canada, she'd never seen them, and she actually went for a walk around uh, the Chinatown in her area right. looking for them, and she could not find any on that particular day. So, um, again, Canada, obviously not a place to go for a Chinese yeah, homeless. It, it was just a point, though. I don't want people sort of... Well, hold on, though. Wait, well, I'll stop you there. Hello, Ricky, Steve and Carl. I live in New York City and have seen a Chinese homeless person. Not only is he Chinese, but he is also a midget. He's been living on the streets for the last 30 years. He used to dress in rags, but thanks to a, a, a coat drive, he's now wearing a fancy Adidas jacket, right? Now he encloses a picture. Uh, he says he gave him 10 bucks to take the picture, um, and I've seen it, and he's a little yeah, Chinese I, I, midget fellow. I'm just getting a bit worried that people are going out there, sort of, looking for these. Because, well, it, because they, you well, know... that's what you requested. No, 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 but all I was saying is, I saw one. I didn't start saying, excuse me, can you just give us a smile, I'm taking your picture. <laughs> You know well, we've had I mean? loads of pictures of people. I know, and it worries me a little bit. And I, I mean, it's not too bad about the one who took one of the little midget one, because, you know, he's, if he kicked off, it'd be quite easy to sort of hold him back. But I'm talking about fully grown. So is that your warning to people? Don't be taking pictures of fully grown Chinese homeless? Well, yeah, I'm just saying, you know, don't don't be messing about going up to strangers and that and, and annoying them and stuff, right? Maybe well, I think that's a good rule of thumb, don't annoy them. Um, but, I mean, but that is a hell of a sighting, isn't it? We asked for a Chinese homeless, and they gave us a Chinese midget homeless. Yeah. A quick, oh yeah, my mate went to one of those things, um, uh, in the West End, where you walk around and it's aliens and they jump out at you. Right. Right? And <laughs> he was so scared when the alien jumped out, I mean, he ripped a bit of his face off. And well, the, the alien's face off. Yeah, it was foam, and the bloke went, don't do that, mate. <laughs> Brilliant. <laughs> Well, I, in the in the Salem one, I was wandering around, and this was one guy that kept jumping out. Yeah. And because there was about ten of us, I was at the back. I always missed him jumping out. <laughs> <laughs> so when I got around, I I missed all the frights. Oh, was oh no! He'd at least like, you'd have thought he'd like jump out, and then double around and jump out again. For yeah. Those people. Uh, everyone the back, catch that? <laughs> no, really, no, we. All right, okay, move on. Yeah, basement Jack said, keeping it real. Where's your head at? Where is your head at? Yeah, yeah, I know what they're saying. They're saying, where's your head at? Where is your head at? Yeah. XFM 104.9. Ricky Gervais. Now... Um, uh, just one thing I would say, Rick, is that 
I've spoken to a few people who've listened to the show, and a lot of people, you know, this is the highlight of their week. <laughs> it really is. No, a lot of bedbound people, and you know, yeah, and and we're not putting, the, we're not really not putting the effort, in, are we? We're providing nothing. We're trying, but it's just not coming out right. We're just the words it, aren't coming out. As, when I say them in my mind, they're brilliant. But it's sort of like getting old. You know, your mind. I, you know, I still want to run upstairs and mm. things, but mm. I just nah, the lift. Mm. I'd like to run upstairs. I yeah. just, I just can't anymore. And I, I thought like today, I really the comedy's in there. There's, the interesting fun, things humor, and the co and it's, it's all stuff. in the head and it and it has to go via the mouth. Yeah, that's and, the, and um, it's just not it's just not working for me. Not but it is your birthday, you're 27. Happy birthday! Thanks. We're talking about. Can I tell you one of the best presents I ever had? <laughs> about without doubt, all I ever wanted was a go kart. This is true. I was about like right. you know, sort of five, six, seven, and I eventually for um, Christmas, um, I. I, I I wasn't sort of spoiled in the sense that I got pocket money, but I always got what I wanted at Christmas eventually. Because, right, right. you know, like, you know, working class mothers, they, they'd get it out of the catalogue and pay for it for the rest of the year. So, I, yeah. you know, I always got, I had, you know, really, you know, as many presents as anyone else. And I got this go-kart. It was a little red go-kart, and it was a pedal one. And I'd run home from school, and I'd be in it, and I'd get up and down the garden for hours. I'd have to come in for my tea, and it, this was fantastic. And this went on for like weeks and weeks and went through the summer. I thought the next time it was just uh, it was fantastic go kart. I'd show off, and uh, and then one day I came home and I went. It was always at, at, at the back of the shed, sort of up against the shed. And I went in, I, I couldn't see it, and so I went to the back door. My mum was sort of like washing up with that, and I went, "Where's my go kart?" I thought it hasn't been nicked. She went, "Your dad swapped it." Your dad swapped it. Yeah. I went, he what? And I was going to be brave, and I went, he what? She went, he swapped it for a wheelbarrow. And I could see she didn't approve of this, and she was thinking, I'm going to tell him, and then I'm going to, you know, you know, have this out. And I went, right, she went, it's your wheelbarrow. And I went to the back of the shed, oh. and there was this wheelbarrow, he swapped it with a bloke called Jimmy Dublin, who he worked Jimmy with. Jimmy Dublin? Yeah, <laughs> I don't know. Was, I, I think don't... he was a respectable member of the community. <laughs> he was fine, it was his life. No, was, I think he was an Irish gentleman, and that's why he called Jimmy. <laughs> so I, don't, I don't know what his real name was. And uh, I think my dad must have been drunk, and he went, you know, I want to get my son a go-kart. And my dad said, well, well, um, we've, it, my kid's got one, he's probably had it for a year, he's probably bored with it. Yeah. And he said, I'll, I'll give you this wheelbarrow. And I went to this wheelbarrow, and it was caked in concrete. I could hardly lift it. I just nicked off a building site, obviously. <laughs> and... I'd be there for hours trying to push this wheelbarrow up and down <laughs> the garden, right? <laughs> and uh, it was okay though, because I was going on holiday soon, and I am um, seven years running, went to Bognor Regis, a place called Riverside, because some woman around the uh, uh, Y had a, uh, a caravan that um, we got free for a week, and uh, it was great, um, just wonderful. And uh, I, I used to go there with my mum and my nan. <laughs> oh, party time! It, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the age of seven to sort of go. No, it's good because you know when, you, when you're a kid and you wake up in a strange place, it sort of seems weird. You wake up at three o'clock in the morning hearing your grand pissing in an iron bucket, <laughs> and you know you We've get all been there. you get you get this orientated. Anyway, and that went on day, and uh, uh, I met a, 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 a little friend who was about my age. We were both sort of like, right? and he'd hired a go kart. He had this great go kart, and he came round. He came round to my caravan, and I, <laughs> I went, I've got a go kart. And my mum, I remember my mum opening the window of the caravan and going, don't lie. <laughs> <laughs> That's so evil. And I went, I, I, I had a go-kart, I had a go-kart. Wow. Yeah. Did you ever talk to your father about the fact you swapped it? <laughs> no. You never mentioned it to him? No. No. Have you still no. got that wheelbarrow? <laughs> <laughs> I think so. I've grown into it. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I can nearly lift it now. Yeah. Yeah, and now I'm just too old to run up and down the garden yeah, with now it. Now you get one of your several gardeners to <laughs> use it all the time. <laughs> Wow. <laughs> oh, dear. Dre there. Dr. Dre. Of course. Bad intentions. Well, it's a... Uh, oh, do you want to give the winners of the competition? The winners, yes. Uh, tickets for Joe Strummer and the Mescaleros playing at Brist Brixton Academy this evening. We have some lucky winners. The question I set was, someone else famous is celebrating a birthday today. Yeah. Uh, I don't mean someone other, someone else famous like I'm famous and someone else who's You famous. could probably get into the monarch. Well, pound off at least. Yeah. And, uh, I said, yeah, which, uh, actor, Dwight Schultz, no, I didn't, I said, which character did Started Dwight Schultz play? Started off well, play? didn't it? He started off so well. Which character did Dwight Schultz play? What made him famous in the 80s? Yeah. He's celebrating a birthday today, I don't know how old he is, probably in his 60s. <laughs> Not in his <laughs> 60s. The character he played, of course, was Howling Mad Murdoch. Yeah. From the 18... We did, watching, we did um, accept Murdoch. I was watching an 81 UK Gold the other day, because I always like to have something, you know, so I can talk to Camfield whenever I meet him. Yeah. 
And yeah. uh, think about how many Mad Murdoch is. Uh, his madness is one of those convenient kind of madnesses where he's not like kind of depressive, where he's trying to kill yeah. himself, or he's just schizophrenic, or he's unreliable. He's just a bit eccentric. Yeah. His madness is largely, I'll do some funny voices. You couldn't have, um, um, howling slightly off the wall Murdoch, no. though, could you? It didn't, it didn't have the edge. But it's just, it's rubbish. It's rubbish madness. Or <laughs> howling wacky Murdoch. Yeah, well that's what he is, he's wacky. Uh, howling annoying student mm. Murdoch, I mm. think he should have been yeah, called. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. Anyway, <laughs> yeah. the winners, Carl, I think you took some answers. Uh, Tim and Neil. Well done, Tim and Neil. Are they going together or are they? No. No, two separate. Lucky ones. people, lucky people. Yeah. Um, I don't think your heart's in it anymore either, Carl. I was alright today, but Steve's really dragged me down. <laughs> <laughs> well, let's. Wait, 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 I just need to know why. No, do you know, like, <laughs> yeah. when people are being miserable around you. Yep. I, I was full yep. of beans when I came in. Yep, 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 yeah, but you yep. got to remember last week, you were really miserable, and that really wound me up. Yeah, because he was dumb so to do stuff. Right? Cause the, the, you know, he'd been let down, and they were worried about yeah, the next show. You were in a terrible mood. Yeah, yeah. look at me like you were. I wasn't like going off oh, and lying on the settee, looking ill, <laughs> talking, talking in that voice. <laughs> oh, he's done you yeah. again. I said, I said, just now, being quite friendly. Yeah, Carl, Steve. Carl, have you ever tried to get into the monarch for free? Because <laughs> I'll be honest, mate, it's not going to happen for you. <laughs> Come out with me, mate. You got a quid off. <laughs> all right. Oh. When well, you can get in places in Camden for free. Oh, yeah, I'm all right, yeah. Oh yeah, he's done you. Right now, it's time for song for the lovers. Now this is one of my favourite songs of all time. You all know this song that are done by. <laughs> that was nearly a sentence. Oh come on, that was nearly a sentence. Uh, What's his name? Glen Campbell. It's Galveston. Oh yeah. This is the man who wrote it. This is the original. This is Jimmy Webb. Oh yeah. With Galveston, I th from what I can work out, I think it's about a bloke who goes off to the Vietnam War okay. and he's missing um, his bird. And uh, I've brought it down, haven't I? I've brought it down a tone by saying "bird." It's a beautiful song. It was irony. Just play it, Galveston. It's beautiful. Jimmy Webb with Galveston. Now I know you enjoy. Love the work of the Webb. Webb Meister. A lot of people, of course, be familiar with his sons, the Webb brothers. Yeah, yeah, very different. Quite cool. They. Mm. I, I went Fun. to see him live, and he was just so cool. Mm. Just like. Doing his songs and telling a little anecdote. It was just is he's, he's he's fantastic. That's my song for the lover, Steve. What um, have you got for well, us? Well, no, I was just going to mention a couple of other gifts that my father uh, got. Well, well, he got me once. I unwrapped once, having professed no interest ever in this particular uh, artist, about as much interest as um, Winston Churchill. Um, I once received, lucky me, the making of Thriller. <laughs> it was a it was a video behind the scenes on Thriller. I know Jackson what Hill. he thinks though. But he, he, said to me, he, he said Steve, he said, Steve loves to dance. No, he went, he went, uh, you love music and you yeah. love films. Yeah, no, and that, that's a film, yeah. yeah. But, I mean, I've never professed any interest. I mean, I don't think it even had Thriller, the actual film on it. It was just the making of Thriller. Really? Behind the scenes. Michael Jackson dancing and, around. And John saying, Landis. Yeah, it was r rubbish. Well, that's not very nice, is it? But what did you say when you opened it? Brilliant. Brilliant. I love Jackson. Can't wait to watch this. Can we watch it now, I said? What did he say? No. He's um, so ungrateful. Really? Yeah. Because I can't remember a time my dad bought me anything. It's always my mum who bought it, and my dad would give her the money. Yeah. You've got Ricky who's lost his go-kart. <laughs> You've had a video bought for you, and you're still not happy. I just think you're selfish. Definitely love this, surely. Have you started seeing this now? Virgin are starting plugging Virgin Galactic. I think it's something like mm. 200,000 quid, mm. and they you'll get a chance to go in a space shuttle into mm. space. Carl, thoughts? Go into space. Wouldn't it be a fascinating experience to go into space and look back at the Earth? I mean, what, at what point are you all meant to be happy? <laughs> do you know what I mean? You're floating about up there, and you because you don't get out, do you? Uh, what you mean to do some duty-free shopping? I'm just talking. You don't go floating about, do you? You stay in your seat. Mm. Well, they no. probably let you move around on the shuttle. Yeah, no, but I'm talking about getting out. For me, when you what, go you want to get out into space? Yes, but that's what I'm saying. When you go on holiday, the flight bit isn't the best bit of the holiday, is it? That's the bit you've got to do. So what I'm saying is you've got to stay on this and then you go back home. So you don't take luggage, right? I don't see the point. Right, so you're there, you're sat in your own clothes for the whole time, same clothes the whole time. But I don't understand what, what, what is the point. I think it's the view, I think it's two things. I think it's the view mm. and being able to be part of an exclusive club. I went into space. Uh, it's, it's all that thing about man conquering nature. And, and you're one of that elite few that have managed to pop up, see the world from a distance that no one else can see it from, and then pop down. All that way just for the view? Yeah. Is it worth it? <laughs> I mean, there's a lot of other places I haven't seen anyway. Right, before I think about that, I think if you've done everywhere, I haven't been to Scotland yet. 
<laughs> <laughs> right, yeah. I'm not being funny, but do you know what I mean? So just have a look in your back garden before you go looking in someone else's. In space. Yeah. Yeah. What would make it a, a trip worthwhile for you? I mean, if you did go into space, if we gave it to you free of charge, we said Carl Gardner. I know space. the answer. I know the answer to this, Steve. He's thinking, I'd like to meet some aliens that can talk like I do, yeah. and I can understand them, and they can tell me something. Like, like what? Oh, uh, they met God, he was all right. That, that's the sort of thing, that's what he's going to say. He'd like them to look like monkeys in spacesuits. Yeah. That would be his ideal thing. He'd like to go to the planet of the apes. He would love to go to the that. Look, he's nodding. He's yeah. nodding. Thoughts, Carl? Well, yeah, that, that'd be brilliant. What would be brilliant? Seeing a little alien and that, having a chat with him, find out what's been going on. <laughs> No, no. But, <laughs> but don't you think that, like, I mean, <laughs> if you bought me that as a present, right, yeah. either of you, yeah. I wouldn't be that happy. For me, that's a little bit like... Well, this is annoying, because we've got you a trip to space and together. a goat. Yeah. yeah we... <laughs> Do you know how, like, I'm, I'm sort of, I am interested in sort of going on another planet? Right. Oh, you are on another planet, mate. No, no, but do you know what I mean? It, be, it would be quite sort of interesting. How do you think you'd get there? Well, yeah, you'd go on a rocket and stuff, but what I'm saying is, at least you know when you get there, you're getting out, you're having a bit of a wander. <laughs> but I, I wouldn't be happy in just the journey bit of it, that's that's all I'm saying. <laughs> that's great, isn't it? But, but the thing is, right, because I, I was looking into it a bit, because I, I was reading about the, the Virgin Atlantic yeah. thing, right? And I was reading something that in, uh, in 1971, right, three of them went up there, there was one bloke in the rocket, right, the other two wandered off, had a, had a walk about, seeing what rocks they can find. Like that. And that bloke who was in the rocket, right, he was the loneliest man ever in the world. <laughs> I don't know what to do. What that was. I don't know what to do. I don't know if that's some sort of profound poetry or I don't. I, <laughs> I, I do, not, do you know what I think he's trying to say? He's trying to say he was, by definition, uh, a human furthest away from all other human contact. Yeah, yeah that's what yeah. I said. Yeah, okay. No, you know, you said loneliest. Loneliest evokes an emotion. Yeah. Yeah. But it's like he started crying and writing poetry and listening to uh, Morrissey records. But what I was thinking is, do you think when he got up in the morning, he still bothered to put his clothes on? <laughs> <laughs> that's the first thing that came into your mind. No, when just you because I always, there. you know, at the end of the day, even if, like, my girlfriend Suzanne's out at work and that, I'm not happy walking about with everything out, because you never know what's going to happen. <laughs> <laughs> I, I just mean, you know, you never know yeah. if someone's going to turn up. No, I don't like what I don't like. No, I, I, I always pop some pants on or a towel, well, even if I'm not alone. Not always. Because <laughs> <laughs> I've knocked on your door when you've, when you've been stood there with... No, no he's yeah, taking his trousers off. No, I did it especially, oh, knowing, right, knowing right. that you were there. I did it especially to annoy you. Oh, right. Yeah, so... <laughs> But do you know what I mean? Do you think he? Do you think he was walking about the rocket with his tackle out, or, or did he go? Well, you know, no one's watching here. Do you, do you know reckon I mean? it floats up or down? Well, um, if you uh, are the man who was up in a space rocket and was for a short period the loneliest man in the world, we'd love to hear from you. We'd love to hear what you did with your time, um, how lonely you felt, and also, lonely. did you did you float around um, with your cock and balls out, Carl? If you could have a superpower like Superman. What would your superpower be? Can I suggest consciousness? <laughs> yeah. Can I have the power of thought? Remember, you've already got opposable thumbs. <laughs> so that, cross that one off the list. <laughs> oh, go on, Carl. There are so many to choose from. Telepathy, x-ray vision. Flight. Invisibility. Choose it wisely. Strength. Intelligence. But, but why have I been picked? Oh, for, for God's <laughs> sake! No, no, but I'm just saying... It's say, Rob's question no, for no, you. But I'd just say, does anyone else want this? Or... Do you know what I mean? Oh, no. what because, do you wish you could no, do that's no, impossible, because, is the question. No, because, or... Uh, uh, out of... What? Because, what do you mean? Because with that comes a responsibility. <laughs> is what with I'm enormous saying. power does come great responsibility. So, would it... W well, would you like spidey senses? Is that what you're saying? Uh... Come on, Carl, you know what these superheroes because they can, they can... I know, but it always... They freeze they, things, they're they... never happy, are they? <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Spider-Man that wanted to tell that girl that he had... He could climb walls and that, he's like, I can't. <laughs> Superman didn't ever tell Lewis and that. Who's <laughs> Lewis? Who's Lewis? Lewis? Who's Lewis? Who's yeah. Lewis? Ah. It's just a pen pal of Superman's. <laughs>
<laughs> his little secret <laughs> charm. Yeah. 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 <laughs> All right, Superman. Hello, Lewis. What are you doing? Uh, uh, Superman. Uh, uh, who are you? I can't tell you, Lewis. <laughs> Brilliant. You know, Hulk. He wasn't happy. <laughs> Hulk, he wasn't happy. <laughs> it's true. He's got a theme. <laughs> he has got a theme. There's not many happy superheroes, are but there? Leaving aside the superheroes you're already aware of, yeah. what superpowers do you want? You don't have to fight crime with it, Carl. Just let me just remind you of some of the other things. Invisibility. All the time, though, or can I sort of turn that on and off? Let's say you could turn it on and off. Would that interest you? Yeah. <laughs> I love that. Right. <laughs> okay, and what would you do with this power of invisibility? Just sort of wander about and not just not get seen. <laughs> It's a brilliant and, and, it's put, and it's put to such it's brilliant, brilliant use. <laughs> it's really well done. And why why would you want to walk around and not be seen in that? Uh, what would you gain from that? Don't know. You could sort of go in go in shops when they're shut, so you don't have to go. How would you get else. in? Just get in just before they lock up. Oh yeah. And How would you get out? Wait till the morning. Brilliant. So, hang on. So, that's your use of invisibility. <laughs> yeah. They found the power of invisibility. You want to sneak oh, into... No. Bear in mind. No, hang on. Let's just... You want to sneak into HMV, right, wait for 12 hours <laughs> and then buy something. <laughs> oh, I love it. Just so that you don't have to be in there with other people. Do you know what? I don't want it. I don't, I don't want a power. Why not? Because I, I just don't think it'll do me any good. <laughs> I think it's more of a hindrance. <laughs> I love this! It's like, just think of his presence. We've given you a go, a trip into space, and the chance to be invisible. Mm. Not happy with any of them. Yeah, he, what he wants is a voucher for HMV. Yeah, 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 he just wants some tokens for a record shop. Just going through a few more of these uh, emails. This one's from uh, Kent from Nova Scotia, Canada. He says, uh, Carl, um, he was, he's wondering if you've got any personal mantras that you could pass along. Uh, for instance, he, he um, reminds us of Ben Franklin's famous uh, mantra, waste not, want not. Who, who said that? Ben Franklin. What was he, what did he do? <laughs> what was his job? Benjamin Franklin was a, a well-respected American politician from the 1800s. He was it, a, a it did thinker, a, a philosopher, a, a scientist, deeply yeah. respected. Um, and he's also on a money. Big political figure. He features on he's the on a dollar bill dollar, or the ten dollar yeah. bill or something. Yeah. So he's you know, he's one of the great um, sort of American Enlightenment thinkers, right. and he came up with the mantra "waste not, want not." You must know "waste not, want not." I mean, that's just. Do you I, understand I, I, the phrase "waste not, want not"? Uh, no, not really. No. What, what does it mean? I've never used it. It's what? like. Uh, don't throw stuff away because you might need it, and therefore you you won't be wanting anything because you didn't throw it away. So he was a bit of a well, hoarder. If you don't waste food, for instance, then <laughs> you was a bit of a hoarder. <laughs> <laughs> for God's sake! No, no, but I'm just saying, you know, he, he's a man in power. Is that the best thing he, he ever said? No, I'm sure he came up with many, many profane so why things. Is that one he remembered? did experiments in electricity and conducting electricity, all sorts. But, but that's, that impresses me more. Invent electricity than someone. He didn't invent electricity. <laughs> <laughs> Wait a minute! Don't impress you more than what? Just, just, just saying. Well, it's not want not. I don't, I don't, I don't think it's that good. It's not even catchy. Uh, yeah. How would you word it? I'd just say, whoa, whoa, don't, don't be chucking that out. You might need that later. <laughs> <laughs> don't be chucking that out. You might need that later, Carl Pilkington. <laughs> Jonathan Ross gave you a cat <laughs> as a replacement for your cat which died. Yeah. Now, to me, that's, a, that's an inappropriate gift. Why? It's a lovely gift. It's it's a lo the, you should be, I don't think people should be giving pets do you as know what, gifts. Do you know what I've got in there for his birthday? Imagine turning up to a wedding without I just bought you a cat. Uh, do you know what I've got in for his birthday? I, 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 I've got him a child. Well, you may as well, because that's what it's like, a cat to me. I've got a small Rwandan child. A cat to me is like, I, I bought you this small child. <laughs> I was gonna sponsor him, but I got a bit of cash, I've flown him over. <laughs> it it's was too, it's just... too intimate, it's, like, it's too I much think? responsibility. Do you know what I think, Carl? Go on. I think Steve's a bit jealous. I'll tell you, I've got good reason to be jealous. What? I've got good reason to be jealous, I've just remembered this. Your birthday, yeah. Jonathan Ross was there. Carl Pilkington was there. Yeah. I don't remember being invited. <laughs> I don't remember being invited. Was I there, Carl? You were there. I don't remember being yeah, there. Yeah, but you're with him all day and that. Right, so... okay. Well, yeah, but he sees you a lot. I mean, Jonathan, he's, on, he's round his house every other day playing tennis and who else knows what, swimming together and sat in his jacuzzi, <laughs> cracking wise. What happened there? <laughs> what happened there? 
<laughs> and we've got to the bottom of it. Play a record. The villa that we went to afterwards yeah. could only sleep six. It may six. as well have been. <laughs> <laughs> How is the cat? Alright. Yeah, what's yeah. your name? Jonathan? Ollie. Hey ya. Outcast, XFM, 104.9, Rookies of A, Steve Merchant, Carl Pilkington. It's that time, isn't it? <laughs> Rockbusters. Three. Come on, Carl, what you got for us? Alright, well, do you want to, uh, do you want to say what the prizes actually, are? The prizes are bad away in that. Really? Um, we've got, I'll uh, be the judge of that. Actually, I'm, what am I talking about? No, there's a two disc set, Rock and Roll Legends on the cover there. We've got Buddy Holly, Elvis, Roy Orbison. And, uh, Little Richard, so No that's... one wants that, baby. <laughs> Nobody's interested. Nick Cave and the Bad Seeds, a DVD. I'm a Nick Cave fan and I wouldn't watch it. No, you'd watch it once yeah, at most best. when there's nothing on. Knowing Me Knowing You. No, no, that, no I mean, Nick Cave's good, but when do you watch rock exactly. people DVDs, yeah? Knowing Me Knowing You, a great series, obviously, but once VHS. again, on VHS. Who wants it on VHS? Yeah. Where, where are all the bonus features? R r absolute pointless so The only so thing far. that's half decent is this enormous hardback League of Gentlemen book, which is the scripts and all sorts of other stuff. If you're a League of Gentlemen fan, you'll love it. If you're not, I guess it's a good if, Christmas gift. If you're not a League of Gentlemen, there's nothing in this for you. <laughs> no, exactly. So... <laughs> so, you know, you can okay, either enter the hell of it. A pile of rubbish. What's the show? Well, not as bad as the competition, I suppose, so... No. Go right, on. Well, you, you know how it works, cryptic clue. It's not really cryptic, it's no. usually wrong. <laughs> kind of is. <laughs> yeah. Um, right, so the first one, there's three of them, you get them right, you win the stuff. First mm. one, uh... I'll get them close, I mean, cos... <laughs> you could win this if you got one right, possibly. If you go to Cheps, though, you will. Was that a clue or is that a point? Is that something? That's, that's a clue. Right. right. Say it again. If you go to Chepstow, you will. And what are the initials? Just S. Just S. Right. Second one. Um, E.T. is upset. What's up with him? <laughs> <laughs> right. E.T. is upset. What, what, what's he upset for? What's wrong with him? Right. Different. <laughs> so not cryptic, so. M go on. E. The initials there. N E. M. M E. M for mother. M E. All right. And the third one, um, I had a, I had a tape with, uh... Jesus. <laughs> imagine Bob, down, imagine Bob. Bob, Hol Bob Holness doing this against, in the gold run, against the clock. Right, uh, <laughs> oh, I had a tape, no, I had a tape with some, uh, <laughs> I, had a, oh, listen, I had a tape with, like, yeah. Umpty Dumpty on it, and, uh, <laughs> and, yeah. and Icarie Dock and that on yeah. it, but I broke it. Alright. Um. Constantly listening it to try to figure them out. <laughs> Trying to solve the crime. <laughs> exactly. Who pushed Humpty? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. The initials there, B R. Right? So, first one, if you go to Cheps though, you will. The initial uh, S. E.T.'s, uh, E.T.'s upset. What's up with him? Yeah. Right, what's up with E.T.? I don't know. What's up with E.T.? E.T.'s upset. What's up with E.T.? <laughs> yeah. The initials there, M E. Is that yeah. right? Yeah. Hey, yeah. Let's, let's, let's go through that one more time. Yeah. If you go to Chepstow, you like might. Jazz uh, question. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> just <laughs> free for exactly. Yeah, yeah. E T S a bit upset. What's <laughs> gay? What's that? What? Hey, dude. What's the matter, man? <laughs> and they had a tape with like Umpty Dumpty on it, Ickery Dickery Dock stuff yeah. like that. Doesn't work anymore. What's What's gone on there? Right. <laughs> what's gone on there? B R. First time we said, well, you broke it. Well, I, bro I broke it then. Yeah, Is that important or not? Yeah. <laughs> I broke it. And right. it says B. B R. Okay. Right. Okay, well you can text if you have uh, a <laughs> mobile phone, so everyone, there's no excuse to not take part. 83XFM is the text, 83XFM, or the phone the, number, I no, I no, no, the phone, obviously. We I don't think I know what the B might stand for. Um. <laughs> and, uh, otherwise it's, uh, ricky.gervais <laughs> at xfm.co.uk. <laughs> no. uh, We'd love uh, to hear from you. Oh, it just sucks the life out of me, does, rock, rock, just listening to Rockbusters. Something to bring you down even further, although it's a beautiful, beautiful tune. Oh, beautiful. Uh, Ryan Adams has got a number of different albums out at the moment. One is called Rock and Roll. It's not great, don't really bother with that one. Do dig out though Love Is Hell Part 1 from Ryan Adams. It's available at uh, different places and you'll find this on it. Track 5, Wonderwall, his version of Oasis Absolutely is wonderful. Absolutely beautiful, isn't it? It's a treat. It's XFM, wonderful point nine. Yeah. Rockbusters. You yeah, had a bit of love in this, right? <laughs> 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 Uh, three clues were, uh, first one, if you go to Chepstow you will, right, the initial was S, that was C Horses, alright, that was the answer there. I'll give you that. That's fair enough. I'll give you that. Um, E.T.'s upset, what's wrong with E.T.? What's, what's, what's wrong with him? Yeah, right. Initials M.E. Yeah. What's up with him? It was Missy Elliot. Alright, Elliot- Doesn't count at all. What? Doesn't count at all. Missy Elliot. You know what I mean? What's, all, what's, what's wrong with you two? What, what is that with him? No, no, well, well, just let him explain it. Sorry, Carl, go, do it again. Well, well, I wasn't listening. Do it again. Elliot, yeah? Yeah. Who's in E.T.? Yeah, I'll just do the clue again. Right. 
E.T.'s upset. Well, yeah. so he's looking a bit sad and that. What's- what's What, E.T. the extraterrestrial? Yeah. Yeah, go on. Right, and his mate- Yeah. Who's in it, it's called Elliot. Yeah. Right, he's upset. What's up with him? Well, he's- he's- he's Missy Elliot. Missy Elliot? What's she got to do with it though? I don't understand. No. It, the way you'd say it, you say, what's up, E.T.? And it'd go, oh, Missy Elliot. Why missing. would he mention her? I don't understand. Was she in- was it a thing in the film? Missing. She wasn't even around. Oh, miss, missing? Oh, missing Elliot. Oh, no, oh, oh, no. That makes sense, Carl, but no, 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 she's not no, called no, Missing no, Elliot. It's meant to be about cryptic, rock stars, though, isn't it? Miss, missing Elliot, isn't it? So it's meant to be about rock stars, yeah, isn't yeah, it, though? It's just cryptic, though, isn't it? Cryptic clues. Oh, it? no, that's not cryptic. So that's the, shit. <laughs> you. Right, the third one. Uh, I had a tape and it had uh, Umpty Dumpty on it. And <laughs> <laughs> I love when he says Umpty Dumpty. Yeah, Umpty Dumpty. Hickory Dickory Dock and that. Uh, yeah. but, but the tapes, uh, broke. Yeah. That was B.R. Buster Rhymes. Bust, Say that again, bust, I don't stop. Sorry, I don't understand. What do you mean? Uh, uh, who, who, who's the winner, Steve? No, no, it doesn't, no, do you mean no, busted? Buster. Well, it's kind of like that. <laughs> cryptic. No, no, it's not, no, cryptic doesn't mean change it, so it's not the same. Steve, who's the winner? We've got loads of right answers, so. It's interesting, this email system, weird, it? um, it flashes up suspected spam. If it, you know spam is that stuff yeah, yeah. that gets sent around the internet. Yeah. And it flashes that up if it thinks it's, uh, gonna be a spam email. And every time it comes in with a Rockbusters answer, it just says suspected spam. <laughs> in a sense. <laughs> in a Fortune faded red hot chili peppers on XFM 104.9. You, oh. of course, um, don't ever take the tube anywhere, Rick. No. You haven't done that for years. No. Um, Take cars everywhere or you walk. Mm. Or you get a lift from Jonathan. Um, but me, I still forced to take the tube, which is also very embarrassing at the moment because I'm forced posters. to take the tube, I, I am. What do you mean you're what, forced? What, am I made of money? <laughs> <laughs> well, you could How walk. else am I going to get a bank? You could walk. What? You, can, you can drive, won't you buy a car? Oh, yeah, driving into the centre of town. Congestion charge, are you paying that? Are you a fiver? <laughs> okay. What do you think of that, Carl? <laughs> eh? Um, so, uh, <laughs> oh yeah, cause he's Mr, uh, Flush. He's Mr. Lavish with his cash. Well, no, I, I've, I've moved in close, I know, I'm not moaning about it. I walk everywhere mm. now. Well, good. Yeah. Yeah. I'm pleased for you. Yeah. I'm, I'm moaning about it, but then I sorted it out. But you're yeah. always whinging anyway. Let's not get on to you, Carl. It's mm, always you, you, you. Yeah. So, um, what's up with Steve today, do you think, Carl? I don't know, what's going on? He's having a go, isn't he? Yeah. He's mm. not helping those posters being on the tube of us. <laughs> <laughs> That's not helping. <laughs> I don't know if you've seen those posters. You obviously don't go. Have I, you saw, seen them, I saw the saw the yeah. I haven't seen like, one too, but everywhere I go, I'm stood next to one. I can't avoid it. Yeah. I'm on the tube waiting. I look around. I was, oh, it's, it's us again. And it's so embarrassing. Well, cause it makes because it looks like you're stood next to it deliberately. But I can't browse in HMV now. I went yeah. last week, and uh, you keep uh, coming up to pictures or cardboard cutouts of yeah. Brent. Right? Yeah, yeah. And uh, I was in a bookshop, and I was looking at there's a big almanac of comedy, right? And I was just looking through it, just browsing, right, killing time. And there was a picture of me. And just as I started looking at this right up at the office, a tap on the shoulder. It was one of the worst. There, I said, "Do you mind signing some script books?" Mm. So she saw me looking at myself. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I was, I wanted to go. You know, I just, you know, I just turned to that page. Then yeah, I was in a bookshop looking. There was a big book on uh, sit sitcoms. It was like the A to Z of sitcoms or something like that. And I genuinely was looking up other shows because um, it was about other yeah, comedy so shows. Like, yeah. And I was looking something up. Guy that I knew came up to me like that. I, and I just started like, oh, just looking. Oh, Robin's Nest. Where's that? <laughs> Birds of a feather. I just got because <laughs> yeah. it's so. It's like I'm interested in comedy before yeah. the fact I got in comedy. So I well, would buy a book on comedy. Exactly, yeah. But on the tube it's really awkward because it's like, um, it, it's everywhere I walk they're kind of around the corner so you don't sort of expect them and then I'm sort of running now from kind of corridor to corridor, pillar to pillar <laughs> to avoid being stood next to this picture <laughs> in case I look like someone who stands next to this picture trying to get recognised. <laughs> Imagine that! Um, oh, of course Carl didn't want his little round bald head no. on that. Yeah. Uh, but um, I was on the tube today and um, <laughs> You know, you sometimes you can't help but overhear a conversation. Yeah. And uh this one woman there were two friends, they were sat there. And one woman said, um she just said, uh Oh, I must tell you this, I must tell you this. <laughs> I was in the pub last night and uh Dave called and I said, Dave, he said, I can't hear you. I said, Dave, it's not I said he said, I can't hear you. So I held the phone up so he could hear all the noise in the pub. Oh. That was it. That was the anecdote. <laughs> That was the story. And I wanted to lean over to her friend and say, unless this woman has given you a kidney or saved you from drowning, yeah. do not be friends with her. 
Cause break up this friendship. She hasn't got anecdotes. Cause what's that? And I've, I've got acquaintances like that where you know you, sp you speak to me, you get cornered at a party, you know this is the person who has not got anecdotes. <laughs> yeah. The anecdotes, they're not stories. <laughs> yeah, they just, yeah. that's it. It's like you're expecting for something else to happen. Uh, Never yeah. does. Well I was um, with uh, Danny Baker yesterday. Oh yeah. Uh, he's mm -hmm. brilliant bloke. Uh, first yeah. time I met him and we got on like a house on fire. Put your num oh. his number straight in your mobile. Well we've exchanged yes. numbers cause yeah. he's got some great yeah. anecdotes. You had to delete mine cause you no, know you've got I, so I many. Might, I might write with him cause he's, he's funny, he did sure. this thing and it was absolutely brilliant. He's yeah. doing a, uh, he wrote a, uh, a documentary and uh, he's a great guy. He's a f he's funny as well, you know Show what I mean? It's this, I tell you what it is, it's <laughs> the showbiz <laughs> friendship. That's what I loathe I think. It's the fact that like somehow <laughs> You're sort of you, because it's like you haven't got to go through the formalities of making friends with someone because they oh, well I respect your work you respect mine you know I'm a funny guy you've seen my work yeah. let's be friends yeah, yeah. of course yeah. and it's like and it just it's a horrible kind of icky sort of listen Steve me and you are going to stay in touch whatever <laughs> so I mean not and probably not my birthday this year but next year sure we'd have known each other what seven eight years yeah so come to that one yeah 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 uh well, can I, I'll do tell I need to wear the waiter's outfit again. <laughs> <laughs> oh God! Oh dear! <laughs> <laughs> I um, <laughs> it's not so much that I I appreciate the, the fact that there is a gift. I think it's the sort of it's the fact that the gifts are arbitrary and can be bought in the shop that's opposite the place he works. Don't tell Carl what you got your yeah. man for this. Well, Listen this to this, is, Carl. This you'll love this. Right, yeah. it, the th it's the thought that counts, right? So I suppose if you say that the thought that counts is the fact that he went and got anything at all, that counts. Okay, mm. fair enough. But I phone, he phoned me up. He said, "What shall I get your mother?" Right? It's our twentieth wedding anniversary, <laughs> right? What shall I get her? I said, well, I'll tell you this, this is a great idea I'd heard from somewhere else. Why not get her, like, a, pay for her to have a makeover, you know, and all the sort of treatment, you know, and the beauty treatment and that. Mm -hmm. She'll love that, you know, and then take her out, give her a meal and stuff. He went, okay, okay, okay. So he, he hangs up. I speak to him on the day of my mum's birthday. I say, what'd you get? What'd you get? He said, oh, I, I got something. I said, do you go for the makeover idea? He went, not exactly. I went, what'd you do? He went, I bought her a trowel. <laughs> a trowel. <laughs> I went, a trowel? He went, yeah, for the garden. <laughs> I went, it's a trowel. You've been married 20 years and you've got a trowel. He went, it's stainless steel. <laughs> I said, I said to him, it's a trowel, Dad. And he went, do you think I should have got it engraved? <laughs> it is mental. <laughs> and I went down to see them, right? And I went in the lounge and literally, imagine it, like, it wasn't this, but imagine, I got in there, he'd bought this trowel, <laughs> right? And he'd also bought her an industrial sized tin of coffee. You know those ones, that are those big size ones you have in, in like, hotels? <laughs> I say she loves coffee, Steve. She loves coffee, Steve, you said. I love the fact that, that that's meant to be, like, like the whole family use it, like she keeps that by her bed. Yeah. Like she's in Stalag yeah. 13 or something, this is my coffee. But imagine that... walking into the lounge, right, she's there, <laughs> she's got the presents that my sister's bought in there. A trowel, <laughs> just holding a trowel and a tin of coffee. And me walking in wondering, I wonder if there's anything sort of that she regrets in her life. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's lovely. She loves coffee, Steve. She loves coffee, Steve. Oh. She loves the garden. Carl, what's the worst present you've ever had? You see, we don't really celebrate birthdays in our house, so... <laughs> what, what? Where are you from? What planet are you... What do you mean you don't celebrate birthdays? Are you here from another world observing? <laughs> Like trying to blend in, but not quite yeah, managing to pull it off. Not that fussed about it, right? You know I mean, it's yeah. My mum and dad's are on the same day, and I think that just was like that's a bit weird, isn't it? On their anniversary, and well, they got married so, on their but their mutual birthday. But Carl, can I just I and mean, Christmas? But Carl, there's a difference right. between you saying. What do you mean their anniversary's on the same day? Of course, it's on the same day. Yeah, and the, and the birthday. <laughs> <laughs> but Carl, what I mean is that. You, I mean, you say that you don't really celebrate your birthday, but presumably you have received some presents at some point in your life from your parents. Or anyone. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> okay, well, we'll come back to you later. Yeah. Thanks. Let's play a record. Carl, have a think about that. We'll come back to you later. Thanks very much. <laughs> Ash and sometimes they've won me over. They have indeed, yeah. They've just got better. They've got, the, they've got to be the band they always wanted to be, I I'd think. have written them off in the early days, but no. Me too, Steve. Themselves. Just uh, goes to show. Go Carl, um, any thoughts on what uh, gift you've perhaps once received that you can <laughs> joke about now? Or no. was tragic at the time? No? No. Not really put the thought in then? Didn't have that many presents, so... Always thankful for what you get, got. I was grateful for. Yeah. Rick, would you love to hear from the listeners if maybe they've received some amusing gifts? No. No, I wouldn't. Um, so, what are you doing tonight? You're going out for a little meal with your parents? Yeah. I thought you were coming. Yeah. Right. Yeah. yeah. Good yeah. to know. Yeah. Any um, suggestions as to where we could go? I mean, maybe people would like to phone in because I've got no idea. It's yeah. got to be largely meat-based. <laughs> <laughs> I'll yeah. only really eat meat. Do you know uh, the 
steakhouse uh, n near me. It's closed down. Brilliant. That's it, one. There's lots more to go. <laughs> Let's not stop there, it people. Come on. I used to look across and think, is that a bingo hall? <laughs> I know. It's or bright. somewhere to eat? Yeah. yeah, neon. There's at the back, right at the back, add cocktails. And, you know, just imagine... Yeah, who's in there with a cocktail? You know, like, imagine you going in there with a DJ sitting there. Da, 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 hey, da, 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 hi. Uh, da, 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 da. <laughs> Go on. Carl's got something to say. No, I can tell. So what? Is, is there a chance that your dad's, like, on the way into London now and has heard you say, you know, yeah. he got me this and he got me that, and he could be, like, nipping to a shop now to buy you a rake and thought... <laughs> 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 yeah, uh, yeah. Just think of that. Oh, oh that would be terrible, wouldn't it? Or the yeah. making of the bends. Yeah, he'll probably turn up and say, "I was going to get you a gift, Steve, but then I got high," <laughs> and we'll all laugh. <laughs> yeah. Cultural reference. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, um, right. This link has run out of steam again. <laughs> yes, but it, don't worry because I can salvage it. Go on. Because it's time for Under the Covers. Cover me up. Oh, you got me Between the covers. Between the covers. I like covers. <laughs> <laughs> Cover songs. <laughs> yeah. And uh, this was done by someone else. <laughs> <laughs> and it was... Uh, this week I'd like to play... Um, I mean, we're all fans of Destiny's Child, mm -hmm. Rick. And we're all fans of the song Say My Name. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But have any of us heard um, the Scottish band Spare Snare doing their version of it? I, I suspect not. Let's hear it now. Oh. <laughs> Bear Snare doing their version of Say My Name by Destiny's Child. Real, what do you make of it? Do you remember Raw Sex that I used to be in um, French and Saunders? Was <laughs> Roller River on as well? Yeah. <laughs> is that basically what it's like? It's a bit like that. Do you yeah. think maybe the cover version section's running out of steam? <laughs> <laughs> if that's what we're playing. I think we should only ever do sort of six weeks a year on radio. Right. And then, you know. Yeah, it, and people will kind of remember that. <laughs> It'll be beautifully preserved in their memories. Yeah. You know, like, like Benny um, Hill used to do one show a year. <laughs> right. You know what I mean? Imagine yeah. how awful it would be if you'd like I'd, I'd do it ev <laughs> every week for two hours. I don't yeah. think you'd have been so successful, to be <laughs> honest, Steve. I think you'd, you'd run out of ideas. Rick, I know that you are tired of coming in every Saturday and doing the show. I know I am, and I yeah. suspect many of the listeners are. But maybe we should leave it to the listeners. You know, if they want us off the air, maybe they should just email fax, phone That'd in. be... Uh, I think everything should be like that, though. Vote yeah. whether you want to, you know, like a binary sort, like, mm. you know, up against someone knocks... Like, like, winner stays on in pool. Yeah. I hate that, winner stays on in pool, in pubs. Like, it's just I horrible it. fascist, isn't it? You yeah. want to play with your mates. You don't want to exactly. have to beat a bloke with one tooth who just yeah. plays pool all day. Yeah. yeah. Costs him nothing, and he has 93 games. Of course you're not going to beat him. He's a professional by the end of the evening. Okay, XFM 104.9. <laughs> oh, Merry Christmas. For Hero by Les Fleur. Great bloke, Les. Yeah. Work with him in Blackpool. <clears throat> Weird. Have like. very high voice. Can't yes. grow a beard. Yes. But, uh, yeah. I'm joshing. Probably right. pronounced Les Fleur, innit? Les Le Fleur. Yeah. We, we, know oh, we know that. Oh, we know that. We know that. We know that. You noticed all those huge posters, um, advertising Christian O'Connell's breakfast show? Uh, they're all over the place now. They're mainly on the tube, like you wouldn't know, Gervais. No. What with your driver and everything. <laughs> um, imagine if they'd spent the kind of money they must have spent on those advertising our show. I know. And those people were tuning in, and today's show is what they heard. I, I was actually thinking, right, um, because uh, we do sort of, we do care in a way. Yeah. We couldn't get over it today, you know. Just to, just a word to the kids, this is what al alcohol can do to you. <laughs> yeah. It's a sobering lesson. Yeah, it is. Yeah. But I thought, what if this was our first ever attempt at radio? Think how gutted we'd be. We'd go, we just, this is, we're not. What right. worries me is it's like, I don't know, it's like in my sort of hangover state, it's like I've kind of woken from a dream. And I've sort of thought to myself, all the stuff we're saying today is what we normally say week in, week out. And we think it's brilliant. And it's today yeah, oh. we've done it. And it's rubbish. Oh, and, we, and it's like we've seen the truth. Oh, yeah. It might be. See, I, it, yeah. So an alcohol can just, make... just not as interesting or entertaining as we thought. See, yours could be BSE as well, though, because I know There's you're a lot worried of that about that. In, I think. Yeah, because yeah. you just you just ate beef, didn't you, for for the first <laughs> fifteen largely, years? Largely just beef, yeah. Beef and milk, yeah. mainly uncooked. It was just you know, <laughs> they just wheel a Often cow in. from the cow. Yeah, just just suckle it from the cow. Now we're going. We get complaints about that. We will indeed. I always wondered um, if Bruno Brooks ever got complaints. Actually. Um, when he once played Rage Against the Machine, killing in the name of, yeah, and I'm, he must have dozed off or something because he didn't realise uh, all the swearing. You know, e f you, I won't do what you told me, and he just left it playing. He probably wasn't. And listening. it was the UK top forty, and it was just you know. He probably, yeah, of course, he, he probably did get complaints. Where is he now? <laughs> Good point. Doing internet radio, which is of course where we'll be next week. Yeah, if we if we buck our ideas up. Um, quick question. Go on. I just realised who Carl looks like. Moby. He does. Not the first person to say yeah, that. Yeah, it suddenly just dawned on me then. 
Yeah. So if Moby's one of those people that I think is fantastic. Every time I see him, everything he says I agree with is 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 yeah. lovely, and I just can't get into his music. It's bad. It's like it's like I feel that it's like a mate you can't say oh I give it up because I think he's he's fantastic, and I want to go. Why don't you do something else? Mm. Mm. For more, I bored myself. Views. I bored myself then. If you've this got a is... pop star that you'd like Ricky Gervais to pass, comment on. <laughs> Why not get in touch? <laughs> yeah. Basically, Rick, what are your views <laughs> on God. Rick Witter from Shed 7? Uh, Rick Witter, I, I, you know, I, I like their effort. Okay. I think he's, he's quite, uh, you know, uh, got a nice hair. <laughs> <laughs> what about Chakademus and Pliers? <laughs> what was their hit? Uh, tease me, tease me, tease me. <laughs> 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 anyway, <laughs> more of that next time, I'm sure. Oh, that's it. Are we, are we straight to the song for the ladies now? Or yeah, song for the ladies. Yeah, let's... Should we just get it over with? Yeah, let's knock it this on the head. Song for the ladies this week, one of the best tracks on Hour of the Bewildered Beast by Badly Drawn Boy. It's, of course, Magic in the Air for all the ladies. Bye. Sorry about that. We're going to really be good next week. Happy birthday, or...? Happy birthday to you. But no, we're going to be... We're going to start work on next week's we'll show. Really, it, from then on, it'll be year zero. Yeah. Half Light by Athlete on XFM 104.9. Ricky Gervais, Steve Merchant and Carl Pilkington. Carl. Right. Two o'clock. Let's get Rockbusters rolling. I should just, um, if people aren't familiar with Rockbusters, then, um, someone has actually sent in one of their own to test Carl. Um, they've used, I think, the same principle that Carl has, which is, you know, utterly random. Yeah. As you said before, Tenuous, you're really just, just trying not to really think of something yeah. that he might sure, be thinking of. Sure, sure. So, um, I'm gonna, I mean, she's done it quite coherently, but I'm wondering if I should sort of say it more as Carl might say it, you know, just slightly less. More different every time. Yeah, slightly less coherent. So, um, Carl, this is one for you, alright? Yeah. You know, it's Sunday morning, you know, I'm just, you know, I'm in bed, but I don't sleep, you know, but like, Hollyoaks is on, the omnibus, I'm just watching that, you know. Um, I go and make a lovely cup of tea, you know, I'm in the bed with Suzanne, aren't I, having a cup of tea? What's going on there? Just watching the telly and that, but hang on. I haven't got anything to dunk in me, uh, in my tea. I haven't got anything to dunk in my tea, have I? You know what I mean? I haven't got anything to dunk in there. I'm just having, you know. What, what am I doing? Is That's, it LB? It's LR. Oh. LR. So, have a think about that one, Carl. I, I think I know it. Yeah. Do you? Go for it. Go on. Is it Lionel Rich, Richie? It is Lionel sort Richie. Of, What's your logic? Sort of lying in, lying ill, and it's like. No, no what? rich. Tea. No, no rich tea. tea. Yeah. No biscuits, no rich tea. Lying, no rich tea. Lionel Rich tea. Lionel <laughs> Richie. It works. So it's just, one, it's we've just done as coherent as like yours. What's that? We've done one a little bit like it. There's nothing wrong with that. I cannot believe so you got that's it. A, that's a toast. <laughs> I cannot believe you got it. I might not have got it without the initials, but that's why we chucked them in, just to help you along. <laughs> 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 so, right, so, what have you got for us right, this so week? We've got, we got three of them. We've oh, got, by the way, don't bother calling in Kate Bush because Carl doesn't want to answer the phones. He says Kate Bush is not going to call, so it's all going to be nutters. So, we apologise. He's got one thing to do. He didn't even get the sound right because someone's complaining about they couldn't hear Steve. He's got to do monkey news, which is always twaddle, and he won't even answer the phones now. So, I don't know. I don't know why he gets paid. He takes off Mondays because he don't. works Saturdays. He I gets don't. paid for Saturdays. He takes five weeks not holiday a year. Not off Mondays. And, and, and he moans. Not off Mondays. Wow. Well, <laughs> Right, um, what, what have you got for us? Right then, the first one. Uh, there's a vehicle that sells kebabs. Right? <laughs> there, there's a vehicle that sells kebabs. Initial D. Right? D. <laughs> Great. Right? Have you worked that one out? Of course I haven't! Right, the second one. Um, you're asked if you want that bit of the egg. <laughs> <laughs> you are! You are! You're asked if you, if you want that bit of the egg. Yeah. You think about it, but we t uh, sort of decide against it. <laughs> and what, again? What's going on there? You're asked if you want that bit of the egg. You think about it, but you go, nah, I'll go against it. Right? I've, yeah, I've got it. Is so it, it initials W, uh, Y, O? Yeah. Got it. Right, so. Okay. Yeah. That uh, one, that one works. Uh, no, it doesn't. No, it doesn't. No, it doesn't. No. Uh, and the last one. I don't think this burger will catch on. I don't think this burger will catch on. Yeah, and the letter there is M. So you just, uh, text or email in, 
uh, with the answers and uh, win some stuff. What yeah. have we got? We've got some prizes. We've got uh, another box set of the League of Gentlemen. This um, is instant gratification, but uh, you go into a draw for some, something bigger. So, what have we got today? Yeah, well, today, this is what you're taking home today. Uh, yeah. You've got the League of Gentlemen, the complete collection on DVD. That's yeah. not that's worth having, definitely. Uh, we've got Catterick, which is the current Vic and Bob show on BBC Two, which is uh, good. The Aviator, the um, the award winning um, Leonardo DiCaprio, Martin Scorsese biopic, and once again, Ladder 49. We're giving that away again, are we? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Apparently, oh, we got. Um, can we get a job like those? We got loads of them. We've got Oh, yeah. excellent. So Email well. in if you just want a copy of Ladder 49. I'm sure we could do that for you. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Or phone in, because Carl does not answer the phones. Right. And remember, the winner goes forward f uh, into the chance to win the big prizes, the h signed Homer drawing, uh, the signed Nigel Tufnell poster, and you go to rickygervais.com and see Matt Groening actually drawing that to, uh, to, to verify it. But in Lloyd Carl won't. Oh, Never oh, anywhere, is it? Has it? Uh, it's what they're waiting for. It's the Rockbuster dancers. That's right. Uh, all right. Okay, give us the clue. Give us the answer. Right then. Uh, first one. Oh, yeah, because we haven't got long for monkey news. Don't worry about it. Don't worry about it. First one. <laughs> there's a there's a vehicle over there. That's uh, it's changed. Selling kebabs. Oh, it's changed. Go on. <clears throat> Initial D. Yeah. What is it? That was Donovan. Donovan. Okay. All right. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. That Good. Works. I'll give you that. I'll give you that. Yeah. Second That's a one. real clue. Mm. Well, they got it, like they always do, so they're yeah. always real clues. Mm. Uh, second one. You're asked if you want that bit of the egg, right? You think about it, then you decide against it. I think I know this one. What was the initial again? Y O. Um, is this, um, uh, John Lennon's, um, wife, Yoke Ono? Yeah, that's right. I think that was her name, Yoke Ono, was it? <laughs> yeah, it was Yoke Ono. That, that was, yeah. it was Yoke, Yoke Ono. No, no, Yoke no, you've oh, got no. it wrong. You're thinking about it. You ask if you want a bit of the egg. Yeah. You go, yolk. You think about it. Oh. Oh no. Oh, so you say it twice. You stutter. So no, it's no, yolk. No, no. Yolk. Oh, oh no. no, you, you no her name's Yoko. Oh no, though. Yeah, Yoko. Yeah. Oh no. Listen to the clue again. Okay, no, 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 no. Listen no, 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 to the clue. So what you say is, do you, do you want this bit of the egg? You think, oh, the other bit. No. Yolk. Oh. Oh no. Yolk. Right. Oh. Oh no. Yolk. Oh. Oh no. Yolk. Oh. Oh no. Yolk. Oh. Oh no. No. Oh yolk. Yeah. Go on. Brilliant. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yolk. Oh no. Yeah. Go on. Yeah. Perfect. No, 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 next. Next. Yeah. 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 And the last one was. uh I don't think this burger will catch on. That was uh, initial M. Yeah. McFly. Right? So, there's your three clues. Which one's the one It won't catch on. Well, who'd want to eat that? You know what I mean? It's like a, a Mac burger or whatever. Mac, Mac chicken. McFly. <laughs> <laughs> Lloyd Cole, Impossible Girl, on XFM 104.9. Wow. Rick, I'm just reading an email we've had, and it is indeed true. Scores of naked cyclists will be wheeling around London today in a mass protest against oil dependency. The World Naked Bike Ride will see the arresting sight of up to 200 daring riders bearing all in their cycle past some of the capital's most famous landmarks. Have they got to wear an helmet? <laughs> Are they against wearing a helmet? Well, I don't. I, I, I think they're trying to, trying to make a statement. I would imagine. I don't know. Well, they don't have to wear a helmet. It's not law to wear a helmet on a bike, is it? It's for your own safety. It's sensible. You're right. Yeah. yeah. Well, it's also sensible to just pop some pants on. <laughs> <laughs> pop some pants on. Are you going to be popping down, pop down there and cheering them on? I'm not. I'm not going anywhere near it. What? What are they going against? What's the problem that's going on? Um, oil dependency. I think you know. Generally, we're consuming too much oil, aren't we, in the world? And it's going to run out one day, and we've not talking got any alternatives. Uh, talking of um, uh, campaigns and uh, things and that. Um, did you see? Uh, um, Sir Bob on um, Jonathan Ross last night. Sir Bob Geldof. Sir Bob Geldof. Yeah. Uh, um, are you going to walk to uh, Edinburgh or sail to France, Carl? What, what do you think of all this? The G8. Uh, I think it's good that you know he's uh, he's doing some stuff for the world and what have you, but I probably won't won't bother. No. Having a walk. What do you make of all this? All his campaigning. You know, he's dedicated his life to this now, hasn't he? Yeah, yeah. I mean. It's interesting. I was watching him last night, and I uh, respect the man. I mean, he used to work here, didn't he? Did some shows and that. Mm -hmm. It's good. It's all right that he, that he can do it, but I assume that's not why you respect him. I assume you respect him because he's trying to save a nation, as opposed to he used to work in XFM for a while. Yeah, I know, but I'm just I'm just saying is uh, it's it's good that he's he's giving up a lot of his time to you know try and save the world and that. But you know, there's a bit of me that's kind of like you know, is he wasting his time a bit? Right. right. What do you mean, wasting his time? 
Well, he's, he tried it before and- No, no, wait, 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 wait. What he's trying to say is that the G8 are the, the uh, I think the seven most, uh, rich, wealthy nations in the world and Russia, and they get together and they can, they can wipe out the, the third world debt. Mm. I.e. They, they owe us billions and billions of pounds, they can't afford to pay it back. So he's gonna say let's, let's wipe the slate clean and pledge, I think, a lot more aid and stuff to them, isn't it? Mm -hmm. So what do you think of that? But, won't, won't they just do it again? <laughs> right, what's you thinking? No, I just mean- I knew I, I, I knew I had a little diamond in the rough here. <laughs> I mean, obviously, yeah, I, I admit, I brought this up because I really wanted to know what, what Carl thought of it. Sure. Yeah, I, I, I ulterior motives. It wasn't just for awareness for, for the, for the very worthy cause. It was because I know- look at him looking at me. Look at him, he looks at me like a cat. Honestly, it's like there's nothing behind those eyes. Right, what do you mean? They're, just, they gonna, they're just gonna run up the debt again, you think? Well, what I mean is, right, when I was a kid, right, and I wanted to go to the arcade, I'd borrow a quid off me mum, right, and she'd say, don't come back asking for more and what have you, but I'd, I'd have a go on a pinball machine or whatever, <coughs> game on a fruity, and then go back, and she'd go, uh, go can I have some more money? And she goes, I gave you a quid before, and I go, I know, but I'm on holiday, and she goes, there you go then. And then I'd go off and do the same thing. I didn't go, no, I wasted the last one. I'm gonna pop this in the bank. Right. right. So, so you think that's what's gonna happen with That's with, a, that's with a the nice, nice metaphor. So what do you think happening there? That the Africans are uh, are nice blowing it down the arcade. <laughs> <laughs> Instead of putting it towards a fishing rod, they're blowing it down the arcade. <laughs> they're trying to. They are trying. I'm trying to win a watch. <laughs> Look, I've got a hundred goals. I think this thing is dodgy. <laughs> yeah. I'm trying to win a fluffy toy. I just As Bob said, yeah, Bob said, you're never gonna get the Snoopy. You're never gonna it's, get the it's Snoopy. It's always gonna fall out of the little claw it's with me. The claw is not strong <laughs> enough. Yeah. Do not waste a- no, <laughs> no, Midge. Midge, Midge you have to write a song. Write another song, mate. They've flown it down the arcade. <laughs> Brilliant. So Martin. that's your genuine logic, is it? Well, I just don't know, uh, I d if, if they put me in charge of it, I don't know what I'd do. I, I just think it's a- it's a- Could I just say that will never happen? No. Could I just say to London- Yeah. And anyone listening Sleep on Sleep easy. Yeah, don't worry, Carl is not gonna be put in charge of G8. It's not gonna be him, Blair, <laughs> Chirac. <laughs> That would be Brilliant. a joy if it were. That would be amazing. But anyway, so let's assume for what in one some alternate universe you are in charge. What would you do? Monkeys, obviously, it's like Planet of the Apes. <laughs> What's uh, what what are you what are you gonna do? You're you're the only you know, only person with opposable thumbs. <laughs> What's your solution? Uh, we've done a lot of it, haven't we? We've sent, yeah. you know, money out there. We've sent them clothes and that. Yeah. Uh, I mean, have the, you? It's gone. You say we, have you sent- I've done, I've done loads for charity. Go on. No, loads. I've done, done loads of stuff. Go on. Oh, what? Oh, I'll give stuff to Oxfam. Yeah? Uh, what stuff you don't want anymore? Yeah, junk, you mean. Well, yeah, but it's, it'll be alright for them. I mean, I said to you the other day, like, when they collect clothes for over there, I don't know, none of my stuff's gonna fit them well. It's tricky though, I seem to be surrounded by people like that. Remember that film, that slither, sliver or something? Okay, right. When, when they've got video cameras. Yeah. I'm just looking onto everybody's world and just seeing what people are getting up to. There's nothing wrong with that. Brilliant. That's why I like washing up. <laughs> <laughs> we were talking about famous mantras and sayings and things. Yeah. Never has a mank said so much to so many that means so little. Brilliant. So you can have that on your uh, headstone. Rupert. Your little round headstone. <laughs> <laughs> Rupert's in the Isle of Man, he says, I don't know if you knew this, Carl, but apparently octopus's testicles are located in their heads. Yeah. But then, to me, that isn't that, that amazing, because at the end of the day, an octopus, really, all it is is an head. <laughs> <laughs> so everything it's got has to be it in the head. It has to be in the head. It'd look daft if they dangled down below. <laughs> right? So what, all it is is, I mean, there's a lot Hang of on, facts. It, it, it looked daft if they dangled down below. There's, I'm wondering if that could almost be the B-side to, uh, B -side I could eat a knob at night. I could eat a knob at night. James Round says, Carl, if you could be anyone in the world, who would it be? Uh, dead or alive. Why would you choose to be a dead person? <laughs> no, but, but sometimes, like, there's people who, who are now, now dead, but everybody raves about them. What I mean is, if- I'll just answer the question, who would you be and why? It's someone you no, admire no, no. or you think had a good life? But, just answer the question. But what I mean is, it's good to be remembered, like Winston Churchill is remembered yeah. as being a decent bloke, but I wouldn't want the asshole that he had. So I don't want to live his life. Right. 
but it's good to be. You'd like to be Winston Churchill, but you'd like to have a paper round <laughs> instead of uh, 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 saving the world. Yeah. Well, th that's that's what I mean. But is he saying who would want to? Whose job would oh. want to take on? It's not that complicated. The question is this: If he could be anyone in the world, who would Carl be? That's the question. That's all the information I've got. <sighs> a lot of responsibility on a lot of jobs, isn't they? So <sighs> some of the names flowing through your head now. Um, I was thinking, um, Bruce Willis. <laughs> <laughs> I never expected that! I never expected that! Uh, what, uh, so when he, what, so his responsibility in your mind is what? Saving, uh, people who are trapped in a building with terrorists? Well, yeah, may maybe, you know, his, his worries are different worries. With, you know, people who have a lot of money, come other worries. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? So Bruce Willis, He's always going on these marches, isn't he, saying stop war and all that. Okay, Mainly no. because he's got, you know, he's got more more to lose if there's a war. He's got loads of houses. One of them's going to get damaged. <laughs> Whereas if you're poor, you've got the one house. If there's a war, it's like, oh, just end it all for me then. I'm sick of it anyway. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Sure. So with, Whereas with, Bruce, yeah. With, with, with successful life and happy life, there's more for you to lose is what I'm saying. Right. Like, at the moment, because I've, I've, I've finished a job that's, uh, that I've been at for ten years, right? I've finished working there, so suddenly I've got, me, me timetable's a bit out, and I haven't got enough of a routine, and I, I'm a man who likes to know what I'm doing, right? Yeah. So now suddenly- Five I'm, until seven, washing up, with no thumbs. <laughs> I, I like, I've sort of turned into like an old person, <laughs> where the little jobs that you shouldn't enjoy, and now the main event. So but like, hold on, how old are you? You're 31, aren't you? 32. 32, and you're pottering around, <laughs> not knowing what to do with yourself. Well, like yesterday, Suzanne's shoes needed uh, to go to the cobblers, right? <laughs> I haven't heard the word cobblers. I didn't even know cobblers still existed. <laughs> I only ever see that in Christmas films made by Disney. Well, I had to go and do that, and that suddenly... Because last, like, last time you were going to the toffee shop, <laughs> yeah! and now you're going to the cobblers, next week it's the candlestick maker. <laughs> But all, <laughs> all I mean is, that suddenly is a nice little day out, I'm sort of putting my coat on, going, right, I'll go and, go and see the cobbler now yeah. and go and have a chat. Tell me about the cobbler. You didn't come back with three magic beans, did you? <laughs> <laughs> no, the, the cobbler's, cobbler's alright, he's, you know, he's doing, you know, he's fixing cobbling. shoes and that. He's cobbling, um, he's cobbling all day. Have I told you about, uh, my Uncle Alf, who was a cobbler? No. I'm sure I'll tell you about him. He's, he's the one who, um, he lived in like a, a bed set and he had two tellies. He had, he had like one that, that the sound didn't work on, oh, and right. one that the picture didn't, but both together, it worked. <laughs> oh, right, okay. So as long as he was watching the right, the same channel on both, sound came out of one telly, and he'd watch the picture on the other. Brilliant. And he slept in like a, a rubber dinghy, <laughs> right? <laughs> but, but he was- he Whoa! Was, you can't just let that slide, why did he sleep in a rubber dinghy? He, he just liked boats and stuff, and uh, he sort of. <laughs> yeah, I like boats, but they're better on the water. Beds are better to sleep on. Boats are better to sail on. Well, he just he just had it in there. It's a bed set. It was really tight space. Boat set. He's got this. He's got it's this. Moved into uh, a dinghy set. He's got this dinghy, so he's thinking, well, rather than it get in the way, I might as well use it. Yeah. Right? But he was a he was a cobbler, <laughs> and he he used to like repair like my shoes and that, right? Yeah. But he, he'd always sort of overdo them. Right, so, what do you mean? Like, um, <laughs> Fancy. Do you know, like, Pimp My Ride on MTV? Yeah. Because he does up shoes, he'd go mental on them. What do you mean? There was a, the stereo, yeah. Well, no, there was it, horns. It, it, it's like, <laughs> Here go comes Carl Stripes, though. Yeah, like, yeah. Here comes Mr. Pilkerton, he's got the fastest shoes in the land. No, he just makes shoes that would last forever, so instead of putting, like, one sole on, he'd put about five on. So you, it looked like one of them built up shoes. <laughs> that you never see. He just put loads of stuff on. They'd last forever. But they did. But they look like orthopedic shoes. Yeah, yeah. It just like the suddenly I, I was like six foot seven. <laughs> whenever he'd sort of sorted my shoes out. But he's he's a cobbler and you know, it's work that's that's always always there for you, isn't it? I uh, suppose so. So you went out with to 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 to, to take uh, Suzanne's shoes to the cobbler. Yeah, so that's it, yeah. So I just took them to the cobblers and that and that that was a like a nice little job for the day. Um I got a leaflet through the door saying, you know, if you want to walk a dog, you know, the the rates are good. I don't know what they what they pay and that. And I thought if I do that and get a paper round, two in one. Sorry, you just went from a job, right, where you were the head of production at 
a radio station, dare I say it, on... I, I, can I discuss your... Uh, well, it was an all right wage, yeah. It was very good. But I wasn't happy, so it's pointless. No, I know that, but to go from the head of a department on a lot of money to walking dogs and doing a paper round, I, I don't know. I, no, but I, it's about being happy, isn't it? I know, well, that's, that's commendable if that's true, but... It, okay. And that right. makes you happier? Well, I haven't, I haven't walked the dog yet, but I'm just saying if I do... I mean, I'm not taking it if it's raining. I'm just thinking if it's a nice sunny day and I fancy a potter, I'll, I'll go round to her and say, well, how much are you paying? I'll take te the dog a walk and sure. stuff. But I, I can't believe some of the words that have cropped up. Potter, cobblers, toffee shop. It, it, it's, uh, it's very, very strange. Do you live in Narnia? <laughs> uh, a lot of people are sort of emailing in sort of brainy stuff. Brilliant. And getting a lot of stuff about uh, philosophy. Oh, yeah. And all that. Um, Descartes is, that's another one that's mentioned on an email. Descartes, yeah. the French philosopher. Yeah. What was, what's, what's your question? Well, he, he sort of cropped up on an email, someone said, uh, what do you think of, of him? And I was like, oh, I don't know. He, um, uh, famously, he, he pondered his, his own existence, uh, cogito ergo sum, I think therefore I am. He was thinking about that, he was thinking, how do I know all this is true, everything around me? And he thought, uh, well I can see it and I can smell it and I can hear it. And he went, oh yeah, my senses can be fooled, I could be dreaming. But if I'm dreaming, then at least I'm alive, at least I have some sort of consciousness. So if I'm even thinking about anything, uh, you know, I am, I exist, I think therefore I am. Cogito ergo sum. But we don't need to know the Latin bit. Why is everyone always going back to Latin? It was ages ago. <laughs> Why is that language always being... And w were Latin people always in a rush? Because they seem to be like words for full sentences. Why couldn't they just set at the time and say what they want to say? <laughs> and it's just like, what, what was the rush? to teach Latin! What about Plato? Right, Greek. Right? Now, would you say he's, he's a bright bloke? Yes, I would. I'd say he's a very, very bright bloke. Right, let me tell you this. Right? <laughs> if he's that bright, you know he got killed? No. Got hit on the head by an egg. Fucking <laughs> <laughs> hell! Well, he's right, not, he's not so clever then, is he? That's what I'm saying. Boo! What's the story with the egg? He was on holiday or something, right? And... <laughs> he was on holiday. In Greece, probably. He mm. was at, he was having a walk about and a bird was flying over the sort of... This bird was what? A great orc? What what, so, what size bird killed him a, with his was, egg? It was a big one, yeah. Was it? And and the way they used to crack... Well, an ostrich on a hang glider. The way they used to crack the eggs open to let the kids out, they used to drop them on rocks. <laughs> <laughs> what bird is this? Dropping its egg to let the kids out? You are a maniac! <laughs> You are a maniac! And Plato oh. had a little bald head. Right. So from the top, the bird's there looking down, and it goes, oh, there's there's a little rock, I'll drop the egg. Hit him on the head. Killed him. Now, this is what I was saying before about... I mean, what I'm letting too much go now, because I'm so desensitised to his nonsense, I let him go, the bird saw Plato and said, there's a rock down there. Yeah. Well, if he's stop it, if these birds are killing people with bald heads, you've got to be terrified. So, but listen, this is what I'm saying though, right? Before about knowledge and that our, our knowledge is is hassle or success is That's hassle. That's that. I, now, th I think that was Newton. <laughs> knowledge is hassle. Now, what? What? But why? Why is is Plato's intelligence got anything to do with the fact that this bird dropped it? Because an egg on his head? because he was intelligent and he's probably earning a nice few quid yeah. by giving out whatever messages he gave out. Yeah. He could afford to go on holiday to exotic places. If he was working in a factory, he wouldn't have been on this beach with big birds dropping eggs. <laughs> is what I'm saying. So, in a way, it backfired. His knowledge killed him. And that, I think, was Kierkegaard. His knowledge killed him. He, he shouldn't have been on the beach. He was only there having a break or whatever from doing what he does. <laughs> it wouldn't have happened if he wasn't on holiday. <laughs> You know, talking about, um, your parents listening, Carl, it was in Heat this week, and, uh, they mentioned that he does this thing on Sky, what is it? Uh, it was this thing with Richard Bacon, some programme about watching telly, and you yeah. just talk about what you're watching, mm -hmm. and that. And he was annoyed, cos he said, cos his parents are there, and so he's not doing it. He's not gonna turn up, cos they he mentioned it in Heat. And so his parents might watch? Yeah. Why no, are you I worried about that? I don't like him watching stuff, do I? I told you. It dates back to when I did Little Donkey. 
That's cool. Sure. I don't want people watching me. <laughs> What's that? Just reading you us on Little Donkey? What happened? It was just, you know, I was there to play the drums and that, uh, in We Three Kings. Mm -hmm. uh, I was loving it, you know. I got a bit carried away. How old were you? About 13. Yeah. Right? Really? Probably. Yeah. About 10, no, about 10 probably. Yeah. It? Six. Um, Jesus. Between six and Where old were you? What school were you at? Uh, <laughs> okay, you were He's playing little donkey. Yeah. So, and, uh, no, 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 no. No, you but it was some of them schools where everyone sort of was in the same one. Do you know what I mean? Oh, a Manchester school. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Just what the one classroom. Mean? Well, it's like you, you what sweeping chimneys in the day, and then uh, one hour of learning. <laughs> yeah. What are you talking about? What school were you at? Was it infants, junior, or secondary? They didn't really do that. It was what, one way. What do you mean? Do you that? did that. They still have to abide by the laws of the land in Manchester. No, but it was it was a lot more. Like, like, you had infants, but yeah. you also had, like, the older lot. There's kids there who, when you're in the younger year and that, you'd see kids and talk, you go, is that- Talk English and use terms that people do when they're, they're talking about schooling. I don't even want to talk about this. No, how old were you? What, what oh. I'm thinking, I'm guessing maybe six or seven or eight. So you went from thirteen <laughs> to six? Yeah, but like I say, it's hard to remember because- <laughs> Imagine if you were giving evidence <laughs> in a trial. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh, well, yeah, I don't know. Yeah. I mean, uh, I don't know, I can't really narrow it down other than seven years, either way. You know, theoretically, yeah. he could get called up for jury service. <laughs> <laughs> uh, right. White Stripes, hardest button to button on XFM. That's a frightening thought that you came up with before the break. That Carl, Carl, jury service. Carl could be responsible for yeah. someone's rest of their life. Yeah. Because jury service, that applies to anyone. Anyone could get sent the form. You, I think you're obliged to go unless you have a really decent reason not to. Imagine it was a really, really important trial. But what annoys me is that isn't it supposed to be you're tried by twelve good men and true. Twelve good, good, good men, men and true. true. Yeah. Good men and true. But, and women, of course. The only thing days. I can hope is that the defence attorney would wheedle out Carl <laughs> at an early stage. Oh yeah, objection. I object. Yeah. Why? I object. Have you heard of something called rock busters? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, sorry, we c you can't just object on that. Um, okay, then what if I tell you my client, standing trial, is a little gay Chinese fella. And here are some of the tapes <laughs> yeah. from XFM. My what do you is He's prejudiced. So how does it work then? How does what work? What do you mean? What you just get called up and you have to do you have to do jury service unless you've got a very good reason. And it's not. I normally have Mondays off. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh, you wouldn't like oh, that. Oh, yeah, well, you, you have to get there at I've nine o'clock. I've got to prepare monkey news. Yeah, yeah. Oh, you couldn't stand it. Just wouldn't do it. I wouldn't, I wouldn't. What would you say? Say, oh, don't, don't get me involved. Because I got involved once. <laughs> No. What do you mean you got involved once? Well, with the police and that, when I lived in Manchester, I saw a bit of car crime going on. Right. And I got involved. It hassle. I'm telling you. How did you get involved? You phoned the police? Yeah. Yeah. Because I Snitch. thought, well, I know, <laughs> well, that's just it, but I thought, I'd hope somebody Grass. did it with my ca Well. Yeah. So, uh, and it's just a hassle. Loads of phone calls. Canary. Having to stand on a balcony of this, you know, tower block that I lived in. Police shouting up at me. I'm stood there with my underpants on. Right. And, and what it was, a car had been robbed, right? Mm -hmm. So I call up this, they, they call up the uh, the police and that, yeah. right? Said, right, listen, um, car's been robbed, and they said, where is it? I said, I don't know, just across the road from where I live, right? So I tell them where I live. And where go, do you live? How old are you? 13? So she's she's asking loads of questions and that. I'm saying, mm -hmm. look, whilst you're asking all this, they're actually getting away. So you know, we'll leave it. And she's like, no. Uh, we'll track it down, blah, blah, blah. So I said, well, look, I, I work nights. What could you see? You could see some, I could lads, see some lads just pushing, pushing a car. Pushing a car. Yeah. They, they, That's how they steal cars in Manchester, is it? Yeah. Everywhere else in the country they're getting in, they're driving them away. In the south, we, yeah, they drive them away. <laughs> exactly. They sort of like in start Manchester. the engine. It can get away a lot faster. <laughs> what, the, what do the police do? Push their panda car after them. <laughs> exactly. They like, come on lads, don't cheat, don't get in the car. <laughs> exactly. They're just pushing it. It was late at night and that. And oh, okay. You don't want to start the engine. You don't want to wake people up. Not when you're nicking cars. Alright, so. No. So when it. Late at night. Hold on, they weren't gay. They weren't gay, were they? They what were they what the fuck? <laughs> they were out late, really. Come on, Carl. So what happened? So anyway, so look, don't call me back. I'm going out of bed. <laughs> right? I've got work in a bit. Brilliant. So um Let's go. What? So Let's that go. was that, right? Where are you working? Next thing, right? Phone's going. Uh hello, it's the police again. I said, Oh, I told you not to call me. Right? <laughs> I told so you not to said, call me at home. So um they said, Right, the police are outside, can you go on your balcony? Just like, oh So I'm ten stories up, yeah. right? Uh, stood on the balcony with, with, like, me underpants on. Yeah. Right? 
and the police are saying, where's the car? And I'm saying, I don't know, they've gone down that road now. So I'm trying to point to them, they're shouting up saying which road and all that, and I just thought, why did they get involved? Yeah. I don't think they found it. No. It was hassle. They, well, the, you know the blokes were pushing it too fast. <laughs> exactly. They were, by, they were in the next street by now, weren't well, they? Well, this is just, don't get involved. Don't get involved. After um, that, that Imagine him being on a, some sort of trial where it was like uh, some sort of mob affair. Yeah, gangland Ima murder. Imagine him going into the witness protection. <laughs> the police just explaining to him, your new name is Jeffrey Peters. Why can't I be called Bruce Wayne? Well, no. Mr. Pilkington, listen. <laughs> imagine that. Do you know what, the, do you know what witness protection is? Oh, go on. <laughs> Amazing. Look, it's when, supposing you were to give evidence against the Mafia, right, you've done a job for them and you had to give evidence against them, right? Cause right, well if you're gonna do, I mean all I do was a two kids nicking a car. Yeah. Don't start messing with Mafia. No, l listen, of course not, no. But let's imagine, imagine you were in the Mafia and uh, that, that you got caught doing something, but instead of going to prison for the rest of your life, you said, oh well I can, I can give you Mr. Big, yeah? So I go, okay, give us Mr. Big and we'll let you off, right? So the police go, right, okay. I got handed this leaflet in Soho. <laughs> 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 so you say, you okay, go, well, I'll give you names. They go, right, you get evidence in court and you go, yeah. They go, right, we'll have to get your way because you'll be done for. So you give us all the names of Mr. Big, right? We'll give you a, a new identity, a new passport. We'll, we'll get you, let you go and live in Canada for the rest of your life with Suzanne, right? So why, wh why have I got to do all that? Cause because they'll bump you off, won't they? They'll how did you know it was me? Because you have to give evidence in court. So they go, oh, Pilkerton squealed. So you gotta change all your life. Yes. Yeah. They've killed someone, yeah? Yeah. D d well look, you just know, no, you're giving them in to keep you from going to jail. So you don't want to spend the rest of your life in prison because you're involved in some or sorts or whatever. Does, how, how it, the, it doesn't matter, Carl! No, listen! I'm just, how would the Mafia know that I've said something? Because you say in court, those are the people, that's, he's Mr. Big, he's Mr. So-and-so, he, he ordered the hit. Don't you know anything? It's a lot of messing around though, isn't it? But- So I've no, got to leave this job, yeah? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah I sorry. think they might try XFM first. I'd have to- What, I'd, I'd have to bin Suzanne, would I? No, no she can go and live with you. You have to cut off all your ties with your friends and family though, you can't contact them. You gotta leave them behind. Would she have to change her haircut? <laughs> Possibly. <laughs> when did the murder happen? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> what, so what would the new identity be that you choose? What would you choose for yourself? What name? Probably, uh, uh, I wanted to be called Brett when I was a kid. Okay. Right? Brett so, what? <laughs> Brett Pilkington. Uh, you gotta change your surname, yeah? Yeah. But, yeah. <laughs> yeah. M maybe go ex-directory. Where would you move to? Uh, probably, uh, probably back up north. No. Well, no. No, no don't do that. Don't do that. Um, I, can I suggest, um, maybe, uh, Brett Hansen? And and go and live in in Australia or Canada or something. Well, maybe when they're not operating, maybe you know, and they just f forget it. You might have to change your identity as well. You might have to grow your hair. Well, you can't grow your hair, but maybe wear maybe, a wig or yeah. a moustache. What would you do? What would you wear? So, so like an afro or something. Something like that. That yeah. would be brilliant. <laughs> yeah, that, that would be, be absolutely brilliant. And I've got to do brilliant. all all that just because for five minutes I stood in a court thing. Yes. And said he's the one who did it. Yes. Yeah. Well, why can't? Why can't I just wear the afro and the glasses <laughs> when I'm in the court? <laughs> Say my name's Brett, right? Yeah. Change my voice a bit. He did it, and they go, "Thanks very much." I go off. I carry on my life. That's I still genius. Come in that here on Saturday. I don't know why they haven't thought that. Of is that is genius. I that, don't. That discounts all the witness protections. Why don't they do that? Yeah. So they go, "Well, I'll go to court as Brett Hansen <laughs> yeah. with an afro," and I don't like that. Yeah. Right. And then when I come out, I'm back to Carl Pilkington, <laughs> still talking like that, <laughs> yeah. but without the afro. <laughs> that is what? perfect. Don't. You've got- why don't you call the FBI and say, oh, listen, I can save you billions <laughs> of dollars a year. You're a genius, Carl. All right. Well done. Or Brett, should I say. Uh, this is an email we've had saying, um, Carl, what do you take by the uh, well-known saying, a stitch in time saves nine. Or oh, a stitch in time saves nine. Yeah. See, uh, it's another one that- I don't- I don't think I've picked up on a lot of these sayings that are being sort of thrown about willy-nilly. Uh, willy-nilly? <laughs> willy-nilly. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> Willy nilly. No, yeah. no, but I, I, again, it's one of them. Like, like last week, I've heard of it, but but what I've does never, willy nilly mean? It just sort of means you know carefree. That's right. Yeah. 
Okay, so but what good. does a stitch so you, in time so save? So you understood willy nilly. So you used a phrase. Yeah, it sounds I mean, nice, you used it. Right. You said it willy nillyly. But um, uh, you you sort of got the gist of it. So what does a stitch in time saves nine mean? I I, I don't know. You what do you mean know. you don't know? Think about it. A stitch in time saves nine. Is it to do with sewing? Well, yeah, sort of. Uh, I so get, if, it's not that clear. So it's if you got a, so if you got a jacket, yeah, and the seam starts coming undone. Oh, there's a little bit of seam. I'll leave it. Oh, it's getting worse and right, worse. Right. Soon your sleeve falls off. So, you just need one stitch there, that'll do it. If you do it now, later you'll need nine stitches. And that, of course, uh, is an analogy to other things. But it depends if you're busy at that point, because <laughs> if, you've got, <laughs> if you've got something else that needs doing, that means that isn't being done, because you're messing about putting something out of a hole in your coat. Is what I mean. Yeah. You can't always do stuff straight away, so maybe... I don't know. I don't know if there's a, a, a sort of a middle ground where you don't have to do it straight away, but stitching a stitch sometimes time, today, say in fifteen or whatever, meaning yeah. you don't have to do it straight away, but just do it before it gets really bad. Brilliant. Do you think yours is less poetic than than a stitch in time saves nine? So yours is. This is what you wanted to be a quote, right? Well, you could do it now, but if you're doing something else, then uh, you know. Well, well, don't do it immediately, but do it soon so it doesn't get really bad. Carl Pilkington. <laughs> no, but it's the same. That's the same way I treat most things in life. It's like I never go to the doctors unless it's really bad. That is sensible. Bad. That is very good advice. No, that's brilliant advice well, for anyone is, listening. Though. Never go to the doctors unless it's really bad. But that's why a lot of people, you know, um, die because they don't want to bother the doctor or they're mildly embarrassed or they don't know. Um, symptoms, bad symptoms. Go to the doctor if 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 you if you're not sure about something. Like you were terrified to go and have your prostate. Still not been, not doing it. Why not? I wish you wouldn't talk about it because now Suzanne will listen to this and she'll go, oh yeah, you haven't been and start dragging it up again. But why are you worried about a a little uh, a, a qualified doctor? I don't know what they're doing up there. What they what just pop the... are we in? They. <laughs> what are you talking about? They pop their finger up. That's what I mean, though. Why? Why are they still using the index finger? <laughs> what, would you prefer the forefinger or the thumb, would no. you? <laughs> no, what I mean oh! is, we've got- Or a thumb on a stick, some kind of thumb on a stick. You, yeah, you, would you prefer it to a be- A mechanical thumb, a robot thumb. thumb. Why isn't it just a little camera? Well, well they put the camera up if, if they initially discover something. But just put the camera up straight away. If no, I'm they don't need visit. to. They pop the finger up, feel that the prostate isn't swollen, wiggle it around a little bit, up your, uh, 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 up your back passage. They, what I are just, you worried I, about? I don't think they, they need to do are that. Are you embarrassed? Are you embarrassed about being in a room with your trousers around your ankles and a little fellow popping A his... little bit, yeah. Why? And the other thing is, it's not just that, is it? So, <laughs> you go in there, they check your heart out and that, which to me is the most important thing, because that's what keeps you going, isn't it? <laughs> yeah! Right? You've got to go there, you yeah. sat on the bus, stressing out, thinking, oh, in less than half an hour, I'm gonna have a finger up the arse, right? <laughs> what is the problem? And they go though? in, they check your heart, they probably <laughs> check your testicles and that. What's up with that? They check your testicles, yeah. That's yeah, but it's all building, and you, you've sat there going, oh, soon that'll that'll be happening. Yeah. And that's what puts me off. So if they just came round when you were asleep, <laughs> Suzanne just let them in and goes, he's over there, right? Yeah. And they crept up and went, <laughs> bang. You, you go, what are you doing? That. I just don't understand why they don't teach you how to do it yourself. How can they? <laughs> wow. How can they teach? Imagine you squatting in a corner with one hand on your bollocks and the other finger up the arse going, it seems to be all right. Carl, you don't understand the phrase a stitch in time saves night. I don't think you should be doing any kind of invasive medical research in your own human body. But, but then. Who knows the... what trouble you're going to cause? No, but then at you least. You would get stuck. Yeah. You would get stuck. If Susanna come out, your fist would be up your own arse. <laughs> Harry from Canterbury wants to know whether any of us have ever had any cruel nicknames. Um, he claims that he's uh, quite tall and rather hirsute, and he says he's often called Lurch or Wolfie. Um, he's always thought that Carl looks a bit like Mr. Potato Head. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, no, there's no potato that round, but um, I suppose you could fashion a potato to be that round. <laughs> yeah. Maybe we could, if anyone can uh, carve a potato into the roundest head ever, <laughs> yeah. pop a couple of eyes on it. Make um, it look as much like Carl as possible. Exactly. But yeah, did any nicknames? Did you ever have a nickname, uh, Rick? No, mine was boring. I didn't have any. It was just around the name, like Jerv or something like that. No, I didn't have nicknames. I always wanted a nickname. Um, I just thought it was quite cool for some reason, particularly because gangsters always seem to have nicknames. Lefty. You know, fingers. Yeah. Lefty, yeah. Uh, Scarface. Yeah. And so I, I decided that I thought, because no one was giving me a nickname at school, it was kind of annoying, or certainly not to my face, yeah. that I decided to just come up with one. Yeah. And so I went, I remember I was at lunch once, and I just said to my mate Phil... How old were you? 
Uh, 12, 13. Brilliant. I just said to him, uh, Phil, um, don't know if you know, mate, but, um, people aren't calling me Steve anymore. Everyone's, everyone's calling me Spud now. Now, I don't know why I thought Spud, it's weird we should talk about Mr. Potato, I don't know why I thought Spud was a, was a cool nickname. I just sort of, I think it's, it's a grown up it, name though, isn't it? And it's also because I think it sounded like, uh, it, it was probably either something that you'd find in one of those kids' books, like the famous Five or like the Bash Street kids, they'd be Spud. And I always imagine with Spud, he's not the leader of the gang, but he's a reliable member. I think you know Spud I mean? is the biggest lorry driver in one yeah. particular sort of uh, car park. Yeah. And here comes Spud. Yeah. And he gets out, all right, boys. And he's big and massive. And it, Spud can eat two breakfasts. <laughs> exactly, yeah. But I just, in my mind, it was, yeah, that I would be one day part of a gang. And it's I'm Pinky. This is Joe Joe and the tall guy Spud. And you know, cash he on, never really it? caught. And he just went, oh yeah, right. And no one started. And I was hoping he'd go. You know, everyone's calling Steve Spud. Yeah, but of course, hey Spud. The first time I said Spud, you go what? <laughs> yeah, exactly. You'd be really proud, wouldn't you? No. <laughs> Did you have a nickname? Um, not not really. I mean, there was a lot of people on the estate that I grew up on. You know, nicknames are, are big things on estates and that. Yeah. Um, a lot of me dad's mates, right? What what their nicknames did was tell you about them. Do you know how I said about the Elephant Man's a good name? Yeah. Because, like, you know what you're going to get. If someone said, Elephant Man's popping around in a bit, it wouldn't <laughs> be a shock when he walked in. Yeah. Right? <laughs> so so it, was, it worked in that sort of, uh, sort of thing. You know, so there was, uh, there was John the Screw, right? John the Screw? Yeah. Well, he had sex a lot or he worked in a prison? No, he had a DIY shop. <laughs> <laughs> So, so you had him, right? right? There was, uh, <laughs> there was Fred the Veg. Yeah. Which is, yeah, I assume right. it's because he was at the same IQ as you. Yeah. Or, or, or he was in a coma. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> right. There was, there was, uh, there was my uncle, Tattoo Stan. Oh, right. right. Yeah. He had, he had, like, loads of tattoos that he'd just done himself. Oh, my right. God. The, the problem <laughs> was, because he did his tattoos himself, <laughs> the ones on his left arm were really good. <laughs> <laughs> Because he was right-handed, on his right arm, rubbish. Right? <laughs> um, so, so there was him. <laughs> ah, great. And there was um, Jimmy the Hat. Jimmy the Hat. Yeah. Did and he that, always wear a hat? No, he didn't. That, that's that was the point there. That he, he never wore a hat. That's amazing. <laughs> Brilliant. How can you pick up on someone never wearing a hat? How would you ever notice? I'll tell you what, I've noticed something about Jimmy. What? Go on. He doesn't wear a hat. <laughs> why, why was he not called Jimmy the Parrot? Because he, he never carries a parrot. <laughs> no, but <laughs> that's just the way, I mean, that's how they work, isn't it? I mean, here, that, that, here comes Jimmy Three Legs. Why'd you call him that? He hasn't got three legs. I didn't really have one apart from, um, like, I had a CB. You know, like when you'd go on a CB radio and have a chat to people. Oh, this was a craze in the, uh, was it late 70s, early 80s? Early 80s. And, uh, it was just short band radio, wasn't it? Everyone had these little handsets and they'd speak to each other in the sort of local area. Yeah, it was mainly, I think it started off with like Lorry drivers, isn't it? Yeah, truckers, yeah, because there was that, that thing from like about 1970... Convoy. Was, convoy, yeah, yeah. Yeah, so, so I had one of them and the handle, I had, I had two handle different Handle means your nickname, your yeah, name. Yeah, there's loads of code, code stuff. Yeah. Um, I had, I had a couple, I had, um, there was Pilkio one, because right. like I say, there's a lot of Pilkingtons and that. In Manchester, so if someone wants Pilky O2, it's open. Do you know what I mean? They can have it. And then, um. <laughs> like, it's, like, it's people scrabbling for, oh, I want yeah. a Pilky Pilk O1. <laughs> <laughs> and then, um, because I did boxing and that. Well, you did it once. <laughs> yeah. I'd, uh, I'd box a boy. Because I thought that that's quite a good image as well. That's kind of like people going, oh, don't mess with him. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. If he asks what your handle is, tell him. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. It's box a boy and that. Yeah. So. Just had them two, and I used to just go on there and. Pointless. What is the point of this? Well, you just you just meet people, don't you? And you so don't meet people. You say, "What's your handle?" You're a box boy. What's yours? Uh, uh, rubber duck. All right. Cheers. No, it's but ridiculous. then but then you'll say like, then you go, "Oh, uh, what's your twenty? What's that mean? That's where are you? Well, why don't you say where are you? Because just in case there's someone who's listening in, who who you know, you hear about this all the time, don't you? People listening, jotting stuff down. Oh, right. So, just in case someone in the world doesn't know what handle means, they're, they're out of the loop. They're yeah. out of the loop. It's hardly the, it's not a difficult code to crack, is it, yeah. if you're trying to track someone? It's hardly the head of the mafia talking to each other because the FBI are on the wire. It's ridiculous. Like, I go, oh, you keep saying that, what's your handle, and they come back with something else. I, <laughs> I can't work out what's going on. No, it's like, it's like anything, isn't it? That's what codes, that's what, you know, that's what codes are all about, isn't it? You, 
set them up and that. Go on and tell me, tell me the code then. Reveal it long last to the world what yeah. these codes are. Right, so yeah. what's your twenty? Where oh, are you? This is better than the Enigma. Yeah. Right now, here we go. Right. How many candles are you burning? Uh, does that mean how big's your car or something like that? Horsepower or something? See? No, that's that's. Oh, how old what are you? time is it? No, how old are you? What how old are you? Okay. Right. Right. Uh, how many candles are you burning? Of course. Yeah. So what's the, what's the answer? Come back. You go, uh... I'm 15. 14. Brilliant. That code, <laughs> that code, it, there's no one gonna work that out. I wish you'd have kept a diary of this, cos this has been fascinating. <laughs> now and again, someone will come in and go, uh, side on, right? What's that mean? And that means, like, there's someone sat there listening into Ooh. this chat and going, this sounds interesting. Yeah, no, it does Unlikely. It. Yeah. And they, they want to join in, so they sort of go, side on, you go, side on, bring it in, right? And they go, <laughs> alright. How many candles are you burning? <laughs> yeah. What's your that, 20? That's a clue round again. Yeah. See you later. What's your 20? How many <laughs> yeah. candles are you burning? Oh. And, I mean, it seems to me that what you should have done is make made a note the first time so that when you then speak to them again, you don't need to ask them those questions. <laughs> Can I just confirm that you're burning 15? A retro cut there, Thin Lizzy. <laughs> Don't believe a word. On XFM 104.9, I'm Ricky Gervais, with me Steve Merchant. Bubba doo boo, <laughs> who's that over there? It's Carly Pilk Boys. <laughs> you alright, oh, Carl? Oh, that's clever. How you doing? Yeah, I'm alright, yeah. Yeah, come on, up, 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 big bag a doo. Up, 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 yeah? Project, project, there's people out there wanting to, you know, cheer up their Saturday afternoon. We're the boys for it, yeah? yeah. We're like quick, quick fitters. <laughs> Yeah. Come on. All right, Carl? Yeah, yeah. Come on! Come I'm on! Right, I'm all right, I'm up for it. That's it, this is the height of excitement. <laughs> this is it, is it? That's this how is you, you when you're it, This is you off your head, is it? High on life. <laughs> Christ. <laughs> what did Suzanne say about you saying about a big ass? Uh, Go she, on. She heard about it. Should we recap yeah? what happened last week? Well, the week before, he, he uh, said that um, her haircut looked like Dave Hill from Slade. <laughs> she didn't like that. So, that's what I said, she was a bit grumpy, he went, yeah, I didn't mention her fat ass. <laughs> Still thinking that she, she would never hear about this. Yeah. What happened when you went home? Um, she heard about that off a mate. Yeah. And we sorted it out. Didn't have to buy her anything. I just, just sort of said, come on, you know what the show's about and that. Stop yeah. moaning. Yeah. Right. That was alright until about Thursday, when I was reading about, uh, do you know, like they say, there's, there's, like, two worlds and that, and, uh, Whatever I'm doing now here, there's another one of me doing the same. Yeah. But- Well, no, but he's probably taking some time off. <laughs> he's probably having a week off. Yeah. But, Go on. but I was just talking about that, and she was saying, nah, that, that doesn't happen. And I sort of said, well, they definitely want a haircut like yours. <laughs> right? And that, again. that sort of started the, yeah. the argument again. It's almost like you haven't learnt your lesson. Also, it's like you're talking about it again on air almost. <laughs> In a way, <laughs> so her mates could hear again. It's very short sure learning again, curve. Sure you, know, again. you know, Carl, if there was a, uh, if I cut a hole in a in a box and you knew there was an orange in there, right, and you put your hand in, would you be stuck there trying to get that orange out? Do you think, or would you just like let it go and sort of tip it upside down to get it out? What do you mean? <laughs> <laughs> I think that answers your question. <laughs> Is that a cardboard box on your hand? Carl? <laughs> So is there any other things you want to criticise Suzanne for while we're on air? Anything else? Anything that's been niggling that you feel you should get off your chest? Yeah. Uh, the hair, the arse. Nah. Leave no, it. Everything leave else it. is yeah, fine. Leave it. leave it. I think so. Okay. Uh, that's good. I yeah. think leave it. Well mm. done. Now can we just check what uh, other big Carl features have we got today? We got uh, Monkey News. Got Monkey News that's coming important. on. Yeah. yeah. Got a bit of uh, got Rockbusters. Uh -huh. And uh, the film thing. That, uh, <laughs> Still not got a name. <laughs> the yeah. film thing. Just just me and a film and that. Mm -hmm. And, yeah. uh... Brilliant. This week, we're digging out the old, uh, the one, when I'm in One Flew Over the Cuckoo's Nest. Right, so you're gonna make Jack an appearance. Jack Nicholson. Brilliant film. Yeah. Yeah, brilliant film. It was my favourite film till I saw Godfather. It's better than that. Well, you know, yeah, some would say that, yeah. No, it is. The, the storyline's more interesting than I that. I didn't know it? there was an actual answer. I didn't- <laughs> so, Sorry, it's what's best? One floor of the cookies. Is it? Yes, okay. Oh, Rick. oh, right. Okay. Where's Where's Godfather? Because I want to know. Because I don't embarrass myself. Where uh, is it? My fourth favorite film, or something? Or probably oh. about fifth. In my fifth favorite film, is it? Brilliant. Talking of lists, I suppose Rick. I like Kez and the Elephant Man. Do I? Do you? <laughs> <laughs> lists, yeah. Rick. I don't know if you saw in the paper. I think it's on TV this evening. It's uh, as voted for by viewers of VH1, yeah. the music channel, yeah. and they've basically come up with a list of the greatest pop culture icons. Uh, ever. 
Uh, there's a hundred. In Where's Central. Elvis? So Elvis, is, for instance, is number three. Jimmy Dean in there? James Dean is in there. I think he's a bit lower. Uh, let me see. He's uh, number 22. 22. We got David Beckham at number one. Oh, well, okay. Well, then, so Robbie Williams is in there. So, so it's, it's British bias. Yeah, Robbie Williams is number nine. He's just uh, just a below ABBA. Oh, number okay. Eight. But mm -hmm. um, interestingly, this is of interest to you, I think. Number 66. Yeah. The Office. That's all right. Well, uh, it is, Rick. It's nice that the show is in there and that. Yeah. that's a very flattering thing. I tell you what cheapens it. I tell you what undermines it. Yeah. The things that are lower in the list than the show. Oh God! So we've beaten. Well, uh, go I'll on. give me a little test. Yeah. Higher or lower? Do you think this is higher, near the top of most important pop culture icons, or lower than ours? Okay, I'm going to give you uh, Superman. Well, uh, international, been around since the 30s, one of the mm -hmm. biggest icons on the planet. Mm -hmm. I say higher. Lower. But, <laughs> yeah. Ludicrous. <laughs> okay. Do you think higher so. or lower? <laughs> Neil Armstrong, the first man <laughs> on the moon. <laughs> this guy's been to the moon. <laughs> well, I'd say uh, I'd say lower then. Lower. W yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, but I'm, is is that saying the people behind the rocket or just him? <laughs> because he just sat on it. Didn't he? he just sat there. Yeah, he didn't do anything. But, no, but, but it's, it's the what icon. He's symbolic it's not, of. It's yeah. It's not what, how much work went into it. Alright. Uh, a few others. What about things like Coca-Cola? Oh no, they don't really count. It tends to be- uh, Oh, so it's not- They don't feature. I mean, Mickey Mouse is in there. Um, mm. what do you make- what do you reckon, Tom Cruise, higher or lower? Tom Cruise is the number one box office movie star in the world. <laughs> well, presumably lower He's then. lower. He's number 81. <laughs> yeah. Just about scraped in there. Uh, it really is a list drawn up by people who've just sat at home and looked along their video and book collection. Yeah. Um, office, well, yeah, that's good. Well, I think it is a reflection of that, but it's- the, it's always the same that they, um, you do an HMV poll and it's pet sounds, uh, revolver, let's get it on, yeah. Robbie Williams live through a lens. <laughs> exactly. Because it's- it's, you know, it's the people that vote, it's a reflection of like those massive, you yeah. know, what's big at the moment. I was the most powerful man in comedy, let's not forget. Yes. One year ago. Yeah. Wonder where I'll be this year. See, if that had been the laziest man in comedy, <laughs> yeah, yeah. he'd have got my vote. <laughs> yeah. Interestingly though, at number 26, Carl Pilkington. <laughs> <laughs> oh, imagine. All possibilities. Badly drawn boy on XFM 104.9. I'm Ricky Gervais with me, Steve Merchant, and little Carly Pilcoids. <laughs> Rick, um, Susie's emailed. Yeah. She wondered if you could give a massive hello to mm. uh, Hannah and Charlotte and all in the sixth form at Cobthall School. Yeah. And she's on to listen. Would you give them a massive yeah, hello? Yeah, shout out, shout out. Yeah, yeah no massive. Respect, man. Where are they from? Uh, I don't know, I can't quite pronounce it. Cobthall School? Cobthall or? Massive. Yeah. They're probably Cobthall known massive. as. Yeah. yeah. So good luck to Sue's and Hans and Charles. When did we when did we start doing dedications? Because like, I've always felt this is something that's lacking on the show: interaction with the audience. You know, interesting only to the one person whose yeah, name is mentioned. Of course, but yeah. that's how that's how proper DJs fill out their time. They don't talk about monkeys and you know and all that kind of drivel. Oh, do you think monkeys are drivel, Carl? Well, well, we'll, we'll still be doing a bit of monkey news. It doesn't yeah, matter how, how much you have a pop at it. It's coming up in a bit. Yeah. Got some good stuff this week. I know, I know it's been a bit dull yeah. last two weeks. Well, know? no, it's not been dull. It's been totally untrue. As ever. Bordering what? on the impossible. I mean, monkey dating, saying what tree are we meeting in? Mm. You well. believe that sort of drivel. Mm. So, I mean, oh, oh, God. Jonathan Ross told a story about a chimpanzee once. Go on. It was about, <laughs> but it was about how it escaped from the zoo yeah. and it jumped on a bus. Right. Okay. Interesting. Funny. I right? did that one. But it's possible. Is there possibility in that yeah, one but being I did true? That. I did that one. I think you said something like he drove the bus or he was conducting it. Or I think you fares. said he took it to Spain. Hmm. <laughs> Do you see the difference? It's that little stretch of credibility that means it's all shite. How is Jonathan Ross? All right. <laughs> is he? I wonder how long it take before his name popped up. How is he? How is the old man? Uh, Looking forward to his birthday Monday. Oh dear. Yeah. I don't know if any of the listeners uh, oh. saw Ricky on Jonathan Ross's TV show last night. Yeah. What? Oh, I mean, man alive. What? Well, that's not an interview. How is that an interview? What? It's not. He wasn't interviewing you. It's like two pals just having a laugh. And well, if we, ha it was like it was a family do, <laughs> and you just happened to film it and stick it on the telly. 
<laughs> my friend made a good point. It was like any minute his kids were gonna pop out, sit on that sofa next to you and go, Oh, Uncle Ricky, do, it, do the little dance. <laughs> <laughs> It was unbelievable. Uh, I mean, what were you wearing for a start? Uh, What's that? Some tatty old jumper like you'd just been doing some art texting and you'd gone pot round with it. We're having a couple of drinks. That's, that was Lambretta. That's Lambretta. Was it trendy, inside and out? Trendy jumper. How do you keep that, getting things with the St. George Cross on it? That, what do you mean? I've, that's the only one I've got. You've got, got loads of stuff. T-shirts, jumpers, shoes. No, I've got a union Underpants. jacket. Um, uh, uh, a uh, what's it? A French connection one? But that's one. not the- that's not my underpants, concern. Underpants! I have got any underpants! That's not my concern, no, it's but, just the fact that- I mean, firstly- Yeah. The fact that Ricky- for those of you who don't realise, Ricky is friends with Jonathan Ross. They are friends. Now, they've only known each other, what, a year, maybe? About two, yeah. It's less- I think it's less than two. And what worries me is, you the friendship's too close. What do you because mean? Because you're, you're over 40. You see, it seems to me that after the age of 25, <laughs> men should not be becoming really close friends with other men. It should be like you've had all your friends, you made them at university at school, and if you were in a way walk of life and you met someone at a party or a pub, even if you got on, you would not be phoning them every other day, like going to an awards What are you wearing, Jonathan? I've heard this conversation. What are you wearing? I think I might wear this. Is it too formal? Is that going to be too formal? It's not true. It is. That's you're always true. on the phone to him. You're always chatting. I'm just going to pop around. Oh, I'm just going to play some tennis. But yeah, we play tennis. Always hanging out with the guy, and it's, it's to me, it's unhealthy. And this, it's just bled over now onto oh, TV. Okay. Oh, hold on, so, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Whoa, 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 whoa. So, you're there. It's like, I'll tell you what it reminded me of. Des O'Connor and Jethro. <laughs> Coming on to plug his live video. Uh, or Tarby and Kenny Lynch. And then at the end of the interview, after yeah. they've been, you know, mutually yeah. backslapping, yeah. He, he gave you a pet. <laughs> Coldplay and In My Place on XFM 104.9. I'm Ricky Gervais. With me, Steve Merchant. Hello, Hello there. Hello, lovely to be here. Yeah. Carl Pilgrim there, pressing the buttons. Great to be here. Yeah. How long can you maintain it? I'm bored already. already. Yeah, already bored of doing it. Bored that. already. Every week you start it the same way. Yeah. That was not bad though. You actually grammatically made sense. Which is really? uh, impressive. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Thanks so, very much. A rare treat indeed from yeah. the Um some of the uh, listeners have already worked out. Uh, got nothing to say at all. <laughs> sure. Haven't prepared again. <laughs> no. We were we we did come in half hour early to repair, but instead me and Carl were playing you had to flick the football into the bin, right. we had five goes each, or the world was gonna end. Okay. And that, that took up- That took up a good twenty-five minutes. Yeah. I liked it when we came back, and then we started just trying to beat each other in the corridor, and I beat him, I scored a goal, he, he was gutted because he thought he, he fancied himself at football, and I beat him. Um, mm. and I was knackered and sweating. Yeah. Um, and uh, as I walked back to you about five minutes ago, you were looking through the records, you went, and this was lovely, you went, <sighs> Well, we've done the preparation then. Uh, yeah. Like a sarcastic teacher. Yeah. Like a teenager, like an annoyed <laughs> teenager. <laughs> whose parents have embarrassed him once again. <laughs> and you beat Carl, did you? Yeah. Cause you're not- yeah. I mean, you're not particularly- I'm not good at football, Well, no. you're not particularly nimble on your feet. Oh, come no, on. No, you're not. Douglas Spardo is um, more nimble. I'm alright, I'm alright. But it, Carl's sort of, I think he's got more skills than me, but he hasn't got the aggression and the sure. weight. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. I just yeah. pushed him aside. Yeah, good work. Yeah. Good work. I'm going on holiday. Are you? Yeah, we're not, I'm not here next week. What are you gonna do, Carl? Are you gonna do the best of or something next week, aren't you? Yeah, that's what we've got to sort out. Well, I can't sort it out. I've literally- I've, I've got to go to the airport no, after No, no, straight after the show you've got to do some links. No, so. I'm not doing any links. I said I wouldn't, so- That's we, what we planned. No, we didn't. I said I'd do some during the show, and then you I could- I thought you were joking. I, I, I honestly can't do it today, so we do some during the show. What are you gonna do? Just put the shows that we've done this year? Sorry, guys. Uh, I hate to interrupt. This no. is the sort of stuff we should have been discussing <laughs> when you were playing football. <laughs> <laughs> I know. Play rec. What are you gonna play? Play Let's rec. Let's have a bit of Foo Fighters. Okay. Let's just discuss this off there. Okay. Foo Fighters there, learning to fly. Steve, I hope the pilot that I get today flying the plane that I'm going on holiday in has already learned to fly. <laughs> oh! <laughs> well done. That is dynamite. That's, so, te that's a textbook link. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. That's yeah, genius. Yeah. yeah. Very good. Yeah. Where, where are you going? Where, yeah. what, what's the story? Yeah. Where are you off to? Uh, Sorrento. Where's that? Uh, sort of South Italy. Italy? Yeah. What are you like on holiday? Are you a nightmare? Are you the, no. like- No. Well, what Cause you're quite- nightmare. But you're quite- I mean, obviously, I, you know, I've often said on the radio before that I- I mean, I'm- spending any length of time with you is- is- is one of the most unbearable <laughs> things I've ever had to do. <laughs> I mean, spending a week with you is nightmarish, and sharing any kind of accommodation is- Do you know what I mean? No, seriously, I mean, it's like- it's like hell. It's like li a living hell. <laughs> It's like having a teenager. Fine. No, just do. It's like having a sort of teenage kid who can't can't be entertained by anything. Just chill out. 
Just yeah, chill you just chill out, dude. Just is Max, it? relax. Yeah, Max, relax. Yeah, yeah. sure, sure. And do you, and so if you're in somewhere like Italy, like somewhere like that, because obviously a very beautiful city mm. and very mm. cultured and stuff, mm. <laughs> so, yeah, mm. is that something that you enjoy? Do you enjoy the culture of that, the, the beautiful architecture, let's say? A hotel's the same anywhere, because as long as there's <laughs> right. room service and a nice room in porn, it's, no, it's nice weather. Sure. If it's not, I'm annoyed. Yeah, yeah, And yeah, I need yeah. to blame someone. And is it true that you go, because you go to Italy most years, don't you? Is that because that's the only food you like I eating? like, I like pasta and pizza, yeah. Yeah. And, uh, and I've, I've been to other places, I went to France once, and that you can't explain to them to cook it prop- just cook <laughs> it properly. I don't want any- to cook yeah, it. It's, yeah. There's blood in the middle of that. Yeah, sure, sure. Uh, Hungary, there was- it was just, oh, I went there for a while and I didn't know- I couldn't identify the animals right, they were totally killing involved, for me. Yeah. So, and yeah. I know quite a lot about natural history. Sure. And I couldn't identify what was on the plate, yeah. so I don't- Came on early, did you ask for a couple of days? No, I just got, I got annoyed and I- well, I, I went to McDonald's. Yeah. Well, that's um, the great thing about McDonald's, is they are in most exactly. major cities. No, yeah. but I- you can't- I, you can't go wrong with so pasta and pizza. So, I was with you on holiday and I- you know, we were- we were hanging out or whatever. Yeah. Um, and I took you to say maybe a, a beautiful cathedral. Is that yeah. something you'd enjoy? I can't quite imagine you actually taking well, the time to. Well, as long as it, as long as it's not a very long walk, we don't have to stay there more than a couple of minutes. I'd, lo <laughs> I'd love to look around <laughs> places. Right, so you would yeah. you'd look at the cathedral. Yeah. That's taken you know that's that takes people breath you know takes people's breath away. You know yeah. people travel from around the world to see that. You would. Yeah. And how long would you I don't stay? Travel around the world to see it. I think they go somewhere sure. and they go. Well, and we they, might as well is. look at the cathedral. You can't cathedral. miss it. They're huge. Yeah. <laughs> would you and um, would you uh, would you sort of spend any time looking at that? Would you just sort of soak in the atmosphere for a moment, or you would you? I'd look at it and I'd go, "That's brilliant." And then if there was any sort of soaking in, I can do that later when there's nothing to look at. <laughs> right, what there's you to do. Your memory of it later when you're in the bar. Yeah. Yeah, yeah sure, you can sure. you know, uh, And would you, um, so can, uh, can you be kind of in awe of something like that? Yeah, well, 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 if, it if it's big, okay. If I, if I go in the cathedral and it's, and it's, I've seen bigger, I go, oh, seen bigger. <laughs> sure. If it's the biggest one I've seen, I go, that is huge. <laughs> yeah. Let's go. Yeah. <laughs> that lets you off. Yeah. Sure, because you are, you're a sort of man who gets bored, and this is true, Carl, you may not be the fluent Ricky Gervais is a man who gets bored drinking a glass of water. It's boring. Because it's not flavoursome enough. No. It's, uh, it's I, not I, got enough flavour. It's, it's absolute bore. Uh, the only, uh, <laughs> Jane's got me onto fizzy water, which at least got something there, right. uh, but I only drink that when I'm sort of dehydrated in the middle of the night. I never, there's no, I never drink a drink of water. No. It's, it is boring. Yeah. Yeah. Well, but that's why you've always got headaches. And you're always- Apparently, yeah. Moaning and stuff. Yeah, yeah so that's part of- Another- one of the reasons I hate you. Uh, is in, it? In, 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 but when I- I don't- when I say hate you, I don't mean I hate you. I didn't mean to- I, I didn't mean to blur it out that strongly. <laughs> yeah. uh, what I mean is, if I'm spending a lot of time with you- <laughs> Once right, he said, you. well, we're in the BBC canteen and I was sort of like- and he just put his knife forward and I said, I'll never eat him with you again. I said, what's the matter? He said, you annoy me. You- I hate eating with you. It annoys me. You've got- it looks like a child food. It's just you eat chips and sausage and rubbish. You don't eat- look at you, you don't Touch your vegetables. You don't drink water. He said you. I, he really got well, annoyed because you you you've got this like the, this hatred of anything that's good for you. You won't eat any form of salad. You just why do I eat salad? Because it's good for you. And lettuce is it. boring. Lettuce is absolutely boring. Um, uh, cucumber are boring. But you know. but yeah. But the thing is, you see, I admit that lettuce and cucumber have not got much flavour. But that's why people will add, say, in Italy, they'll add a lovely dressing. Yeah. Maybe yeah. some olive oil. Maybe some balsamic vinegar. Well, you embarrass yourself because. The good thing about a nice, mature lump of cheddar cheese <laughs> is you don't have to have any dressing. <laughs> Although you add some anyway. I put a little you bit of olive oil in it and maybe some mayonnaise. mayonnaise. Maybe but some uh, fancy you know, dressing. On a Ritz cracker, you don't need it, it's just extra. Sure, sure. Well, good luck. I noticed you're wearing the- is this your travelling gear? You've got the sweatpants and the, yeah. the t-shirt, the free t-shirt. Yeah. Looking to get an upgrade, are you? Or? I'm, I'm going first class, I'm sure. Mm. Badly drawn boy. Spitting in the wind on XFM 104.9. Are Mr. you going to be taking in any of what? the uh, culture in Italy? Is yeah. that something you do? Yeah. The well, opera? Uh, I don't know the about opera. the opera. I've never been to the opera. I, don't know. I do like a, you know, you like an opera. opera. Yeah, not, I wouldn't sit through a whole one, but I mean, I like I like the songs they take from it for that World Cup one. <laughs> And those two fat birds that they sung in Shawshank Redemption was good. Yes. But, um, I think, yeah. uh, you know, I, I, I haven't gone into it extensively. I haven't studied the <laughs> art. <laughs> the art of opera. Also, it's in foreign, so you don't really know what's happening. It's in foreign. Yeah. 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 So you don't That's annoying for you. Yeah. yeah. What yeah. about, are you, are you a fan of any of the great English operas? <laughs> like, um, The Pirates of Penzance? <laughs> yeah. Gilbert and <laughs> Sullivan. <laughs> to me, Gilbert and Sullivan were like, they're probably, their- their day equivalent of like Richard Stilgo getting together with Tony Slattery. <laughs> and then a hundred years later people go, it's brilliant. It- it is like- they might as well, um, I don't know, make th th any- any episode of Whose Line Is It Anyway? Right, yeah. Into an opera and in two hundred years time they'll be going, that's genius. Yeah. Listen to this one, look, this is Party Quirks. <laughs> Yeah, Amdram Society, stage <laughs> yeah, yeah. Worst step. 
Because oh. I, I was, well, I was in oh. the Pirates of Penzance once in an amateur production. You used to like whose lines anyway. I did. That was. Oh no, yeah, I did watch scenes. it when it first came on Channel Four about yeah. 15, 20 years ago. But we um, we did the Pirates of Penzance when I was in an amateur dramatic society in Bristol, uh, the Bristol Operatic Society, Light Operatic Society. I don't know why I was involved because I can't sing. My audition. <laughs> I thought this is how desperate they were for blokes. I swear to God, right? I can't sing. You know. Were you? Yeah. Well, all right, calm down. And um, <laughs> I uh, I went in and they said, so what are you going to sing? I went, uh, well, I, I just, I don't, I, I want to surprise you. They said, do you want a piano accompaniment? I said, no, I don't think so. <laughs> I went to the back, I swear to God, I went to the back of the room and I just sang, Thumbelina, Thumbelina, <laughs> tiny little thing, Thumbelina dance, Thumbelina sing, Thumbelina, what's the difference if you're very small? Cause when your heart is full of love, you're six feet tall. I just did that. And they just looked at me like I was the weirdest <laughs> freak they'd ever had. Oh. Immediately put me in the chorus, because that oh. was how desperate they were for blokes. We yeah. staged it, we rehearsed it. I couldn't remember the lyrics. <laughs> Thank God you were doing Thumbelina. Yeah, yeah. Oh, but dear. I couldn't, I couldn't, um, I, you know, I couldn't remember the lyrics. What was it for? Was it Gilbert and Sullivan? It was, it was the Pirates of Penzance. Oh. There weren't enough blokes, right, so that we had to double up. So some of the pirates <laughs> had to double up as the policemen who were chasing the pirates. A little bit problematic in the scene when the policemen and the pirates have a fight. <laughs> that was a little bit tricky. <laughs> and then worst things, there's this sequence where like the, the, sort of the daughters of the Major General all kind of like, oh beautiful, something like, you know, um, oh beautiful little girls are we, la 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 la. And the women they had, they must have all been over 40. I mean mm. real kind of oh. toothless crones oh. creeping around in their nighties. Is it the sort of women that buy one of those sort of porcelain dolls? Exactly. From the TV <laughs> yeah. and go, look I've had a baby. It's not a real <laughs> baby. It is a real baby. <laughs> I'm gonna stab you. Yeah. One of those. Exactly. It's the sort of women that you'd see maybe on uh, TV's Bargain Hunt. <laughs> <laughs> you know, the kind of contestants you get on there. Those are women who, who sort of very nam drama and they, they think they've clung on to their looks, but they'd oh. have never made it in, in uh, the guy who was playing the, uh, there's a guy who's supposed to be an eighteen year old prince, uh, an eighteen year old pirate, uh, the pirate king, he must have been forty <laughs> things a day. He also directed the show though, so he got to prance around in these thigh high boots. <laughs> Ludicrous. It was so embarrassing. <laughs> it was shameful, really. I'd I love to go to Am Dram. Am Dram is a whole other world. It's just, it's such an incredible place. Because there's so much backbiting and envy and really, oh, it's incredible. I mean, it's worse than the real world of theatre and TV. It's unbelievable. Because the same old people get to do it every year because they can hold a note. Can it's we go along? You would absolutely adore it, Javis. It Just is film it, a secret camera. Boring. Have you ever done the in a, in a play, Pilk? We know this, Carl. You've uh, you've performed the uh, the talent show, didn't it? Yeah. Oh, the talent show. Yeah. Remind us of the talent and, show. Uh, that's when I did, uh, Walk Like an Egyptian, dressed up as a woman. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And, uh, did me magic trick. Oh, that's that, is it an egg? The egg one. Yeah. Um. What was the egg one again? When I, uh, actually I've ruined it now saying the egg one, but I went on stage with like an Anki. Yeah. And I said, uh, at this point I was dressed up as a caretaker in it. <laughs> sure. Don't know why, can't remember. <laughs> no. I was stood there with this, uh, with this Anki over my hand. Yeah. I said, right, you're gonna love this one. Yeah. I said, I'm gonna make a, a bird appear in front of your, in front of your eyes, right? Yeah. And I'm like, oh god, what's he gonna do? So I'm stood there. <laughs> yeah, I'm sure I yeah. did. Pulled the Anki off. It was an egg. Had an egg and I said, oh, it hasn't been born yet. That's brilliant. They loved it. They, yeah. Yeah. Went wild for it, did they? Round of applause? Yeah. Uh, How old were you? Was that, was that you, like, was, 17? Was that, apart from the, well, apart from your paper round, was that the high point of your life so far? Uh Is that the, what's the no, best? I, did, I didn't really Carl, I'd it. like to see you take that on the road. <laughs> <laughs> or maybe at least up to the Edinburgh Festival next year. It's Many of the listeners are aware, Carl, that you're sort of fascinated by, by smaller people. Um, well, he's fascinated by difference, I think. Yes. Oh. I don't think he's having a go at people, you know, I mean, when, when, you, when you, when you sort of stare at someone because they don't look like you, and let's face it, most people don't look like you, you're not having a go, are you? Well, like you I say, the first time I saw Steve, I was never, never having a go, it was just, oh, that's different. <laughs> But, but you know, like you, you know, Steve, I was never having a go. It's it's just that yeah. thing of oh, all right, interesting. What do you mean? No, just just you know, we've I've said before about yeah. I've got used to it and Steve's got same. used to it. What do you? What you don't know, well, I, you know my feeling with this. I don't I I'm, don't really know where but, he's coming but from. But Steve with knows it. I'm not having a go either. Yeah. Carl used to carry around a book that was called the top 50 freaks of all time. Well, it's interesting you should mention that because we actually had an email from Richie who says that he's, he's been a fan of ours for many years and he's listened to lots of the radio shows we've done in the past and things. And he says, of all the people you've discussed, Carl, in the past, including some of the people from your, uh, your, you know, odd magazines, who would you most like to spend the day with, of all those people that you've encountered? Um, favourite favourite of all. Well, certainly who you would want to spend time with, who you feel would be the most fascinating, the most interesting, 
You know, I mean, let's ju just recap on well, some of the- Well, Pillow Man, the bloke with no arms, no legs that can, um, uh, roll a cigarette with his mouth. Yeah. No? Not impressed with it. <laughs> That's not sufficient. What about the three-legged juggler? So, hang on, let's just recap. This was a man with three legs? Three legs, right. right. And, uh, it said his job, he became a juggler. Okay. Not using the, you know, the, the <laughs> gift that he'd been given. What would you put into what you suggest? Anything. Running, <laughs> swimmer, uh, <laughs> just, you know. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> But yeah, what, what are the there? others? What are the other ones? There was a picture of a gentleman who was fascinated by him. He used to play the piano. Oh, he's got a tiny oh, head, doesn't he? Yeah, that's that. Um, that's the one who uh, he, he sort of ages fast. Right. So like every other week, he's having a birthday and stuff. <laughs> <laughs> and um, yeah, that was weird. <laughs> he's not having a birthday every other week. His body's just aged, so it has the as has the appearance. Uh, the, the his biology is sort of like like he's seventy. But he's only like fifteen. He doesn't. They don't have a birthday every <laughs> week. <laughs> you idiot. But yeah, I don't know about knocking about with one a long time though. That's only for a day. Does it depends what I'm up to? <laughs> <laughs> because if you know, if we're going out and about, the pillow man would just be a bit of a drag. Whereas, <laughs> whereas if you know, if you're going for a, a, a walk oh, across, you know, the three-legged guy. <laughs> ideal. Yeah, so, Lots and lots of people emailing just with questions for Carl. Um, just a couple of quick ones for you, Carl. Wendy says, if Carl had to eat the same dinner every day for the rest of his life, what would, uh, what would he eat? Um, you see, it depends, doesn't it? I, I, I mainly eat just so I keep going. I'm not that bothered about, because I don't really taste it anyway, I just shove it down. <laughs> you're like a, what, a you're dog. like a horse. I mean, to be honest, it annoys me the way people worry about food now and, and how, how there's so much to choose from. I think it's got out of hand. <laughs> I'll watch- Any form of choice really worries you, doesn't it? No, you it's don't just, like choice. It, no, choice is good, but not too much. It's like with anything now, if you go into a, a toffee shop, there's like loads Sorry. of different- <laughs> Where are you going to find a toffee so shop? So you're, you're, you're in a fairy tale. <laughs> yeah, you're, yeah, yeah you're, in, you're in a Dickens tale yeah. in, the, uh, in the 19th century. You're in Shrek. And yeah, you, yeah, yeah, and you go into a toffee no, shop. What are you what's doing? What's your point? You go into a toffee, toffee shop. shop. What I'm saying, you, <laughs> yeah. go, you go into a shop full of toffee. You just come from stuff. the candlestick maker. <laughs> right? you, go, you, go, oh, you go in there and there's just too much choice. It's like, what? Uh, and it, I, I can stand there up to like four minutes, sort of going. <laughs> up you know, to four minutes. <laughs> So four minutes. So he's in a toffee shop in a top hat. Well, he's only got, four, mi he's only got four minutes because he's got to get down to the pea green boat. <laughs> that he's saving off yeah. No, but, Good morrow. But, well, forget the toffee. Could I have some of your finest Oxfordshire toffees? So you'd prefer it was just one selection of toffee, that's all they've got? Well, maybe two. <laughs> what I'm saying is, right, there's now too much choice. Whenever you get a menu in a restaurant, it's not like you don't just go, oh, right, what is the yeah, I'll have that. There's too much. It's like a book. And you look at it all. <laughs> And then you've got to that point now that people are even taking a risk when they're eating. What do you mean? Um, you know, in, in Japan or China or something, they're eating that fish <laughs> that if it's not cooked right, <laughs> it can kill you. Right? Yeah. Not worth the risk when there's so many other fish. Yeah, I agree. Why do, why have mackerel, they... have a bit of cod or whatever. <laughs> yeah, as soon as there's a risk, risk yeah. take it off. Take it off I agree. Menu. I totally agree. Not worth what, it. What do, uh, we've got a fish that might or might not kill you. Well, um, is there anything that definitely won't kill you? Yeah, but a chicken won't kill you. I'll right. play safe then, I'll have that. I'll have that, I'll have the chicken. That's what I'm saying. But anyway, we were talking about <laughs> sayings and that. <laughs> um, stitching time saves nine, don't, don't, you know, I'm never gonna use that, I don't think, anyway. <laughs> so, okay. Suzanne You're never gonna understand it fully, are Suzanne you? Suzanne repairs me stuff anyway. If, <laughs> so it doesn't, doesn't really matter. But what about the one, um, <laughs> About the one in, in greenhouses and that. People who really live in glass houses shouldn't throw stones. Well, I'm intrigued to know if he's fully got to grips with this. Okay. Just give us your explanation again of what you'd take that to mean. Well, just don't be chucking stuff about. Really. <laughs> <laughs> so, so, well, if that was it, they'd just no, say no, that. No, no, but, but that saying's been around a lot longer than we think. That's when people probably did live in basic glass houses and stuff. No, no, whoa, 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 So this, they went, cavemen went from rock to a nice crystal structure, did they? That, what, what are you talking about? When did people live in glass well, no, houses? what they mean now, when, when that saying's used now, they mean, sort of, you know, plasma tellies, <laughs> uh, ornaments. No, they don't. They're saying don't chuck stuff about, because no, you'll break don't. it. No, no it's, it's not about uh, damaging your own property. They don't mean you're inside the glass house throwing rocks inside your own glass it's house. It's a metaphor. Carl, what 
is an analogy? Uh, it's sort of like a little story told quickly. <laughs> isn't it? <laughs> it's a little so, story it? told quickly. Right. To what end? Well, it depends what the story is. You see, I, I just prefer sort of, you know, what you say is what you mean, so people in, who live in a glass house have to answer the door. I don't know what that means. <laughs> I don't know what that means. I mean, because, you, you, because you may be a genius, because I don't get that. People who live in glass houses have to answer the door. Okay, because, let him, let's hear his explanation. Because the people knocking at the door will be able to see you, because it's a glass house. But you have to add a number of other things, uh, another, other caveats. Surely, if you live in a glass house, don't walk around naked. Yeah. If you live in a... <laughs> Th these are literals. But uh, just the idea that, in your head, there should be sayings for people who live in glass houses. Who is it that's living in a glass no. house? Well, it, I, I'm not talking about them, it's just that if everyone else is bringing up about these people who are living in glass houses, let's, let's get to the real problems they've got. <laughs> he still hasn't got to grips with the idea of the no, metaphor or the simile. Well, here's another saying, right, that I, that I learnt recently from a mate, right? Um, well, there's an elephant in the room. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I, don't, I haven't heard that one, but explain it to me. It's like how, you know, you, whenever we go out for something to eat or a drink or something, mm. it's normally after about five minutes the sort of topic gets onto the shape of my head. <laughs> yeah, yeah! But what I'm saying is, it's interesting how, like, I'm the elephant in the room, right? Nobody's talking about it. You mention it once, suddenly it's the talk of the town. <laughs> It's, it's what I mean, everybody starts joining in going, well, yeah, it is round, but it does suit you. And these are people who I don't even know sometimes, <laughs> and they're all dipping in. And that is an elephant in a room. <laughs> so you, you don't want people to discuss the shape of your head or the, or the lack of hair? Um, you would feel better, you would feel happier that they didn't mention that? Sometimes I think it's better that it's out there. It's made me a stronger person, though. It's the same way, you know, we're talking about religion and that. Samson Delilah, yeah. he got weaker without hair. Whereas with me, I think it's it's made me stronger. But would you ever wear a wig? Um, not really. What I was mean, a long wig like Samson? Well, the only time I wanted a wig was when I did jury duty once, right? And it was annoying that I was sat on the jury right in front of like these criminals, right? Everybody else has got disguises. The judges have them wigs on, right? <laughs> It is a disguise, that's a disguise, that's why judges wear them, right? So no! Well then why did they print their name in the paper and have a picture of it? What do you mean it's a disguise? It's a disguise, isn't no, it? No! If it was a disguise, they'd go in with one of those, um, glasses with a nose and the beard attached if it was a disguise. All judges would look like Groucho Marx if it was a disguise. Well, I'm just saying that's, that's what annoyed me when I was sat there on the front row, right? I couldn't have been any closer to the criminals, right? <laughs> right? I was sat there and I thought... Why didn't I just pop a little wig on or a pair of glasses? <laughs> I would have loved to have seen you in the front row at Crown Court. No, because I'd love to see it because uh, in this country you're not allowed to show pictures of jurors. Uh, you can't take photos <laughs> in a courtroom, so there's always these sketch artists that draw drawings and it's on the news. The idea that we'd have seen 11 people and a sort of crusty the clown figure would have been amazing. Yeah, uh, oh, I would love to see the, uh, the artist do an interview because it would be like complicated people. Oh, yeah, he looks like a characterful and then just a little round. Head. Charlie Brown. <laughs> <laughs> Charlie Brown sitting on the end. <laughs> well, that was uh, Elbow and Red of uh, Asleep in the Back. I love that. Great song. Got, got sort of early Peter Gabriel and that's wonderful. Well, we were we were talking about like your birthday and everything. And yes. Presents and then then uh, I found out I'd been signed up to DJ. At yes. Club in Canada. Looking get forward you, to that. To get you in. To a I got in for free. My friends I got in at one pound off. I was t just uh, when the. Uh, uh, record was playing there. I said, why did you do that? Why did you try and get in free? Right? He goes, impressing my mates. Now, how impressive is it that Steve Merchant can get you in a place for a quid off? <laughs> oh. Yeah, you what, what would save money? Go with Steve, if they recognise him or have heard the show, you get a quid off! <laughs> that is great. I have a quality discount. I, what, I, don't, I don't know whether it, what you like more though, because I know you, and I, I think it, it wasn't just the acclaim mm. and the, the fact that you were, it was the pound off you liked. The money off was exciting to me. That was great. <laughs> Any discount would have been fine. I imagine you made them all buy you a drink with a, uh, you know, Several. To, to the value of yeah. a pound. It ended up costing them a lot more. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Well, I, did I, have I ever, this, this is the, probably the most embarrassing, uh, of those entrance stories. Yeah. I was down in South London once, uh, went down to some party that was taking place in some kind of swanky bar where there was a doorman on the front and a, a charge, I think it was something mental, like a tenner to go in. 
It was crazy. It was some. It was ludicrous. I, I don't know what I was doing down there. And I was okay, in the and queue. We'll establish what you mean by swanky later, because that could be. Angus and um, it was. Uh, it was always a posh place. Was it? And so there's a queue outside, and there was one of these doormen who thought it was, uh, like, kind of Studio 54. He was, like, sort of, you know, choosing people who could come in. Yeah, you two come in now. You know, I've been there for ages, obviously. Oh, I no. was on my own, because I got there late. and clogged. Exactly. Got, I've dressed up for this. And there were these two girls next to me, and I'm thinking, if I'm in a queue, I've told you before, if I'm in a queue and I got, if I'm stuck with two girls, you know, I'm yeah. thinking, oh, what a great opportunity, you know, use the old merchant Pick charm. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And, uh, so I'm there, and I'm sort of thinking, I'm sort of, you know, and I kind of, yeah, sort of give them a nod or whatever, you know, a wink. Yeah. And they're loving it. Yeah. They, 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 they move to the back. They're putty in my hands, really, because you can imagine. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And I thought, well, I, to really seal this off, I'll get us in. Like, I'll, I'll sort of skip the queue. So I, the guy sort of coming along, he's picking people off, the, yeah. the, the, the doorman, and I just <laughs> grabbed him, I just grabbed him like that, and I said it so everyone could hear, right? And I thought this was brilliant. He, I said to him, how much is it? He went, ten quid. I went, I'll give you seven. That was my bribe. I'll give you seven. That's the whole three pounds. <laughs> No, I, that can't be right. No. No, I, I, he must have said a fiver, and I yeah. said, I'll give you seven. Yeah. That makes more that's, sense, doesn't that's, it? That's, that's giving him a two pound yeah, incentive. Yeah, two pound incentive. <laughs> <laughs> I'll give you seven, you can make up the ten. <laughs> exactly. You, you can, if you let me in, you can put in three yourself, mate. <laughs> that never works, does it? <laughs> he said to me, <laughs> <laughs> he said to me, um, uh, I can't be bothered, I'm gonna, I'm just gonna have a kip, I think. <laughs> So was tired. it the was it percentages that put you off that, that frazzled anecdote? me initially? I mean, that, it, it's a funny anecdote when you're giving him two pounds. Yeah. It's even funnier when you you're getting him when to he's put paying up me as well. <laughs> Oh, I love it. Right, we're gonna we're oh. gonna play a record. Then we're really gonna concentrate. XFM one hundred four point nine, Ricky Gervais show. Steve Merchant's also involved. <laughs> <laughs> oh, go, go to bed. Man. Oh, Cypress Hill, superstar still to come. We've got. Such great bands as New Order, Ash, Nirvana, Radiohead. Song for the Lovers about uh, two o'clock is a beautiful song by Jimmy Webster. Looking forward to it. Now it's Steve's birthday. It's XFM 104.9. He's 27. Yes. We're both a little bit hungover. Yes. Now every link we've started hasn't really sort of. It's not know, really come to fruition. If no. I'm being honest. Nothing's happened. I mean, sometimes there's just they're just all out kind of. There's just blunders in them. Yeah. Or like yeah. this one. We've already, already run aground. Yeah, I think it might be a mixture of it's like we've been on this station for a little while. We're, we're losing the will uh, to live. Forward, <laughs> but we're going to buck up our ideas. Can I just ask? A I quick said question. buck up, by the way, just Can in I case. Just a quick question. A quick question, though, because I'm mean, listening to answer complaining. My um, my birthday today, and, and therefore last night I went out, and you know that's why excuse for being a little bit tired and a little bit hungover. Yeah. What's your excuse? Because you didn't come out. No, I know. I, was I mean, you conscious you had the show today. What were you doing? Staying at home, just drinking. Yeah. I have a little uh, a couple, me, me and Jane went what time to did say you go goodbye to, to someone, about one. Well, that's stupid. <laughs> <laughs> what I'm saying is, no, I mean, it's your name all over the show. You know, I'm a nobody, I've got no reputation. Yeah. Although, Thankfully. you get a quid off in most clubs in Camden. True enough. I think, just, just drop me, if, if anyone out there, if you're sort of like, like, tall, sort of, I'll answer your birthday, but I've just got to do a description. This is purely, this is nothing nasty, it's pretty sweet. If you're sort of like a, a, a lanky sort of geek, um, <laughs> and you, you know, <laughs> You can do a worse accent, then maybe you can pretend to be Steve Merchant and get in quid off. Is that right? <laughs> That's fine, yeah. really. No, because no. some people would take that as a personal. That's offensive. Yeah, sure. yeah, yeah, yeah. So we were talking about. Pre should we play a record? Is that link too long already I'm before already we bored. actually got to summer? I'm already bored. Carl, we've got to get to something. We've got to do Carl, something. Why don't you contribute something? You've been silent. Now nah, that is scraping the bottom of the barrel. Like, is, we're it? in trouble. Oh no. Oh, we're failing. Who can we? Who can we bring on that surefire? Always delivers audio snappy. dynamite. Yeah, Carl, the big guns. <laughs> Come on, Carl. Oh, I was just thinking, there is nobody else who looks like Steve. <laughs> <laughs> He's done you. That's <laughs> outrageous. <laughs> Although, but, to be honest with you, that insult has resurrected things. Yeah, well done. Play a little tune, oh, and then we've got a little back. bit of a sniffle as well. I think. Yeah, cold or something could be coming on. A bit late there, Carl. You should come in a bit earlier there. Swayed there. Um, what I well, like is the complete lack of professionalism on our part. Yeah. It's like we've got a bit of a headache, a little bit yeah. tired, just that's it then. You can't fight that, you can't <laughs> fight that. But, I mean the thing is, as you well know Rick, there are certain DJs on this station, you know, drunkards, there's at least two I know of who are smackheads. Yeah. And yeah. you know, they, they still manage, uh, but no, they still manage to yeah, do but a even good the, job. Yeah, but even the ones that aren't, <laughs> that try their best, are rubbish. <laughs> it's true enough, I'm not saying, I'm not saying we're still not the best. Yeah. And it's effortless for us Rick. I know, you know, yeah, yeah. We're coming up with dynamite stuff here. Yeah, I know. You know we're not even, you know, Know, fighting on all cylinders. XFM 104.9, Ricky Gervais with me, Stephen Merchant, a little bit hungover. Mm, we all are, mm, but he's, mm. he can't really take it, he's a, no. 
Is that, wait, yeah. wait, there is, um, tickets to give away, Rick. I don't know if we should mention that. What, who, who is it for? Joe Strummer. Oh, yeah. Uh, and his band, The Mescaleros, play Brixton Academy, we think, this evening. <laughs> <laughs> a little bit more information will probably be... <laughs> so go <laughs> along, just in case. <laughs> <laughs> if you say you're Steve Merchant, pound off. <laughs> well, the doors are, uh, s uh at seven o'clock, and it's seventeen pounds fifty. Unless you've won the competition, Rick, that I'm about to set, and yep. won, a, won yourself a pair of tickets. Um, there is someone, right, in America, celebrating a birthday today, okay? Yeah. Same, More than one. Same I day think, as me. Yeah, no, no, no. No, but there's a Go specific on. one I'm thinking of, right? His name, Rick, is Dwight Schultz, okay? Yeah. If you know the answer, obviously don't give it away. Yeah. His name's Dwight Schultz, uh, he's an actor. Yeah. He's particularly big in the 80s. Yeah. And he's also celebrating a birthday today. You're gonna say, what's his name? I'm gonna say, what character is he best known as? What TV character is he best known as? And you can win yourself some tickets for Joe Strum and the Mescaleros at the Brixton Academy. Dwight Schultz. American actor, TV character of the 80s, very famous. Oh, yeah. See, Christian's giving away uh, a trip to Salem, Massachusetts. That's bizarre, actually, because I was in America recently and I went to Salem, Massachusetts, and yeah. that's not a prize. And it? Believe me, if you, I mean, we were there, we were sort of obliged to go because we were at someone's birthday. It's rubbish. Really? I mean, that's a really poor trip. That's such a boring He's probably, he can probably can't believe his luck. It's just a, probably the biggest thing Christian's ever had to give away. Well, the great thing about- And you've just dissed it. The great thing about Salem, Massachusetts is I that- I don't think we're, I don't think we're good for this station. I don't think we're selling this station like we should. Well, you know, it's, it's its own fault, you know, it shouldn't have hired us. <laughs> I blame it, you know. Yeah, and paid us in advance. Yeah. They're lucky we turn up. No, I went to uh, Salem, Massachusetts, and this is the place that's famous from, like, Salem's lot, and, uh, the Salem witch hunts famous for- uh, Famous for all things Salem. Salem. Yeah, yeah. anything yeah. with Salem in the title, that's what it's place, famous for. The whole yeah. place has gone mad over, like, witches, and yeah. anything, basically, it's like, there was the Salem witch hunts in, like, 17-something or other, or 17-something yeah. or other. <laughs> so the whole place now is just full of, like, people dressed as witches. Yeah. And then it's, like, any supernatural stuff. So that I went in, and it was amazing, it's quite- Like a Glastonbury going. tent. It was a- yeah, it's- it's like, it's awful. Everything- every single place there, every single shop is kind of horror related yeah and i went to the um boris karloff world of terror <laughs> yeah right? it's it? amazing you went in there right? i don't know if boris the famous horror actor has actually been involved but you go in there you walk in the door you've got to put these 3d glasses on right and it's supposed to be this kind of chilling ver journey around this kind of uh, like a sort of uh, a crypt you know and you put these glasses on and i <laughs> i couldn't tell they were so poor i couldn't tell what was supposed to be a 3d effect and what was actually three-dimensional really in real so i couldn't tell if like the floor was actually sloped or if it was just appeared to be yeah whether the wall was actually kind of knobbly or whether it was <laughs> three uh, it was so much, and it was it literally took about 45 seconds to get through it imagine and you just that. came out blinking into the dark into the light again it was so rubbish. you you so i just want i just want to throw this over to carl so there's steve merchant with funny glasses on in this place horror and he's walking around mm. do you think he scared people carl I've- I've set this question out, haven't I? <laughs> I know- I've, I know, I've, lo I know, I've loaded the question I know the answer you're fishing for. <laughs> <laughs> Carl, do you just want to have a dig at me? Cos it's <laughs> coming up to two o'clock, and you've not yeah. really put a lot of uh, effort in today, slagging me off. I don't do it on purpose. No, he doesn't do it on purpose. He's, he's, he's just- he's just an honest northerner, and he can't lie. He's like George Washington, but without the wooden teeth. <laughs> yeah. Salem. <laughs> um... I didn't mean We've to say- We've lost it again, haven't I, we? You Rick, didn't mean to say Salem. <laughs> say Salem. This, this is such bad that radio. Is this the is word really- I mean, time. genuinely, this is bad radio. All, yeah. Good, alright, so with the Pope's dead, any other big news? Um, there was that, uh, that thing I told you about last week, the foot-long spider eats chicken. <laughs> uh, <laughs> what does this mean to them? They're gonna think that the world's been taken over by them. It's not like they've never done it. We're not going back, there's a foot-long spider on the loose. Are these people bright, though? Well, let's have a look. Antarctic scientists. Yeah, yeah, they've probably got an O level you or two. You're looking at penguins all day. Yeah. I so how bright have you got to be? What do you mean? Well, what are they doing? Well, I don't know, do I? But they've been chosen. This probably cost millions of pounds to set them up there. They're pro yeah, they're, they're pro oh, Carl. This, I tell you, this is like, for scientists, this is like Big Brother. <laughs> you know I mean? This is like a big dinner scientist here, watching yeah. this, finding That's out what's gonna go on, there's little challenges that they give them, little towns. It's like Celebrity Love Island without the sun and slappers. Mm. Go on. I think, what else? What Come else on. has gone on? Well, while you're thinking, Carl, I should just tell you, now, you threw that question out earlier, um, why are ginger people historically mocked? <laughs> We've had a couple of responses on the text, 83XFM. I, again, as ever with XFM listeners, don't believe what they say, don't trust what they say. But no. one of them, um... Have we got any respect for anyone in the world? Uh, <laughs> get back 
at you. Uh, Pete in Tooting, now again I think this is nonsense, he claims that the reason ginger people are disliked is because Judas was ginger from the Bible. How- I don't know where he's come up with this idea. No, uh, I've heard that. But sh I mean, are there a great many people from, you know, the Middle East who are ginger? Well, that's probably why he stood out. Sure. And he's probably- he was probably fed up and he thought, I'll get him back. Yeah. Maybe- Unless he was wearing- unless he had his hair dyed ginger when he was on the witness protection scheme. <laughs> What Which did he presumably do? he had to go into what, after what, it all came out in the book. What did he do? What's what did he do? He, he stitched, up, he stitched him up, didn't he, to the Romans, didn't he, Judas? Didn't he do it for forty pieces of silver or something? I'm, I'm not big on the Bible, but apparently, um, incidentally, if you'd like us to uh, stitch up any kind of massage for forty pieces <laughs> of silver, just get in touch. Eighty three XFM. Uh, we're willing to do that for you as well. Um, but so that's so that's one one explanation. There's another one here, which is uh, again, I don't believe this for a moment. It says here, ginger people get a lot of stick because in in Elizabethan times, people with ginger hair were told that their mother had slept with the devil. And that was why their hair was their hair was ginger. So there's two options. Maybe if you've got some more, you can uh, any more spurious thoughts, then get in touch. Uh, 83xfm. But yeah, I don't know. Carl. So uh, no, 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 there, no, there might be truth to both of those. I mean, the tr the point is that if only those are true, they were already being picked on. If you know what I mean. Right. That's the point. Mm. It, it's mm. sort of like I, I, maybe that's not the the the, uh, the total root of it. Well, the Judas thing might be the root of it. The first big um, ginger to. Uh, do some, uh, uh, a little bit So if off. he was bald, then all bald people would be like, Yeah. Get our time on that. Yeah. Well, we do mock you behind your back anyway, Carl. Don't, yeah. That's going on, don't worry. Mm -hmm. Uh, so, t uh, play a record and think of something that's happened to tell these poor scientists what's going on in the world. Mm -hmm. All you've come up with so far is the Pope's dead and there's a big spider. What is that? He eats chicken. <laughs> the Pope's rainy night in Soho. Uh, I hope uh, I hope there isn't a rainy night in Soho tonight, Rick. I'm right. Sure. You're one of those uh, who agrees with me. <laughs> so we just had a, uh, an email here from a guy called James Lee. He says, uh, hi, just writing a bit of info on the scientists in Antarctica. I'm a scientist who's just come back from one of the Antarctic bases called Halley, uh, or Haley. There are 15 people staying there over the Antarctic winter. The scientists are looking mainly at the atmosphere, things like the ozone hole and meteorology. Right. I think there are six scientists staying over the winter, as well as a doctor, Electrician, mechanic, and a carpenter, and so on. And so he's saying uh, they do listen. They can't. They have the internet, so they maybe could listen uh, to the show on the internet. And uh, if you get the chance, say hi to Francis, and the rest of the winter is for me. Sure, no problem. Yeah, thanks, James. Um, but yeah, there they are. That's what they're doing. That's what they're up to. Well, but why? Why are they asking you for a message though? When I mean, have, have these people got families and that, or are they convicts? Or <laughs> 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 no, what do you mean? Because they got. They probably do get messages from their family. <laughs> well, what, why are you doing one for one? Is that, I mean, say, do you know like you see it in, like, porridge and stuff like that where if someone's in prison and no one visits them? Yeah. And they sort of look a bit fed up on that. Is this message that you're doing for, for like, people who d don't get a letter in the post from- Brilliant. So they, they, they put this on the shelf until someone doesn't get one. Well, right, Hargreaves? Yes sir, I didn't get a message today, sir. <laughs> yeah, I've got a message, Hargreaves. <laughs> I've got, sir. Hargreaves, you have got a message. Really, sir? From Ricky Gervais. <laughs> really, sir? And then I give it- Don't talk. <sighs> don't talk. Please, there are scientists listening. Try to d keep the talking shit down to a minimum today. Yeah, well, what's annoying me is it, right? They're, they're saying they're stuck over there for months, but it yes. seems to me like they're wasting a lot of time. Right? Why? Well, you're saying they probably watch DVDs. They're saying they've got internet access. Yeah. Yeah? They're well, I'm wrong. To, listening to messages. Yeah. Get the job done, go home. Well, that's so, well then we don't have to tell them anything then, because they, they listen to the internet. They've got, if they've got the internet then, yeah, it's a waste of time. Good point, play records. Well hang on, before that, here's a good point. You've had long time to research what's been going on in the world. We just had an email here from Nicholas who says, why haven't you told them about the recent pig Olympics that just went on in China? You've missed that one, Carl, once again. Who won? <laughs> <laughs> First of the game to die, Morrissey, XFM 104.9. I'm Ricky Gervais with me, Steve Merchant and Carl Pilkington. Well, Carl, you failed miserably. The scientists stuck away. Right, one more chance. What what's happened in the last couple of weeks? Just one more chance to. What have you seen in the last couple of weeks? Uh, well, like I said, I don't I don't really watch the news and that, so right. I can't uh, tell them about that. But in a way, I think they're better off not knowing. I think that's the only good thing about being out there, isn't it? Not knowing about the bad stuff going on. Yeah. So. I can't help them there. They don't need to look at the weather, do they? No, don't even, no. But, uh, tell you about the Pope and that. 
Yeah, it's pretty extensive. What about uh, the, uh, the EU constitution and the, uh, the no votes? What, uh, what do you make of that? Uh, what are your views? What, what's the problem there? Oh, this, this isn't, this no, isn't, it's this isn't broadcasting though, is it? Knowing. This is nothing. Come up with something. Well, the fat, the fat baby then, the fat baby that they found, that was on the telly. Right. Well, what was that? It's just a little fat baby. That, uh, uh, oh, for f I don't know what, it's just a, just a little fat kid and that. What? Tell what? It what was is on the telly, it was on the telly and but that. But what was it? on the telly? You just said fat baby, fat baby, fat baby, fat baby on telly, fat baby on telly. Do you meant to be telling them what's happened in the world? Tell, well, tell me about the fat baby on telly. It's just, they've found some, uh, there's, there's this illness called Momo, right? And, uh, they've just got this, this woman had a kid. It's really sad, it was on Channel 4 and that, right? And, uh, Kids Born. You sure it wasn't Jimmy Carr? Kids Born and that, right? Momo? It's called Momo, Isn't that yeah. a Black Music Award? No, 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 right, little, little fat baby and that, and, uh, there's only three of them in the world. These little fat babies. Right. And, uh, one so of them- they're in danger. How fat? Are you not telling me what, what do you mean? How fat are they? Six stone it was, it was only two. And, uh, th there's, there's three of them in the world, and there was this one, and there was one in Brazil. Are they, like, and, uh, endangered? Is that the problem? Because <laughs> there's only three of them in the world. I don't I'll be worried, is it like a conservation campaign? They're hunted for their flesh. <laughs> yeah. No, it's just sad. <laughs> if you I know, uh, it's easy to show that, but, but you, if you'd you seen it, you'd go, oh, it's a bit, bit sad and that. Um, well, I haven't seen it, and I know nothing about it. Well, I've told you, there's three of them in the world. I, d I st uh, okay, what else was on telly? Uh, the, uh, something I watched the other night, which was good. Uh, again, you know how I learn stuff from the, from the telly, I don't watch the news. Yeah, well you don't out. learn stuff on the telly, you, know, you, you, what, you told us there's a fat baby in forget the world. Forget about them there's in- There's a spider, in, in, a spider eats chickens and there was a fat kid, that's- forget, all right, forget them in Iceland, right? Yeah. We'll, we'll give them rockbusters later to do, right? <laughs> Iceland! <laughs> but, um, but what's the name? I'll tell you what is interesting, Steve. Well. Um, I didn't know that much about it. A autism. Okay. Oh good, it's just some more entertaining stuff on XFM 104.9. No, no. It's a cheer up people. Go on and what? What? Come on. No, right. Have you heard about it, Steve? What autism. It, is? Yeah, uh, it autism. scares me to death when he comes up, when he touches on a serious subject. It, uh, we've been talking about wheeling a dead pope round, the Chinese don't age well, and ginger people are hated, and now we're going to touch on a really, I mean, no, I uh, uh, my heart's in my throat. Go yeah, on, Carl, then. Tell me, tell me your insights to autism. Right, well, it, there was this, it, again, Channel 4 coming up with some good stuff at the moment, right? It might have been Channel 5. Um, <laughs> but what's the name? It was- It's the attention span that I like! Ah! It's these, these people who, uh, they've got, got like this autism thing going on. Yeah. And, uh, they sort of take in a lot of information, they get sort of a bit, they get so into it that they know everything about that subject and what have you, right? And there was this lad, who, uh, he knew everything, right, about EastEnders. Right. He saw, uh, the, the cameraman was saying to him, uh, so, you know, why, why EastEnders and that? I said, oh, I don't know, I just like it. And he said, uh, I remember when I first watched it, it was a Thursday, it was five to eight, Pauline Fowler walked in, she had a pink jumper on, she said, all right, love. And he remembers everything from that moment on. Yeah. Right, and everything. Which is great, but then, the way the program was making out, it was almost like they were saying it's, it's a disability. <laughs> right. When in a way, it's more like a superpower. Sure. Like, like Rain Man. <laughs> well, if, you, if, you, if you can take it's him- It's Rain Man. No, I'm he not- He has special autistic powers. <laughs> Oh, oh God! We must send for I, I don't know what to do. So I don't you know mean, what to so do. He would be a great but there's other things. So a whole system mastermind. He'd well, be what dynamite. I'm saying is, don't be watching EastEnders though. Sort of. Why didn't they give him an encyclopedia and say, get into that? Sure. That'll be useful. Yeah. Keep him away from EastEnders. Wasting his time there. But I don't think it's a. It is a disability. No. Yeah. Well, there, there are other things, and they're, they're not. Uh, it's, it's also autism. It's a matter of degrees. From what I know, uh, and I'm sorry to have to do this, but I feel that I have to at least be the voice of reason, as as ill-educated as I am on the subject. But I think one, there's degrees of autism. I think some are higher performance than others. There's other there's other issues with it. It's not they just they just got good memories. They don't go around doing tricks for people because they can remember stuff. There are other there are other issues with it. Do you know what I mean? Right, well, I mean, they did, they seemed a bit- But you watched the program! What did you learn? That he knows when Pauline Fowler came in! Yeah, I mean, there was other bits where they couldn't control her emotions and stuff. Oh! But, 
But that other, that other little bit, yeah. But the main, the main bit of it was he didn't soak up information and stuff, and I'm just saying it didn't seem really bad. Do you know what I mean? There's disabilities where people say that's a bad disability. Go it's on. like how people say about, uh, This is brilliant, know. this. It's just like, uh, I, I, this is amazing to be in a room with this man. It's incredible. You just wind him up and listen to what comes out.